about the Book of Enoch also known as Ethiopian Enoch The Book of Enoch also known as Enoch was once cherished by Jews and Christians alike This book later fell into disfavor with powerful theologians, precisely because of its controversial statements on the nature and deeds of the fallen angels The Enochian writings in addition to many other writings that were excluded or lost from the Bible i.e. the Book of Tobit, Esdras etc. were widely recognized by many of the early church fathers as Apocryphal writings The term apocrypha is derived from the Greek word meaning hidden or secret Originally the import of the term may have been complementary in that the term was applied to sacred books whose contents were too exalted to be made available to the general public in Dan, we hear of words that are shut up until the end of time and words that the wise shall understand and the wicked shall not In addition Ezra FF mentions books of which the OT were to be published and were to be delivered only to the wise among the people gradually the term apocrypha took on a pejorative connotation for the orthodoxy of these hidden books was often questionable origin com in Matt P distinguished between books that were to be read in public worship and apocryphal books because these secret books were often preserved for use within the esoteric circles of the divinely, knit believers many of the critically, spirited or unenlightened church fathers found themselves outside the realm of understanding and therefore came to apply the term apocryphal to what they claimed to be heretical works which were forbidden to be read in Protestant parlance the apocrypha designate works all but one of which are Jewish in origin and found in the Septuagint parts of Esdras are Christian and Latin in origin although some of them were composed in Palestine in Aramaic or Hebrew they were not accepted into the Jewish canon formed late in the ND century ad canonicity, the Reformers influenced by the Jewish canon of the Old Testament did not consider these books on a par with the rest of the scriptures thus the custom arose of making the Apocrypha a separate section in the Protestant Bible or sometimes even of omitting them entirely canonicity, the Catholic view expressed as a doctrine of faith at the Council of Trent is that of these works in a different enumeration however are canonical scripture they are called the Deuterocanonical books canonicity, the three books of the Protestant Apocrypha that are not accepted by Catholics are, Esdras and the prayer of Manasseh the theme of the book of Enoch dealing with the nature and deeds of the fallen angels so infuriated the later church fathers that one Philastrius actually condemned it openly as heresy Philastrius liber de Herizibus no nor did the rabbis deign to give credence to the book's teaching about angels Rabbi Simeon ben Jacque in the 2nd century ad pronounced a curse upon those who believed it delitz p so the book was denounced banned cursed no doubt burned and shredded and last but not least lost and conveniently forgotten for a thousand years but with an uncanny persistence the book of Enoch found its way back into circulation two centuries ago in rumors of a surviving copy of the book drew Scottish explorer James Bruce to distant Ethiopia true to hearsay the book of Enoch had been preserved by the Ethiopic church which put it right alongside the other books of the Bible Bruce secured not one but three Ethiopic copies of the book and brought them back to Europe and Britain when in Dr. Richard Lawrence a Hebrew professor at Oxford produced the first English translation of the work the modern world gained its first glimpse of the forbidden mysteries of Enoch most scholars say that the present form of the story in the book of Enoch was penned sometime during the 2nd century BC and was popular for at least 500 years the earliest Ethiopic text was apparently made from a Greek manuscript of the Book of Enoch which itself was a copy of an earlier text the original was apparently written in Semitic language now thought to be Aramaic though it was once believed to be post-Christian the similarities to Christian terminology and teaching are striking recent discoveries of copies of the book among the Dead Sea Scrolls found at Qumran prove that the book was in existence before the time of Jesus Christ but the date of the original writing upon which the 2nd century BC Qumran copies were based is shrouded in obscurity it is in a word old it has been largely the opinion of historians that the book does not really contain the authentic words of the ancient biblical patriarch Enoch since he would have lived based on the chronologies in the book of Genesis several thousand years earlier than the first known appearance of the book attributed to him although in the book he commands his son Methuselah to preserve the book unto future generations which in itself is a call to copy the books he wrote so they might not be lost to the ages despite its unknown origins Christians once accepted the words of this book of Enoch as authentic scripture especially the part about the fallen angels and their prophesied judgment in fact many of the key concepts used by Jesus Christ himself seem directly connected to terms and ideas in the book of Enoch thus it is hard to avoid the conclusion that Jesus had not only studied the book but also respected it highly enough to adopt and elaborate on its specific descriptions of the coming kingdom and its theme of inevitable judgment descending upon the wicked, the term most often used in the Old Testament to describe the watchers there is abundant proof that Christ approved of the book of Enoch over a hundred phrases in the New Testament find precedence in the book of Enoch another remarkable bit of evidence for the early Christians acceptance of the book of Enoch was for many years buried under the King James Bible's mistranslation of Luke describing the transfiguration of Christ and there came a voice out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son hear him apparently the translator here wished to make this verse agree with a similar verse in Matthew and Mark but Luke's verse in the original Greek reads this is my son the elect one from the Greek ho ekel legmanos lit the elect one hear him the elect one is a most significant term found 14 times in the 
Book of Enoch If the book was indeed known to the apostles of Christ with its abundant descriptions of the elect one who should sit upon the throne of glory and the elect one who should dwell in the midst of them then the great scriptural authenticity is accorded to the book of Enoch when the voice out of the cloud tells the apostles this is my son the elect one, the one promised in the book of Enoch the book of Jude tells us in verse that Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied Jude. Also in verse makes a direct reference to the book of Enoch where he writes to execute judgment on all to convict all who are ungodly the time difference between Enoch and Jude is approximately years therefore Jude's reference to the Enoch's prophesies strongly leans toward the conclusion that these written prophesies were available to him at that time fragments of ten Enoch manuscripts were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls the famous scrolls actually comprise only one part of the total. Findings at Qumran much of the rest was Enochian literature copies of the Book of Enoch and other apocryphal works in the Enochian tradition like the Book of Jubilees with so many copies around the Essenes could well have used the Enochian writings as a community prayer book or teacher's manual and study text the Book of Enoch was also used by writers of the non-canonical i.e. apocryphal or hidden texts the author of the apocryphal epistle of Barnabas quotes the Book of Enoch three times twice. Calling it the scripture a term specifically denoting the inspired word of God Epis of Barnabas other apocryphal works reflect knowledge of the Enoch story of the watchers notably the testaments of the twelve patriarchs and the book of Jubilees many of the early church fathers also supported the Enochian writings Justin Martyr ascribed all evil to demons whom he alleged to be the offspring of the angels who fell through lust for women directly referencing the Enochian writings Athenagoras. Writing in his work called Legatio in about Ad regards Enoch as a true prophet he describes the angels which violated both their own nature and their office in his writings he goes into detail about the nature of fallen angels and the cause of their fall which comes directly from the Enochian writings many other church fathers Tatian, Irenaeus Bishop of Lyons, Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, Origen, Lactantius, in addition to Methodius of Philippi Minosius Felix Commodianus and Ambrose of Milan also also approved of and supported the Enochian writings the 20th century discovery of several Aramaic Enochian texts among the Dead Sea Scrolls prompted Catholic scholar J.T. Millick to compile a complete history of the Enochian writings including translations of the Aramaic manuscripts Millick's page book published in by Oxford J.T. Millick ed and trans the books of Enoch Aramaic fragments of Qumran cave Oxford Clarendon Press is a milestone in Enochian scholarship and Millick himself is no doubt one of the finest experts on the subject his opinions based as they are on years of in-depth research are highly respected one by one the arguments against the book of Enoch fade away the day may soon arrive when the final complaints about the book of Enoch's lack of historicity and late date are also silenced by new evidence of the book's real antiquity such evidence would be perhaps the return of Enoch of whom there is no record of ever dying but rather still living in the kingdom of heaven it is appointed unto man once to die so Enoch has to die once in order for that scripture to be fulfilled spiritual scholars have attributed the fulfillment of the prophecies of Enoch being revealed in revelation of which we find the return of Enoch with a second reprimand of the world for three and a half years wearing sackcloth and perhaps with Elijah for company, we may finally be able to account of his life and times after hearing what he has to say in those days to come, until we see him finally die lay lifeless for three days and then rise up into the heavens yet again, David Chariot Book The Watchers Chapter The Words of the Blessing of Enoch The Words of the Blessing of Enoch Wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous who will be living in the days of tribulation when all the wicked and godless are to be removed and Enoch a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God took up his parable and said I saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens which the angels showed me and from them I heard everything and from them I understood as I saw but not for this generation but for a remote one which is for to come concerning the elect I said and took up my parable concerning them the holy great one will come forth from his dwelling and the eternal God will tread upon the earth even on Mount Sinai and will appear in the strength of his might from the heaven of heavens and all shall be smitten with fear and the watchers shall quake and great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth and the high mountains shall be shaken and the high hills shall be made low and shall melt like wax before the flame and the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder and all that is upon the earth shall perish and there shall be a judgment upon all but with the righteous he will make peace and will protect the elect and mercy shall be upon them and they shall all belong to God and they shall be prospered and they shall all be blessed and he will help them all and light shall appear unto them and he will make peace with them and behold he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him chapter the creation observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven how they do not change there orbits and the luminaries which are in the heaven how they all rise and set in order each in its season and transgress not against their appointed order behold ye the earth and give heed to the things which take place upon it from first to last how steadfast they are how none of the things upon earth change but all the works of God appear to you behold the summer and the winter how the whole earth is filled with water and clouds and dew and rain lie upon it observe and see how in the winter 
All the trees seem as though they had withered and shed all their leaves except 14 trees which do not lose their foliage but retain the old foliage from 2 to 3 years till the new comes and again observe yet the days of summer how the sun is above the earth over against it and you seek shade and shelter by reason of the heat of the sun and the earth also burns with growing heat and so you cannot tread on the earth or on a rock by reason of its heat observe yet how the trees cover themselves with green leaves and bear fruit wherefore give ye heed and know with regard to all his works and recognize how he that liveth forever hath made them so and all his works go on thus from year to year forever and all the tasks which they accomplish for him and their tasks change not but according as God hath ordained so is it done and behold how the sea and the rivers in like manner accomplish and change not their tasks from his commandments but ye have not been steadfast nor done the commandments of the Lord but ye have turned away and spoken proud and hard words with your impure mouths against his greatness O ye hard hearted ye shall find no peace therefore shall ye execrate your days and the years of your life shall perish and the years of your destruction shall be multiplied in eternal abomination and ye shall find no mercy in those days ye shall make your names an eternal abomination unto all the righteous and by you shall all who curse curse all the sinners and godless shall imprecate by you and for you the godless there shall be a curse and all the righteous shall rejoice and there shall be forgiveness of sins and every mercy and peace and forbearance there shall be salvation unto them a goodly light and for all of you sinners there shall be no salvation but on you all shall abide the curse of the beast but for the elect there shall be light and joy and peace and they shall inherit the earth and then there shall be bestowed upon the elect wisdom and they shall all live and never again sin either through ungodliness or through pride but they who are wise shall be humble and they shall not again transgress nor shall they sin all the days of their life nor shall they die of anger or wrath but they shall complete the number of the days of their life and their lives shall be increased in peace and the years of their joy shall be multiplied in eternal gladness and peace all the days of their life chapter fallen angels and it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters and the angels the children of the heaven saw and lusted after them and said to one another come let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children and Sem Jaza, who was their leader said unto them I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin and they all answered him and said let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan but to do this thing then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it and they were in all two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon and they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it and these are the names of their leaders Samlaz as their leader Urkel Baramiel Kakabal Tamlil Ramlil Danil Ezekiel Barakajal Asael Armoros Batarel Ananal Zaklal Samsapil Saderel Turel Jim Jail Surreal These are their chiefs of tens and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives and each chose for himself one and they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them and they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants and they became pregnant and they bear great giants whose height was three thousand ells who consumed all the acquisitions of men and when men could no longer sustain them the giants turned against them and devoured mankind and they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones and Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures and there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways Semjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings Armoros the resolving of enchantments Barakajal taught astrology Kakabal the constellations Ezekiel the knowledge of the clouds Arakil the signs of the earth Shamzeel the signs of the sun and Surreal the course of the moon and as men perished they cried and their cry went up to heaven chapter intercession of angels and then Michael Uriel Raphael and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth and they said one to another the earth made without inhabitant cries the voice of their crying stuff to the gates of heaven and now to you the holy ones of heaven the souls of men make their suit saying bring our cause before the Most High and they said to the Lord of the Ages Lord of Lords God of Gods King of Kings and God of the Ages the throne of thy glory standeth unto all the generations of the ages and thy name holy and glorious and blessed unto all the ages thou hast made all things and power over all things hast thou and all things are naked and open in thy sight and thou seest all things and nothing can hide itself from thee thou seest what Azazel hath done who hath taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were in heaven which men were striving to learn and Samlaz as to whom thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates and they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth and have slept with the women and have defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of sins and the women have borne giants and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness and now behold the souls of those who have died are crying out. 
making their suit to the gates of heaven and their lamentations have ascended and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on the earth and thou knowest all things before they come to pass and thou seest these things and thou dost suffer them and thou dost not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these then said the most high the holy and great one spake and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech and said to him go to Noah and tell him in my name hide thyself and reveal to him the end that is approaching that the whole earth will be destroyed and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth and will destroy all that is on it and now instruct him that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world and again the Lord said to Raphael bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness and make an opening in the desert which is in Dudale and cast him therein and place upon him rough and jagged rocks and cover him with darkness and let him abide there forever and cover his face that he may not see light and on the day of the great judgment he shall be cast into the fire and heal the earth which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons and the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel to him ascribe all sin and to Gabriel said the Lord proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication and destroy the children of the watchers from amongst men send them one against the other that they may destroy each other in battle for length of days shall they not have and no request that they make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf for they hope to live an eternal life and that each one of them will live five hundred years and the Lord said unto Michael go bind Samlazaz and his associates who have united themselves with women so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness and when their sons have slain one another and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones bind them fast for seventy generations in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation till the judgment that is forever and ever is consummated in those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire and to the torment and the prison in which they shall be confined forever and whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from thenceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers because they have wronged mankind destroy all wrong from the face of the earth and let every evil work come to an end and let the plant of righteousness and truth appear and it shall prove a Blessing the works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy forevermore and then shall all the righteous escape and shall live till they beget thousands of children and all the days of their youth and their old age shall they complete in peace and then shall the whole earth be tilled in righteousness and shall all be planted with trees and be full of blessing and all desirable trees shall be planted on it and they shall plant vines on it and the vine which they plant. Thereon shall yield wine in abundance and as for all the seed which is sown thereon each measure shall bear a thousand and each measure of olives shall yield ten presses of oil and cleanse thou the earth from all oppression and from all unrighteousness and from all sin and from all godlessness and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth destroy from off the earth and all the children of men shall become righteous and all nations shall offer adoration and shall praise me and all shall worship me and the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement and from all sin and from all punishment and from all torment and I will never again send upon it from generation to generation and forever and in those days I will open the store chambers of blessing which are in the heaven so as to send them down upon the earth over the work and labor of the children of men and truth and peace shall be associated together throughout all the days of the world and throughout all the Generations of men before these things Enoch was hidden and no one of the children of men knew where he was hidden and where he abode and what had become of him and his activities had to do with the watchers and his days were with the holy ones and I Enoch was blessing the Lord of majesty and the king of the ages and lo the watchers called me Enoch the scribe and said to me Enoch thou scribe of righteousness go declare to the watchers of the heaven who have left the high heaven the holy eternal place and have defiled themselves with women and have done as the children of earth do and have taken unto themselves wives say to them ye have wrought great destruction on the earth and ye shall have no peace nor forgiveness of sin and inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children the murder of their beloved ones shall they see and over the destruction of their children shall they lament and shall make supplication unto eternity but mercy and peace shall ye not attain and Enoch went and said Azazel thou shalt have no peace a severe sentence has gone forth against thee to put thee in bonds and thou shalt not have toleration nor request granted to thee because of the unrighteousness which thou hast taught and because of all the works of godlessness and unrighteousness and sin which thou hast shown to man then I went and spoke to them all together and they were all afraid and fear and trembling seized them and they besought me to draw up a petition for them that they might find forgiveness and to read their petition in the presence of the Lord of heaven for from thenceforward they could not speak with him nor lift up their eyes to heaven for shame of their sins for which they had been condemned then I wrote out their petition and the prayer in regard to their spirits and their deeds individually and in regard to their requests that they should have forgiveness and length and I went off and sat down at the waters of Dan in the land of Dan to the south of the west of Hermon I read their petition till I fell asleep and behold a dream came to me and visions fell down upon me and I saw visions of chastisement and a voice came bidding me to tell it to the sons of heaven and reprimand them and when I awaked I came unto them and they were all sitting gathered together weeping in Abel's jail which is between Lebanon and Sinezer with their faces covered and I recounted before them all the visions which I had seen in sleep and I began to speak 
the words of righteousness and to reprimand the heavenly watchers chapter book of the words of righteousness the book of the words of righteousness and of the reprimand of the eternal watchers in accordance with the command of the holy great one in that vision i saw in my sleep what i will now say with the tongue of flesh and with the breath of my mouth which the great one has given to men to converse therewith and understand with the heart as he has created and given to man the power of Understanding the word of wisdom so hath he created me also and given me the power of reprimanding the watchers the children of heaven I wrote out your petition and in my vision it appeared thus that your petition will not be granted unto you throughout all the days of eternity and that judgment has been finally passed upon you your petition will not be granted unto you and from henceforth you shall not ascend into heaven unto all eternity and in bonds of the earth the decree has gone forth to bind you for all the days of the world and previously you shall have seen the destruction of your beloved sons and ye shall have no pleasure in them but they shall fall before you by the sword and your petition on their behalf shall not be granted nor yet on your own even though you weep and pray and speak all the words contained in the writing which I have written and the vision was shown to me thus behold in the vision clouds invited me and a mist summoned me and the course of the stars and the lightning sped and hastened me and the winds in the vision caused me to fly and lifted me upward and bore me into heaven and I went in till I drew nigh to a wall which is built of crystals and surrounded by tongues of fire and it began to affright me and I went into the tongues of fire and drew nigh to a large house which was built of crystals and the walls of the house were like a tessellated floor made of crystals and its groundwork was of crystal its ceiling was like the path of the stars and the lightnings and between them were fiery cherubim and their heaven was water a flaming fire surrounded the walls and its portals blazed with fire and I entered into that house and it was hot as fire and cold as ice there were no delights of life therein fear covered me and trembling got hold upon me and as I quaked and trembled I fell upon my face and I beheld a vision and lo there was a second house greater than the former and the entire portal stood open before me and it was built of flames of fire and in every respect it so excelled in splendor and magnificence and extent that I cannot describe to you its splendor and its extent and its floor was of fire and above it were lightnings and the path of the stars and its ceiling also was flaming fire and I looked and saw therein a lofty throne its appearance was as crystal and the wheels thereof as the shining sun and there was the vision of cherubim and from underneath the throne came streams of flaming fire so that I could not look thereon and the great glory sat thereon and his raiment shone more brightly than the sun and was whiter than any snow none of the angels could enter and could behold his face by reason of the magnificence and glory and no flesh could behold him the flaming fire was round about him and a great fire stood before him and none around could draw nigh him ten thousand times ten thousand were before him yet he needed no counselor and the most holy ones who were nigh to him did not leave by night nor depart from him and until then I had been prostrate on my face trembling and the Lord called me with his own mouth and said to me come hither Enoch and hear my word and one of the holy ones came to me and waked me and he made me rise up and approach the door and I bowed my face downwards and he answered and said to me and I heard his voice fear not Enoch thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness approach hither and hear my voice and go say to the watchers of heaven who have sent thee to intercede for them you should intercede for men and not men for you wherefore have ye left the high holy and eternal heaven and lain with women and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men and taken to yourselves wives and done like the children of earth and begotten giants as your sons and though ye were holy spiritual living the eternal life you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women and have begotten with the blood of flesh and as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood as those also do who die and perish therefore have I given them wives also that they might impregnate them and beget children by them that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth but you were formerly spiritual living the eternal life and immortal for all generations of the world and therefore I have not appointed wives for you for as for the spiritual ones of the heaven in heaven is their dwelling and now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men and from the watchers is their beginning and primal origin they shall be evil spirits on earth and evil spirits shall they be called and the spirits of the giants afflict oppress destroy attack do battle and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble they take no food but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses and these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them from the days of the slaughter and destruction and death of the giants from the souls of whose flesh the spirits having gone forth shall destroy without incurring judgment thus shall they destroy until the day of the consummation the great judgment in which the age shall be consummated over the watchers and the godless ye shall be wholly consummated and now as to the watchers who have sent thee to intercede for them who had been aforetime in heaven say to them you have been in heaven but all the mysteries had not yet been revealed to you and you knew worthless ones and these in the hardness of your hearts you have made known to the women and through these mysteries women and men work much evil on earth say to them therefore you have no peace chapter taken by angels angels took and brought me to a place in which those who were there were like flaming fire and when they wished they appeared as men and they brought me to the place of darkness and to a mountain the point of whose summit reached to heaven and I saw the places of the luminaries and the treasuries of the stars and of the thunder and in the uttermost depths where were a fiery bow and arrows and their quiver and a fiery sword and all the lightnings and they took me to the living waters and to the fire of the west which receives every setting of the sun and I came 
to a river of fire in which the fire flows like water and discharges itself into the great sea towards the west I saw the great rivers and came to the great river and to the great darkness and went to the place where no flesh walks I saw the mountains of the darkness of winter and the place whence all the waters of the deep flow I saw the mouths of all the rivers of the earth and the mouth of the deep I saw the treasuries of all the winds I saw how he had furnished with them the whole creation and the firm foundations of the earth and I saw the cornerstone of the earth I saw the four winds which bear the firmament of the heaven and I saw how the winds stretch out the vaults of heaven and have their station between heaven and earth these are the pillars of the heaven I saw the winds of heaven which turn and bring the circumference of the sun and all the stars to their setting I saw the winds on the earth carrying the clouds I saw the paths of the angels I saw at the end of the earth the firmament of the heaven above and I proceeded and saw a place which burns day and night where there are seven mountains of magnificent stones three towards the east and three towards the south and as for those towards the east was of colored stone and one of pearl and one of jacinth and those towards the south of red stone but the middle one reached to heaven like the throne of God of alabaster and the summit of the throne was of sapphire and I saw a flaming fire and beyond. These mountains is a region the end of the great earth there the heavens were completed and I saw a deep abyss with columns of heavenly fire and among them I saw columns of fire fall which were beyond measure alike towards the height and towards the depth and beyond that abyss I saw a place which had no firmament of the heaven above and no firmly founded earth beneath it there was no water upon it and no birds but it was a waste and horrible place I saw there seven stars like great burning mountains and to me when I inquired regarding them the angel said this place is the end of heaven and earth this has become a prison for the stars and the host of heaven and the stars which roll over the fire are they which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in the beginning of their rising because they did not come forth at their appointed times and he was wroth with them and bound them till the time when their guilt should be consummated for ten thousand years and Uriel said to me here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits assuming many different forms are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of and the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens and I Enoch alone saw the vision the ends of all things and no man shall see as I have seen chapter. The holy angels and these are the names of the holy angels who watch mankind Uriel one of the holy angels who is over the world and over Tartarus Raphael one of the holy angels who is over the spirits of men Ragel one of the holy angels who takes vengeance on the world of the luminaries Michael one of the holy angels to wit he that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos Sarakael one of the holy angels who is set over the spirits who sin in the spirit Gabriel one of the holy angels who is over paradise and the serpents and the cherubim remiel one of the holy angels whom God set over those who rise and I proceeded to where things were chaotic and I saw there something horrible I saw neither a heaven above nor a firmly founded earth but a place chaotic and horrible and there I saw seven stars of the heaven bound together in it like great mountains and burning with fire then I said for what sin are they bound and on what account have they been cast in hither then said Uriel one of the holy angels who was with me and was chief over them and said Enoch why dost thou ask and why art thou eager for the truth these are of the number of the stars of heaven which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and are bound here till ten thousand years the time entailed by their sins are consummated and from thence I went to another place which was still more horrible than the former and I saw a horrible thing a great fire there which burnt and blazed. And the place was cleft as far as the abyss being full of great descending columns of fire neither its extent or magnitude could I see nor could I conjecture then I said how fearful is the place and how terrible to look upon then Uriel answered me one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me Enoch why hast thou such fear and affright and I answered because of this fearful place and because of the spectacle of the pain and he said unto me this place is the prison of the angels and here they will be imprisoned forever and thence I went to another place the mountain of hard rock and there was in it four hollow places deep and wide and very smooth how smooth are the hollow places and deep and dark to look at then Raphael answered one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me these hollow places have been created for this very purpose that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein yet that all the souls of the children of men should assemble here and these places have been made to receive them till the day of their judgment and till their appointed period till the great judgment upon them I saw a dead man making suit and his voice went forth to heaven and made suit and I asked Raphael the angel who was with me and I said unto him this spirit which make suit whose is it whose voice goeth forth and make suit to heaven and he answered me saying this is the spirit which went forth from Abel whom his brother Cain slew and he makes his suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men the I asked regarding it and regarding all the hollow places why is one separated from the other and he answered me and said unto me these three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated and such a division has been made for the spirits of the righteous in which there is the bright spring of water and such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime here their spirits shall be set apart in this great pain till the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever and retribution for their spirits there he shall bind them forever and such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit who make disclosures concerning their destruction when they were slain in the days of 
the sinners such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous but sinners who were complete in transgression and of the transgressors they shall be companions but their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment nor shall they be raised from thence the I blessed the Lord of glory and said blessed be my Lord the Lord of righteousness who ruleth forever from thence I went to another place to the west of the ends of the earth and I saw a burning fire which ran without resting and paused not from its course day or night but regularly and I asked saying what is this which rests not then Ragel one of the holy angels who was with me answered me and said unto me this course of fire which thou hast seen is the fire in the west which persecutes all the luminaries of heaven and from thence I went to another place of the earth and he showed me a mountain range of fire which burnt day and night and I went beyond it and saw seven magnificent mountains all differing each from the other and the stones were magnificent and beautiful magnificent as a whole of glorious appearance and fair exterior three towards the east one founded on the other and three towards the south one upon the other and deep rough ravines no one of which joined with any other and the seventh mountain was in the midst of these and it excelled them in height resembling the seat of a throne and fragrant trees encircled the throne and amongst them was a tree such as I had never yet smelt neither was any amongst them nor were others like it it had a fragrance beyond all fragrance and its leaves and blooms and wood wither not forever and its fruit is beautiful and its fruit resembles the dates of a palm then I said how beautiful is this tree and fragrant and its leaves are fair and its blooms very delightful in appearance then answered Michael one of the holy and honored angels who was with me and was their leader and he said unto me Enoch why dost thou ask me Regarding the fragrance of the tree and why dost thou wish to learn the truth then I answered him saying I wish to know about everything but especially about this tree and he answered saying this high mountain which thou hast seen whose summit is like the throne of God is his throne where the holy great one the Lord of glory the eternal king will sit when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness and as for this fragrant tree no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment when he shall take vengeance on all and bring to its consummation forever it shall then be given to the righteous and holy its fruit shall be for food to the elect it shall be transplanted to the holy place to the temple of the Lord the eternal king then shall they rejoice with joy and be glad and into the holy place shall they enter and its fragrance shall be in their bones and they shall live a long life on earth such as thy fathers lived and in their days shall no sorrow or plague or torment or calamity touch them then blessed I the God of glory the eternal king who hath prepared such things for the righteous and hath created them and promised to give to them and I went from thence to the middle of the earth and I saw a blessed place in which there were trees with branches abiding and blooming and there I saw a holy mountain and underneath the mountain to the east there was a stream and it flowed towards the south and I saw towards the east another mountain higher than this and between them a deep and narrow ravine in it also ran a stream underneath the mountain and to the west thereof there was another mountain lower than the former and of small elevation and a ravine deep and dry between them and another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains and all the ravines were deep and narrow of hard rock and trees were not planted upon them and I marveled at the rocks and I marveled at the ravine yet I marveled very much. Then said I for what object is this blessed land which is entirely filled with trees and this accursed valley between then Uriel one of the holy angels who was with me answered and said this accursed valley is for those who are accursed forever here shall all the accursed be gathered together who utter with their lips against the Lord unseemly words and of his glory speak hard things here shall they be gathered together and here shall be their place of judgment in the last days there shall be upon them the spectacle of righteous judgment in the presence of the righteous forever here shall the merciful bless the Lord of glory the eternal king in the days of judgment over the former they shall bless him for the mercy in accordance with which he has assigned them then I blessed the Lord of glory and set forth his glory and lauded him gloriously and thence I went towards the east into the midst of the mountain range of the desert and I saw a wilderness and it was solitary full of trees and plants and water gushed forth from above rushing like a copious water course towards the northwest it caused clouds and dew to ascend on every side and thence I went to another place in the desert and approached to the east of this mountain range and there I saw aromatic trees exhaling the fragrance of frankincense and myrrh and the trees also were similar to the almond tree and beyond these I went afar to the east and I saw another place a valley of water and therein there was a tree the color of fragrant trees such as the mastic and on the sides of those valleys I saw fragrant cinnamon and beyond these I proceeded to the east and I saw other mountains and amongst them were groves of trees and there flowed forth from them nectar which is named Serrera and Galbanum and beyond these mountains I saw another mountain to the east of the ends of the earth whereon were aloe trees and all the trees were full of stacti being like almond trees and when one burned it it smelt sweeter than any fragrant odor and after these fragrant odors as I looked towards the north over the mountains I saw seven mountains full of choice nard and fragrant trees and cinnamon and pepper and thence I went over the summits of all these mountains far towards the east of the earth and passed above the Erythrean sea and went far from it and passed over the angel Zoshael and I came to the garden of righteousness and from afar off I saw numerous trees and these great two trees they're very great beautiful and glorious and magnificent and the tree of knowledge whose holy fruit they eat and no great wisdom that tree is in height like the strangler fig and its leaves are like the carob tree and its fruit is like the clusters of the vine very beautiful and the fragrance of the tree penetrates afar then I said how beautiful is the tree and how attractive is its look then Raphael the holy angel who was with me answered me and said this is the tree of wisdom of which 
Thy father old and thy aged mother who were before thee have eaten and they learned wisdom and their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked and they were driven out of the garden and from thence I went to the ends of the earth and saw their great beasts and each differed from the other and birds also differing in appearance and beauty and voice the one differing from the other and to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth whereon the heaven rests and the portals of the heaven open and I saw how the stars of heaven come forth and I counted the portals out of which they proceed and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by itself according to their number and their names their courses and their positions and their times and their months as Uriel the holy angel who was with me showed me he showed all things to me and wrote them down for me also their names he wrote for me and their laws and their companies and from thence I went towards the north to the ends of the earth and there I saw a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth and here I saw three portals of heaven open in the heaven through each of them proceed north winds when they blow there is cold hail frost snow dew and rain and out of one portal they blow for good but when they blow through the other two portals it is with violence and affliction on the earth and they blow with violence and from thence I went towards the west to the ends of the earth and saw there three portals of the heaven open such as I had seen in the east the same number of portals and the same number of outlets and from thence I went to the south to the ends of the earth and saw there three open portals of the heaven and thence there come dew rain and wind and from thence I went to the east to the ends of the heaven and saw here the three eastern portals of heaven open and small portals above them through each of these small portals pass the stars of heaven and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them and as often as I saw I blessed always the Lord of glory and I continued to bless the Lord of glory who has wrought great and glorious wonders to show the greatness of his work to the angels and to spirits and to men that they might praise his work and all his creation that they might see the work of his might and praise the great work of his hands and bless him forever book the parables chapter the first parable the second vision which he saw the vision of wisdom which Enoch the son of Jared the son of Mahalalil the son of Kinan the son of Enos the son of Seth the son of Adam saw and this is the beginning of the words of wisdom which I lifted up my voice to speak and say to those which dwell on earth hear ye men of old time and see ye that come after the words of the Holy One which I will speak before the Lord of Spirits it were better to declare to the men of old times but even from those that come after we will not withhold the beginning of wisdom till the present day such wisdom has never been given by the Lord of Spirits as I have received according to my insight according to the good pleasure of the Lord of Spirits by whom the lot of eternal life has been given to me now three parables were imparted to me and I lifted up my voice and recounted them to those that dwell on the earth the first parable when the congregation of the righteous shall appear and sinners shall be judged for their sins and shall be driven from the face of the earth and when the righteous one shall appear before the eyes of the righteous whose elect works hang upon the Lord of spirits and light shall appear to the righteous and the elect who dwell on the earth where then will be the dwelling of the sinners and where the resting place of those who have denied the Lord of spirits it had been good for them if they had not been born when the secrets of the righteous shall be revealed and the sinners judged and the godless driven from the presence of the righteous and elect from that time those that possess the earth shall no longer be powerful and exalted and they shall not be able to behold the face of the holy for the lord of spirits has caused his light to appear on the face of the holy righteous and elect then shall the kings and the mighty perish and be given into the hands of the righteous and holy and thenceforward none shall seek for themselves mercy from the lord of spirits for their life is at an end and it shall come to pass in those days that elect and holy children will descend from the high heaven and their seed will become one with the children of men and in those days Enoch received books of zeal and wrath and books of disquiet and expulsion and mercy shall not be accorded to them saith the Lord of spirits and in those days a whirlwind carried me off from the earth and set me down at the end of the heavens and there I saw another vision the dwelling places of the holy and the resting places of the righteous here mine eyes saw their dwellings with his righteous angels and their resting places with the holy and they petitioned and interceded and prayed for the children of men and righteousness flowed before them as water and mercy like dew upon the earth thus it is amongst them forever and ever and in that place mine eyes saw the elect one of righteousness and of faith and I saw his dwelling place under the wings of the Lord of spirits and righteousness shall prevail in his days and the righteous and elect shall be without number before him forever and ever and all the righteous and elect before him shall be strong as fiery lights and their mouth shall be full of blessing and their lips extol the name of the Lord of spirits and righteousness before him shall never fail there I wish to dwell and my spirit longed for that dwelling place and there heretofore hath been my portion for so has it been established concerning me before the Lord of Spirits in those days I praised and extolled the name of the Lord of spirits with blessings and praises because he hath destined me for blessing and glory according to the good pleasure of the Lord of spirits for a long time my eyes regarded that place and I blessed him and praised him saying blessed is he and may he be blessed from the beginning and forevermore and before him there is no ceasing he knows before the world was created what is forever and what will be from generation unto generation those who sleep not bless thee they stand before thy glory and bless praise and extol saying holy 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 is the lord of spirits he filleth the earth with spirits and here my eyes saw all those who sleep not they stand before him and bless and say blessed be thou and blessed be the name of the lord forever and ever and my face was changed for i could no longer behold and after that i saw thousands of thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand i saw a multitude beyond 
number and reckoning who stood before the Lord of Spirits and on the four sides of the Lord of Spirits I saw four presences different from those that sleep not and I learned their names for the angel that went with me made known to me their names and showed me all the hidden things and I heard the voices of those four presences as they uttered praises before the Lord of Glory the first voice blesses the Lord of Spirits forever and ever and the second voice I heard blessing the elect one and the elect ones who hang upon the Lord of Spirits and the third voice I heard pray and intercede for those who dwell on the earth and supplicate in the name of the Lord of Spirits and I heard the fourth voice fending off the Satans and forbidding them to come before the Lord of Spirits to accuse them who dwell on the earth after that I asked the angel of peace who went with me who showed me everything that is hidden who are these four presences which I have seen and whose words I have heard and written down and he said to me this first is Michael the merciful and long-suffering and the second who is set over all the diseases and all the wounds of the children of men is Raphael and the third who is set over all the powers is Gabriel and the fourth who is set over the repentance unto hope of those who inherit eternal life is named Phanuel and these are the four angels of the Lord of Spirits and the four voices I heard in those days and after that I saw all the secrets of the heavens and how the kingdom is divided and how the actions of men are weighed in the balance and there I saw the mansions of the elect and the mansions of the holy and mine eyes saw there all the sinners being driven from thence which deny the name of the Lord of Spirits and being dragged off and they could not abide because of the punishment which proceeds from the Lord of Spirits and there mine eyes saw the secrets of the lightning and of the thunder and the secrets of the winds how they are divided to blow over the earth and the secrets of the clouds and dew and these I saw from whence they proceed in that place and from whence they saturate the dusty earth and there I saw closed chambers out of which the winds are divided the chamber of the hail and winds the chamber of the mist and of the clouds and the cloud thereof hovers over the earth from the beginning of the world and I saw the chambers of the sun and moon whence they proceed and whither they come again and there glorious return and how one is superior to the other and their stately orbit and how they do not leave their orbit and they add nothing to their orbit and they take nothing from it and they keep faith with each other in accordance with the oath by which they are bound together and first the sun goes forth and traverses his path according to the commandment of the Lord of Spirits and mighty is his name forever and ever and after that I saw the hidden and the visible path of the moon and she accomplishes the course of her path in that place by day and by night the one holding a position opposite to the other before the Lord of Spirits and they give thanks and praise and rest not for unto them is their thanksgiving rest for the sun changes oft for a blessing or a curse and the course of the path of the moon is light to the righteous and darkness to the sinners in the name of the Lord who made a separation between the light and the darkness and divided the spirits of men and strengthen the spirits of the righteous in the name of his righteousness for no angel hinders and no power is able to hinder for he appoints a judge for them all and he judges them all before him wisdom found no place where she might dwell then a dwelling place was assigned her in the heavens wisdom went forth to make her dwelling among the children of men and found no dwelling place wisdom returned to her place and took her seat among the angels and unrighteousness went forth from her chambers whom she sought not she found and dwelt with them as rain in a desert and dew on a thirsty land and I saw other lightnings and the stars of heaven and I saw how he called them all by their names and they hearkened unto him and I saw how they are weighed in a righteous balance according to their proportions of light the width of their spaces and the day of their appearing and how their revolution produces lightning and their revolution according to the number of the angels and they keep faith with each other and I asked the angel who went with me who showed me what was hidden what are these and he said to me the Lord of spirits hath showed thee their parabolic meaning these are the names of the holy who dwell on the earth and believe in the name of the Lord of spirits forever and ever also another phenomenon I saw in regard to the lightnings how some of the stars arise and become lightnings and cannot part with their new form chapter the second parable and this is the second parable concerning those who deny the name of the dwelling of the holy ones and the Lord of spirits and into the heaven they shall not ascend and on the earth they shall not come such shall be the lot of the sinners who have denied the name of the Lord of spirits who are thus preserved for the day of suffering and tribulation on that day mine elect one shall sit on the throne of glory and shall try their works and their places of rest shall be innumerable and their souls shall grow strong within them when they see mine elect ones and those who have called upon my glorious name then will I cause mine elect one to dwell among them and I will transform the heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light and I will transform the earth and make it a blessing and I will cause mine elect ones to dwell upon it but the sinners and evil doers shall not set foot thereon for I have provided and satisfied with peace my righteous ones and have caused them to dwell before me but for the sinners there is judgment impending with me so that I shall destroy them from the face of the earth and there I saw one who had a head of days and his head was white like wool and with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man and his face was full of graciousness like one of the holy angels and I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning that son of man who he was and whence he was and why he went with the head of days and he answered and said unto me this is the son of man who hath righteousness with whom dwelleth righteousness and who reveals all the treasures of that which is hidden because the Lord of spirits hath chosen him and whose lot hath preeminence before the Lord of spirits in uprightness forever and the son of man whom thou hast seen shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats and shall loosen the reins of the strong and break the teeth of the sinners because they do not 
extol and praise him nor humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them and he shall put down the countenance of the strong and shall fill them with shame darkness shall be their dwelling and worms shall be their bed they shall have no hope of rising from their beds because they do not extol the name of the lord of spirits these are they who judge the stars of heaven tread upon the earth and dwell upon it all their deeds manifest unrighteousness and their power rests upon their Riches their faith is in the gods which they have made with their hands and they deny the name of the Lord of Spirits they persecute the houses of his congregations and the faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits and in those days shall have ascended the prayer of the righteous and the blood of the righteous from the earth before the Lord of Spirits in those days the holy ones who dwell above in the heavens shall unite with one voice and supplicate and pray and praise give. Thanks and bless the name of the Lord of Spirits on behalf of the blood of the righteous which has been shed and that the prayer of the righteous may not be in vain before the Lord of Spirits that judgment may be done unto them and that they may not have to suffer forever in those days I saw the head of days when he seated himself upon the throne of his glory and the books of the living were opened before him and all his host which is in heaven above and his counselors stood before him. And the hearts of the holy were filled with joy because the number of the righteous had been offered and the prayer of the righteous had been heard and the blood of the righteous been required before the Lord of Spirits and in that place I saw the fountain of righteousness which was inexhaustible and around it were many fountains of wisdom all the thirsty drank of them and were filled with wisdom and their dwellings were with the righteous and holy and elect and at that hour that son of man was named in the presence of the Lord of Spirits and his name before the head of days yet before the sun and the signs were created before the stars of the heaven were made his name was named before the Lord of Spirits he shall be a staff to the righteous whereon to stay themselves and not fall and he shall be the light of the Gentiles and the hope of those who are troubled of heart all who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him and will praise and bless and celebrate with Song the Lord of Spirits and for this reason hath he been chosen and hidden before him before the creation of the world and forevermore and the wisdom of the Lord of Spirits hath revealed him to the holy and righteous for he hath preserved the lot of the righteous because they have hated and despised this world of unrighteousness and have hated all its works and ways in the name of the Lord of Spirits for in his name they are saved and according to his good pleasure hath it been in regard to their life in these days downcast in countenance shall the kings of the earth have become and the strong who possess the land because of the works of their hands for on the day of their anguish and affliction they shall not save themselves and I will give them over into the hands of mine elect as straw in the fire so shall they burn before the face of the holy as lead in the water shall they sink before the face of the righteous and no trace of them shall any more be found and on the day of their affliction there shall be rest on the earth and before them they shall fall and not rise again there shall be no one to take them with his hands and raise them for they have denied the Lord of Spirits and his anointed one the name of the Lord of Spirits be blessed El for wisdom is poured out like water and glory faileth not before him forevermore for he is mighty in all the secrets of righteousness and unrighteousness shall disappear as a shadow and have no continuance because the elect one standeth before the Lord of Spirits and his glory is forever and ever and his might unto all generations and in him dwells the spirit of wisdom and the spirit which gives insight and the spirit of understanding and of might and the spirit of those who have fallen asleep in righteousness and he shall judge the secret things and none shall be able to utter a lying word before him for he is the elect one before the Lord of Spirits according to his good pleasure in those days a change shall take place for the holy and elect and the light of days shall abide upon them and glory and honor shall turn to the holy on the day of affliction on which evil shall have been treasured up against the sinners and the righteous shall be victorious in the name of the Lord of Spirits and he will cause the others to witness that they may repent and forego the works of their hands they shall have no honor through the name of the Lord of Spirits yet through his name shall they be saved and the Lord of spirits will have compassion on them for his compassion is great and he is righteous also in his judgment and in the presence of his glory unrighteousness also shall not maintain itself at his judgment the unrepentant shall perish before him and from henceforth I will have no mercy on them saith the Lord of spirits in those days shall the earth also give back that which has been entrusted to it Sheol also shall give back that which it has received and hell shall give back that which it Oh, for in those days the elect one shall arise and he shall choose the righteous and holy from among them for the day has drawn nigh that they should be saved and the elect one shall in those days sit on my throne and his mouth shall pour forth all the secrets of wisdom and counsel for the Lord of spirits hath given to him and hath glorified him in those days shall the mountains leap like rams and the hills also shall skip like lambs satisfied with milk and the faces of the angels in heaven shall be lighted up with joy and the earth shall rejoice and the righteous shall dwell upon it and the elect shall walk thereon and after those days in that place where I had seen all the visions of that which is hidden for I had been carried off in a whirlwind and they had borne me towards the west there mine eyes saw all the secret things of heaven that shall be a mountain of iron and a mountain of copper and a mountain of silver and a mountain of gold and a mountain of soft metal and a mountain of lead and I asked the angel who went with me saying what things are these which I have seen in secret and he said unto me all these things which thou hast seen shall serve the dominion of his anointed that he may be potent and mighty on the earth and that angel of peace answered saying unto me wait a little and there shall be revealed unto thee all the secret things which surround the Lord of spirits and these mountains which thine eyes have seen the mountain of iron 
and the mountain of copper and the mountain of silver and the mountain of gold and the mountain of soft metal and the mountain of lead all these shall be in the presence of the elect one as wax before the fire and like the water which streams down from above and they shall become powerless before his feet and it shall come to pass in those days that none shall be saved either by gold or by silver and none be able to escape and there shall be no iron for war nor shall one clothe oneself with. A breastplate bronze shall be of no service and tin shall not be esteemed and lead shall not be desired and all these things shall be destroyed from the surface of the earth and I looked and turned to another part of the earth and saw there a deep valley with burning fire and they brought the kings and the mighty and began to cast them into this deep valley and their mine eyes saw how they made these their instruments iron chains of immeasurable weight and I asked the angel of peace who went with me saying for whom are these chains being prepared and he said unto me these are being prepared for the hosts of Azazel so that they may take them and cast them into the abyss of complete condemnation and they shall cover their jaws with rough stones as the Lord of Spirits commanded and Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Phanuel shall take hold of them on that great day and cast them on that day into the burning furnace that the Lord of Spirits may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness in becoming subject to Satan and leading astray those who dwell on the earth and in those days shall punishment come from the Lord of spirits and he will open all the chambers of waters which are above the heavens and of the fountains which are beneath the earth and all the waters shall be joined with the waters that which is above the heavens is the masculine and the water which is beneath the earth is the feminine and they shall destroy all who dwell on the earth and those who dwell under the ends of the heaven and when they have recognized their unrighteousness which they have wrought on the earth then by these shall they perish and after that the head of days repented and said in vain have I destroyed all who dwell on the earth and he swear by his great name henceforth I will not do so to all who dwell on the earth and I will set a sign in the heaven and this shall be a pledge of good faith between me and them forever so long as heaven is above the earth and this is in accordance with my command when I have desired to take hold of them by the hand of the angels on the day of tribulation and pain because of this I will cause my chastisement and my wrath to abide upon them saith God the Lord of spirits ye mighty kings who dwell on the earth ye shall have to behold mine elect one how he sits on the throne of glory and judges Azazel and all his associates and all his hosts in the name of the Lord of spirits and I saw there the hosts of the angels of punishment going and they held scourges and chains of iron and bronze and I asked the angel of peace who went with me saying to whom are these who hold the scourges going and he said unto me to their elect and beloved ones that they may be cast into the chasm of the abyss of the valley and then that valley shall be filled with their elect and beloved and the days of their lives shall be at an end and the days of their leading astray shall not thenceforward be reckoned and in those days the angels shall return and hurl themselves to the east upon the Parthians and Medes they shall stir up the kings so that a spirit of unrest shall come upon them and they shall rouse them from their thrones that they may break forth as lions from their lairs and as hungry wolves among their flocks and they shall go up and tread underfoot the land of his elect ones but the city of the righteous shall be a hindrance to their horses and they shall begin to fight among themselves. And their right hand shall be strong against themselves and a man shall not know his brother nor a son his father or his mother till there be no number of the corpses through their slaughter and their punishment be not in vain in those days Sheol shall open its jaws and they shall be swallowed up therein their destruction shall be at an end Sheol shall devour the sinners in the presence of the elect and it came to pass after this that I saw another host of wagons and men riding thereon and coming on the winds from the east and from the west to the south and the noise of their wagons was heard and when this turmoil took place the holy ones from heaven remarked it and the pillars of the earth were moved from their place and the sound thereof was heard from the one end of heaven to the other in one day and they shall all fall down and worship the Lord of spirits and this is the end of the second parable chapter the third parable and I began to speak the third parable concerning the righteous and elect blessed are ye your righteous and elect for glorious shall be your lot and the righteous shall be in the light of the sun and the elect in the light of eternal life the days of their life shall be unending and the days of the holy without number and they shall seek the light and find righteousness with the Lord of spirits there shall be peace to the righteous in the name of the eternal Lord and after this it shall be said to the holy in heaven that they should seek out the secrets of righteousness the heritage of faith for it has become bright as the sun upon earth and the darkness is past and there shall be a light that never ends and to a limit of days they shall not come for the darkness shall first have been destroyed and the light of uprightness established forever before the Lord of spirits in those days mine eyes saw the secrets of the lightnings and of the lights and the judgments they execute and they lighten for a blessing or a curse as the Lord of Spirits willeth and there I saw the secrets of the thunder and how when it resounds above in the heaven the sound thereof is heard and he caused me to see the judgments executed on the earth whether they be for well-being and blessing or for a curse according to the word of the Lord of Spirits and after that all the secrets of the lights and lightnings were shown to me and they lighten for blessing and for satisfying in the year in the seventh month on the fourteenth day of the month in the life of Enoch in that parable I saw how a mighty quaking made the heaven of heavens to quake and the host of the Most High and the angels a thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand were disquieted with a great disquiet and the head of days sat on the throne of his glory and the angels and the righteous stood around him and a great trembling seized me and fear took hold of me and my loins gave way and dissolved were my reins and I fell upon my face and Michael. 
sent another angel from among the holy ones and he raised me up and when he had raised me up my spirit returned for I had not been able to endure the look of this host and the commotion and the quaking of the heaven and Michael said unto me why art thou disquieted with such a vision until this day lasted the day of his mercy and he hath been merciful and long suffering towards those who dwell on the earth and when the day and the power and the punishment and the judgment come which the Lord of spirits hath prepared for those who worship not the righteous law and for those who deny the righteous judgment and for those who take his name in vain that day is prepared for the elect a covenant but for sinners an inquisition when the punishment of the Lord of spirits shall rest upon them it shall rest in order that the punishment of the Lord of spirits may not come in vain and it shall slay the children with their mothers and the children with their fathers afterwards the judgment shall take place according to his mercy and his patience and on that day were two monsters parted a female monster named Leviathan to dwell in the abysses of the ocean over the fountains of the waters but the male is named Behemoth who occupied with his breast a waste wilderness named Duodon on the east of the garden where the elect and righteous dwell where my grandfather was taken up the seventh from Adam the first man whom the Lord of spirits created and I besought the other angel that he should show me the might of those monsters how they were parted on one day and cast the one into the abysses of the sea and the other unto the dry land of the wilderness and he said to me thou son of man herein thou dost seek to know what is hidden and the other angel who went with me and showed me what was hidden told me what is first and last in the heaven in the height and beneath the earth in the depth and at the ends of the heaven and on the foundation of the heaven and the chambers of the winds and how the winds are divided and how they are weighed and how the portals of the winds are reckoned each according to the power of the wind and the power of the lights of the moon and according to the power that is fitting and the divisions of the stars according to their names and how all the divisions are divided and the thunders according to the places where they fall and all the divisions that are made among the lightnings that it may lighten and their host that they may at once obey for the thunder has places of rest assigned to it while it is waiting for its peal and the thunder and lightning are inseparable and although not one and undivided they both go together through the spirit and separate not for when the lightning lightens the thunder utters its voice and the spirit enforces a pause during the peal and divides equally between them for the treasury of their peals is like the sand and each one of them as it peals is held in with a bridle and turned back by the power of the spirit and pushed forward according to the many quarters of the earth and the spirit of the sea is masculine and strong and according to the might of his strength he draws it back with the rain and in like manner it is driven forward and disperses amid all the mountains of the earth and the spirit of the hoarfrost is his own angel and the spirit of the hail is a good angel and the spirit of the snow has forsaken his chambers on account of his strength there is a special spirit therein and that which ascends from it is like smoke and its name is frost and the spirit of the mist is not united with them in their chambers but it has a special chamber for its course is glorious both in light and in darkness and in winter and in summer and in its chamber is an angel and the spirit of the dew has its dwelling at the ends of the heaven and is connected with the chambers of the rain and its course is in winter and summer and its clouds and the clouds of the mist are connected and the one gives to the other and when the spirit of the rain goes forth from its chamber the angels come and open the chamber and lead it out and when it is diffused over the whole earth it unites with the water on the earth and whensoever it unites with the water on the earth for the waters are for those who dwell on the earth for they are a nourishment for the earth from the most high who is in heaven therefore there is a measure for the rain and the angels take it in charge and these things I saw towards the garden of the righteous and the angel of peace who was with me said to me these two monsters prepared conformably to the greatness of God shall feed and I saw in those days how long cords were given to those angels and they took to themselves wings and flew and they went towards the north and I asked the angel saying unto him why have those angels taken these cords and gone off and he said unto me they have gone to measure and the angel who went with me said unto me these shall bring the measures of the righteous and the ropes of the righteous to the righteous that they may stay themselves on the name of the Lord of spirits forever and ever the elect shall begin to dwell with the elect and those are the measures which shall be given to faith and which shall strengthen righteousness and these measures shall reveal all the secrets of the depths of the earth and those who have been destroyed by the desert and those who have been devoured by the beasts and those who have been devoured by the fish of the sea that they may return and stay themselves on the day of the elect one for none shall be destroyed before the Lord of spirits and none can be destroyed and all who dwell above in the heaven receive the command and power and one voice and one light like unto fire and that one with their first words they blessed and extolled and lauded with wisdom and they were wise in utterance and in the spirit of life and the Lord of spirits place the elect one on the throne of glory and he shall judge all the works of the holy above in the heaven and in the balance shall their deeds be weighed and thus the Lord commanded the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who dwell on the earth and said open your eyes and lift up your horns if ye are able to recognize the elect one and the Lord of spirits seated him on the throne of his glory and the spirit of righteousness was poured out upon him and the word of his mouth slays all the sinners and all the unrighteous are destroyed from before his face and there shall stand up in that day all the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who hold the earth and they shall see and recognize how he sits on the throne of his glory and righteousness is judged before him and no lying word is spoken before him then shall pain come upon them as on a woman in travail when her child enters the mouth of the womb and she has pain in bringing forth and one 
portion of them shall look on the other and they shall be terrified and they shall be downcast of countenance and pain shall seize them when they see that son of man sitting on the throne of his glory and the kings and the mighty and all who possess the earth shall bless and glorify and extol him who rules over all who was hidden for from the beginning the son of man was hidden and the most high preserved him in the presence of his might and revealed him to the elect and the congregation of the elect and holy shall be sown and all the elect shall stand before him on that day and all the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who rule the earth shall fall down before him on their faces and worship and set their hope upon that son of man and petition him and supplicate for mercy at his hands nevertheless that lord of spirits will so press them that they shall hastily go forth from his presence and their faces shall be filled with shame and the darkness grow deeper on their faces and he will deliver them to the angels for punishment to execute vengeance on them because they have oppressed his children and his elect and they shall be a spectacle for the righteous and for his elect they shall rejoice over them because the wrath of the Lord of Spirits resteth upon them and his sword is drunk with their blood and the righteous and elect shall be saved on that day and they shall never thenceforward see the face of the sinners and unrighteous and the Lord of Spirits will abide over them and with that son of man shall they eat and lie down and rise up forever and ever and the righteous and elect shall have risen from the earth and cease to be of downcast countenance and they shall have been clothed with garments of glory and these shall be the garments of life from the Lord of spirits and your garments shall not grow old nor your glory pass away before the Lord of spirits in those days shall the mighty and the kings who possess the earth implore to grant them a little respite from his angels of punishment to whom they were delivered that they might fall down and worship before the Lord of spirits and confess their sins before him and they shall bless and glorify the Lord of spirits and say blessed is the Lord of spirits and the Lord of kings and the Lord of the mighty and the Lord of the rich and the Lord of glory and the Lord of wisdom and splendid in every secret thing is thy power from generation to generation and thy glory forever. And ever deep are all thy secrets and innumerable and thy righteousness is beyond reckoning we have now learnt that we should glorify and bless the Lord of kings and him who is king over all kings and they shall say with that we had rest to glorify and give thanks and confess our faith before his glory and now we long for a little rest but find it not we follow hard upon and obtain not and light has vanished from before us and darkness is our dwelling place for ever and ever for we have not believed before him nor glorified the name of the Lord of spirits but our hope was in the scepter of our kingdom and in our own glory and in the day of our suffering and tribulation he saves us not and we find no respite for confession that our Lord is true in all his works and in his judgments and his justice and his judgments have no respect of persons and we pass away from before his face on account of our works and all our sins are reckoned up in righteousness now they shall say unto themselves our souls are full of unrighteous gain but it does not prevent us from descending from the midst thereof into the burden of Sheol and after that their faces shall be filled with darkness and shame before that son of man and they shall be driven from his presence and the sword shall abide before his face in their midst thus spake the Lord of spirits this is the ordinance and judgment with respect to the mighty and the kings and the exalted and those who possess the earth. Before the Lord of spirits and other forms I saw hidden in that place I heard the voice of the angel saying these are the angels who descended to the earth and revealed what was hidden to the children of men and seduced the children of men into committing sin book the book of Noah chapter birth of Noah and after some days my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech and she became pregnant by him and bore a son and his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose and the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool and his eyes beautiful and when he opened his eyes he lighted up the whole house like the sun and the whole house was very bright and thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife opened his mouth and conversed with the Lord of righteousness and his father Lamech was afraid of him and fled and came to his father Methuselah and he said unto him I have begotten a strange son diverse from an unlike man and resembling the sons of the God of heaven and his nature is different and he is not like us and his eyes are as the rays of the sun and his countenance is glorious and it seems to me that he is not sprung from me but from the angels and I fear that in his days a wonder may be wrought on the earth and now my father I am here to petition thee and implore thee that thou mayest go to Enoch our father and learn from him the truth for his dwelling place is amongst the angels and when Methuselah heard the words of his son he came to me to the ends of the earth for he had heard that I was there and he cried aloud and I heard his voice and I came to him and I said unto him behold here am I my son wherefore hast thou come to me and he answered and said because of a great cause of anxiety have I come to thee and because of a disturbing vision have I approached and now my father hear me unto Lamech my son there hath been born a son the like of whom there is none and his nature is not like man's nature and the color of his body is whiter than snow and redder than the bloom of a rose and the hair of his head is whiter than white wool and his eyes are like the rays of the sun and he opened his eyes and thereupon lighted up the whole house and he arose in the hands of the midwife and opened his mouth and blessed the Lord of heaven and his father Lamech became afraid and fled to me and did not believe that he was sprung from him but that he was in the likeness of the angels of heaven and behold I have come to thee that thou mayest make known to me the truth and I Enoch answered and said unto him the Lord will do a new thing on the earth and this I have already seen in a vision and make known to thee that in the generation of my father Jared some of the angels of heaven transgressed the word of the Lord and behold they commit sin and transgress the law and have united themselves with women and commit sin with them and have married some of them and have begot children by them and they shall 
Produce on the earth giants not according to the spirit but according to the flesh and there shall be a great punishment on the earth and the earth shall be cleansed from all impurity yea there shall come a great destruction over the whole earth and there shall be a deluge and a great destruction for one year and the son who has been born unto you shall be left on the earth and his three children shall be saved with him when all mankind that are on the earth shall die he and his sons shall be saved and now make known to thy son Lamech that he who has been born is in truth his son and call his name Noah for he shall be left to you and he and his sons shall be saved from the destruction which shall come upon the earth on account of all the sin and all the unrighteousness which shall be consummated on the earth in his days and after that there shall be still more unrighteousness than that which was first consummated on the earth for I know the mysteries of the holy ones for he the Lord has showed me and informed me and I have read in the heavenly tablets and I saw written on them that generation upon generation shall transgress till a generation of righteousness arises and transgression is destroyed and sin passes away from the earth and all manner of good comes upon it and now my son go and make known to thy son Lamech that the son which has been born is in truth his son and that is no lie and when Methuselah had heard the words of his father Enoch for he had shown to him everything in secret he returned and showed to him and called the name of that son Noah for he will comfort the earth after all the destruction chapter calling Enoch and in those days Noah saw the earth that it had sunk down and its destruction was nigh and he arose from thence and went to the ends of the earth and cried aloud to his grandfather Enoch Noah said three times with an embittered voice hear me hear me hear me and I said unto him tell me what it is that is falling out on the earth that the earth is in such evil plight and shaken lest perchance I shall perish with it and thereupon there was a great commotion on the earth and a voice was heard from heaven and I fell on my face and Enoch my grandfather came and stood by me and said unto me why hast thou cried unto me with a bitter cry and weeping a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth that their ruin is accomplished because they have learned all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the satans and all their powers the most secret ones and all the power of those who practice sorcery and the power of witchcraft and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth and how silver is produced from the dust of the earth and how soft metal originates in the earth for lead and tin are not produced from the earth like the first it is a fountain that produces them and an angel stands therein and that angel is preeminent and after that my grandfather Enoch took hold of me by my hand and raised me up and said unto me go for I have asked the Lord of spirits as touching this commotion on the earth and he said unto me because of their unrighteousness their judgment has been determined upon and shall not be withheld by me forever because of the sorceries which they have searched out and learned the earth and those who dwell upon it shall be destroyed and these they have no place of repentance forever because they have shown them what was hidden and they are the damned but as for thee my son the Lord of spirits knows that thou art pure and guiltless of this reproach concerning the secrets and he has destined thy name to be among the holy and will preserve thee amongst those who dwell on the earth and has destined thy righteous seed both for kingship and for great honors and from thy seed shall proceed a fountain of the righteous and holy without number forever and after that he showed me thee. Angels of punishment who are prepared to come and let loose all the powers of the waters which are beneath in the earth in order to bring judgment and destruction on all who dwell on the earth and the Lord of spirits gave commandment to the angels who were going forth that they should not cause the waters to rise but should hold them in check for those angels were over the powers of the waters and I went away from the presence of Enoch chapter judgment of angels and in those days the word of God came unto me and he said unto me Noah thy lot has come up before me a lot without blame a lot of love and uprightness and now the angels are working and when they have completed their task I will place my hand upon it and preserve it and there shall come forth from it the seed of life and a change shall set in so that the earth will not remain without inhabitant and I will make fast thy seed before me forever and ever and I will spread abroad those who dwell with thee it shall not be unfruitful on the face of the earth but it shall be blessed and multiply on the earth in the name of the Lord and he will imprison those angels who have shown unrighteousness in that burning valley which my grandfather Enoch had formerly shown to me in the west among the mountains of gold and silver and iron and soft metal and tin and I saw that valley in which there was a great convulsion and a convulsion of the waters and when all this took place from that fiery molten metal and from the convulsion thereof in that place there was produced a smell of sulfur and it was connected with those waters and that valley of the angels who had led astray burned beneath that land and through its valleys proceed streams of fire where these angels are punished who had led astray those who dwell upon the earth but those waters shall in those days serve for the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who dwell on the earth for the healing of the body but for the punishment of the spirit now their spirit is full of lust that they may be punished in their body for they have denied the lord of spirits and see their punishment daily and yet believe not in his name and in proportion as the burning of their bodies become severe a corresponding change shall take place in their spirit forever and ever for before the lord of spirits none shall utter an idle word for the judgment shall come upon them because they believe in the lust of their body and deny the spirit of the Lord and those same waters will undergo a change in those days for when those angels are punished in these waters these water springs shall change their temperature and when the angels ascend this water of the springs shall change and become cold and I heard Michael answering and saying this judgment wherewith the angels are judged is a testimony for the kings and the mighty who possess the earth because these waters of judgment minister to the healing of the body of the kings and the 
lust of their body therefore they will not see and will not believe that those waters will change and become a fire which burns forever chapter secrets of the parables and after that my grandfather Enoch gave me the teaching of all the secrets in the book in the parables which had been given to him and he put them together for me in the words of the book of the parables and on that day Michael answered Raphael and said the power of the spirit transports and makes me to tremble because of the severity of the judgment of the secrets the judgment of the angels who can endure the severe judgment which has been executed and before which they melt away and Michael answered again and said to Raphael who is he whose heart is not softened concerning it and whose reins are not troubled by this word of judgment that has gone forth upon them because of those who have thus led them out and it came to pass when he stood before the Lord of Spirits Michael said thus to Raphael I will not take their part under the eye of the Lord for the Lord of Spirits has been angry with them because they do as if they were the Lord therefore all that is hidden shall come upon them forever and ever for neither angel nor man shall have his portion but alone they have received their judgment forever and ever and after this judgment they shall terrify and make them to tremble because they have shown this to those who dwell on the earth and behold the names of those angels the first of them is Sam Jazza the second Artakafa and the third Armin the fourth Kakabal the fifth Turil the sixth Rumjal the seventh Danjal the eighth Nikhail the ninth Barakal the tenth Azazel the eleventh Armoros the twelfth Batarjal the thirteenth Busasigil the fourteenth Hananel the fifteenth Turel and the sixteenth Samapisil the seventeenth Jetral the eighteenth Tumail the nineteenth Turel the twentieth Rumail the twenty-first Azazel and these are the chiefs of their angels and their names and their chief ones over hundreds and over fifties and over tens the name of the first Jikon that is the one who led astray the sons of God and brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of men and the second was named Aspiel he imparted to the holy sons of God evil counsel and led them astray so that they defiled their bodies with the daughters of men and the third was named Gadriel he it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death and he led astray Eve and showed the shield and the coat of mail and the sword for battle and all the weapons of death to the children of men and from his hand they have proceeded against those who dwell on the earth from that day and forevermore and the fourth was named Pinmu he taught the children of men the bitter and the sweet and he taught them all the secrets of their wisdom and he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper and thereby many sinned from eternity to eternity and until this day for men were not created for such a purpose to give confirmation to their good faith with pen and ink for men were created exactly like the angels to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous and death which destroys everything could not have taken hold of them but through this their knowledge they are perishing and through this power it is consuming men and the fifth was named Castigia this is he who showed the children of men all the wicked smithings of spirits and demons and the smitings of the embryo in the womb that it may pass away and the bites of the serpent and the smitings which befall through the noontide heat the son of the serpent named to beat and this is the task of Caspiel the chief of the oath which he showed to the holy ones when he dwelt high above in glory and its name is because this angel requested Michael to show him the hidden name that he might enunciate it in the oath so that those might quake before that name and oath who revealed all that was in secret to the children of men and this is the power of this oath for it is powerful and strong and he placed this oath Akai in the hand of Michael these are the secrets of this oath and they are strong through his oath the heaven was suspended before the world was created and forever and through it the earth was founded upon the water and from the secret recesses of the mountains come beautiful waters from the creation of the world and unto eternity and through that oath the sea was created and as its foundation he set for it the sand against the time of anger and it dare not pass beyond it from the creation of the world unto eternity and through that oath are the depths made fast and abide and stir not from their place from eternity to eternity and through that oath the sun and moon complete their course and deviate not from their ordinance from eternity to eternity and through that oath the stars complete their course and he calls them by their names and they answer him from eternity to eternity and this oath is mighty over them and through it their paths are preserved and their course is not destroyed and there was great joy amongst them and they blessed and glorified and extolled because the name of that son of man had been revealed unto them and he sat on the throne of his glory and the sum of judgment was given unto the son of man and he caused the sinners to pass away and be destroyed from off the face of the earth and those who have led the world astray with chains shall they be bound and in their assemblage place of destruction shall they be imprisoned and all their works vanish from the face of the earth and from henceforth there shall be nothing corruptible for that son of man has appeared and has seated himself on the throne of his glory all evil shall pass away before his face and the word of that son of man s-h-a-l-l-g-o-f-o-r-t-h-a-n-d-b-e-s-t-r-o-n-g-b-e-f-o-r-e-t-h-e-l-o-r-d-o-f-s-p-i-r-i-t-s book the kingdom of heaven chapter Enoch is taken and it came to pass after this that his name during his lifetime was raised aloft to that son of man and to the Lord of spirits from amongst those who dwell on the earth and he was raised aloft on the chariots of the spirit and his name vanished among them and from that day I was no longer numbered amongst them and he set me between the two winds between the north and the west where the angels took the cords to measure for me the place for the elect and righteous and their eye 
saw the first fathers and the righteous who from the beginning dwell in that place and it came to pass after this that my spirit was translated and it ascended into the heavens I saw the holy sons of God they were stepping on flames of fire their garments were white and their faces shone like snow and I saw two streams of fire and the light of that fire shone like hyacinth and I fell on my face before the Lord of spirits and the angel Michael seized me by my right hand and lifted me up and led me forth into all the secrets and he showed me all the secrets of righteousness and he showed me all the secrets of the ends of the heaven and all the chambers of all the stars and all the luminaries whence they proceed before the face of the holy ones and he translated my spirit into the heaven of heavens and I saw there as it were a structure built of crystals and between those crystals tongues of living fire and my spirit saw the girdle which girt that house of fire and on its four sides were streams full of living fire and they girt that house and round about were seraphine cherubic and afanan and these are they who sleep not and guard the throne of his glory and i saw angels who could not be counted a thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand encircling that house and michael and raphael and gabriel and phanuel and the holy angels who are above the heavens go in and out of that house and they came forth from that house and michael and gabriel raphael and Phanuel and many holy angels without number and with them the head of days his head white and pure as wool and his raiment indescribable and I fell on my face and my whole body became relaxed and my spirit was transfigured and I cried with a loud voice with the spirit of power and blessed and glorified and extolled and these blessings which went forth out of my mouth were well pleasing before that head of days and that head of days came with Michael and Gabriel Raphael and Phanuel. Thousands and ten thousands of angels without number and he came to me and greeted me with his voice and said unto me this is the son of man who is born unto righteousness and righteousness abides over him and the righteousness of the head of days forsakes him not and he said unto me he proclaims unto thee peace in the name of the world to come for from hence has proceeded peace since the creation of the world and so shall it be unto thee forever and forever and ever and all shall walk. In his ways since righteousness never forsake him with him will be their dwelling places and with him their heritage and they shall not be separated from him forever and ever and ever and so there shall be length of days with that son of man and the righteous shall have peace and an upright way in the name of the Lord of spirits forever and ever chapter the luminaries the book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven the relations of each according to their classes their dominion and their seasons according to their names and places of origin and according to their months which Uriel the holy angel who was with me who is their guide showed me and he showed me all their laws exactly as they are and how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity till the new creation is accomplished which dureth till eternity and this is the first law of the luminaries the luminary the sun has its rising in the eastern portals of the heaven and its setting in the Western portals of the heaven and I saw six portals in which the sun rises and six portals in which the sun sets and the moon rises and sets in these portals and the leaders of the stars and those whom they lead six in the east and six in the west and all following each other in accurately corresponding order also many windows to the right and left of these portals and first there goes forth the great luminary named the sun and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire the chariot on which he ascends the wind drives and the sun goes down from the heaven and returns through the north in order to reach the east and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate portal and shines in the face of the heaven in this way he rises in the first month in the great portal which is the fourth and in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month are twelve window openings from which proceed a flame when they are opened in their season when the sun rises in the heaven he comes forth through that fourth portal thirty mornings in succession and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven and during this period the day becomes daily longer and the night nightly shorter to the thirtieth morning on that day the day is longer than the night by a ninth part and the day amounts exactly to ten parts and the night to eight parts and the sun rises from that fourth portal and sets in the fourth and returns to the fifth portal of the east thirty mornings and rises from it and sets in the fifth portal and then the day becomes longer by two parts and amounts to eleven parts and the night becomes shorter and amounts to seven parts and it returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises and sets in the sixth portal one and thirty mornings on account of its sign on that day the day becomes longer than the night and the day becomes double the night and the day becomes twelve parts and the night is shortened and becomes six parts and the sun mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer and the sun returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal and rises from it and sets thirty mornings and when thirty mornings are accomplished the day decreases by exactly one part and becomes eleven parts and the night seven and the sun goes forth from that sixth portal in the west and goes to the east and rises in the fifth portal for thirty mornings and sets in the west again in the fifth western portal on that day the day decreases by two parts and amounts to ten parts and the night to eight parts and the sun goes forth from that fifth portal and sets in the fifth portal of the west and rises in the fourth portal for one and thirty mornings on account of its sign and sets in the west on that day the day is equalized with the night and the night amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts and the sun rises from that portal 
and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises thirty mornings in the third portal and sets in the west in the third portal and on that day the night becomes longer than the day and night becomes longer than night and day shorter than day till the thirtieth morning and the night amounts exactly to ten parts and the day to eight parts and the sun rises from that third portal and sets in the third portal in the west and returns to the east and for thirty mornings rises in the second portal in the east and in like manner sets in the second portal in the west of the heaven and on that day the night amounts to eleven parts and the day to seven parts and the sun rises on that day from that second portal and sets in the west in the second portal and returns to the east into the first portal for one and thirty mornings and sets in the first portal in the west of the heaven and on that day the night becomes longer and amounts to the double of the day and the night amounts exactly to twelve parts and the day to six and the sun has traversed the divisions of his orbit and turns again on those divisions of his orbit and enters that portal thirty mornings and sets also in the west opposite to it and on that night has the night decreased in length by a ninth part and the night has become eleven parts and the day seven parts and the sun has returned and entered into the second portal in the east and returns on those his divisions of his orbit for thirty mornings rising and setting and on that day the night decreases in length and the night amounts to ten parts and the day to eight and on that day the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third portal for one and thirty mornings and sets in the west of the heaven on that day the night decreases and amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts and the night is equal to the day and the year is exactly as to its days 364 and the length of the day and of the night and the shortness of the day and of the night arise through the course of the sun these distinctions are made so it comes that its course becomes daily longer and its course nightly shorter and this is the law and the course of the sun and his return as often as he returns sixty times and rises forever and ever and that which rises is the great luminary and is so named according to its appearance according as the Lord commanded as he rises so he sets and decreases not and rests not but runs day and night and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon but as regards size they are both equal and after this law I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary which is named the moon and her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind and light is given to her in measure and her rising and setting change every month and her days are like the days of the sun and when her light is uniform it amounts to the seventh part of the light of the sun and thus she rises and her first phase in the east comes forth on the thirtieth morning and on that day she becomes visible and constitutes for you the first phase of the moon on the thirtieth day together with the sun in the portal where the sun rises and the one half of her goes forth by a seventh part and her whole circumference is empty without light with the exception of one seventh part of it the fourteenth part of her light and when she receives one seventh part of the half of her light her light amounts to one seventh part and the half thereof and she sets with the sun and when the sun rises the moon rises with him and receives the half of one part of light and in that night in the beginning of her morning in the commencement of the lunar day the moon sets with the sun and is invisible that night with the fourteen parts and the half of one of them and she rises on that day with exactly a seventh part and comes forth and recedes from the rising of the sun and in her remaining days she becomes bright in the thirteen parts and I saw another course a law for her how according to that law she performs her monthly revolution and all these Uriel the holy angel who is the leader of them all showed to me and their positions and I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me and I wrote down their months as they were and the appearance of their lights till fifteen days were accomplished in single seventh parts she accomplishes all her light in the east and in single seventh parts accomplishes all her darkness in the west and in certain months she alters her settings and in certain months she pursues her own peculiar course in two months the moon sets with the sun in those two middle portals the third and the fourth she goes forth for seven days and turns about and returns again through the portal where the sun rises and accomplishes all her light and she recedes from the sun and in eight days enters the sixth portal from which the sun goes forth and when the sun goes forth from the fourth portal she goes forth seven days until she goes forth from the fifth and turns back again in seven days into the fourth portal and accomplishes all her light and she recedes and enters into the first portal in eight days and she returns again in seven days into the fourth portal from which the sun goes forth thus I saw their position how the moons rose and the sun set in those days and if five years are added together the sun has an overplus of thirty days and all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years when they are full amount to days and the overplus of the sun and of the stars amounts to six days in years days every year come to days and the moon falls behind the sun and stars to the number of days and the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day unto eternity but complete the years with perfect justice in days in years there are days and in years days so that in years there are days for the moon alone the days amount in years to days and in years she falls days behind to the sum there is to be added days and in years there are days so that for the moon the days in years amount to days for in years she falls behind to the amount of days all the days she falls behind in years are and the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations and the stations of the sun which rise from the portals through which it rises and sets days and the leaders of the heads of the thousands who are placed over the whole creation and over all the stars have also to do with the four intercalary days being inseparable from their office according to the reckoning of the year and these render service on the four days which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year and owing to them men go 
wrong therein for those luminaries truly render service on the world stations one in the first portal one in the third portal of the heaven one in the fourth portal and one in the sixth portal and the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate 364 stations for the signs and the times and the years and the days the angel Uriel showed to me whom the Lord of glory hath set forever over all the luminaries of the heaven in the heaven and in the world that they should rule on the face of the heaven and be seen on the earth and be leaders for the day and the night and all the ministering creatures which make their revolution in all the chariots of the heaven in like manner twelve doors Uriel showed me open in the circumference of the sun's chariot in the heaven through which the rays of the sun break forth and from them is warmth diffused over the earth when they are opened at their appointed seasons and for the winds and the spirit of the dew. When they are open standing open in the heavens at the ends as for the twelve portals in the heaven at the ends of the earth out of which go forth the sun moon and stars and all the works of heaven in the east and in the west there are many windows open to the left and right of them and one window at its season produces warmth corresponding to those doors from which the stars come forth according as he has commanded them and wherein they set corresponding to their number and I saw chariots. In the heaven running in the world above those portals in which revolve the stars that never set and one is larger than all the rest and it is that that makes its course through the entire world and at the ends of the earth I saw twelve portals open to all the quarters from which the winds go forth and blow over the earth three of them are open on the face of the heavens and three in the west and three on the right of the heaven and three on the left and the three first are those of the east and three are of the north and three after those on the left of the south and three of the west through four of these come winds of blessing and prosperity and from those eight come hurtful winds when they are sent they bring destruction on all the earth and on the water upon it and on all who dwell thereon and on everything which is in the water and on the land and the first wind from those portals called the east wind comes forth through the first portal which is in the east inclining towards the south from it come forth desolation drought heat and destruction and through the second portal in the middle comes what is fitting and from it there come rain and fruitfulness and prosperity and dew and through the third portal which lies toward the north come cold and drought and after these come forth the south winds through three portals through the first portal of them inclining to the east comes forth a hot wind and through the middle portal next to it there come forth fragrant smells and dew and rain and prosperity and health and through the third portal lying to the west come forth dew and rain locusts and desolation and after these the north winds from the seventh portal in the east come dew and rain locusts and desolation and from the middle portal come in a direct direction health and rain and dew and prosperity and through the third portal in the west come cloud and hoarfrost and snow and rain and dew and locusts and after these four are the west winds through the first portal adjoining the north come forth dew and hoarfrost and cold and snow and frost and from the middle portal come forth dew and rain and prosperity and blessing and through the last portal which adjoins the south come forth drought and desolation and burning and destruction and the twelve portals of the four quarters of the heaven are there with completed and all their laws and all their plagues and all their benefactions have I shown to thee my son Methuselah and the first quarter is called the east because it is the first and the second the south because the most high will descend there yet there in quite a special sense will he who is blessed forever descend and the west quarter is named the diminished because there all the luminaries of the heaven wane and go down and the fourth quarter named the north is divided into three parts the first of them is for the dwelling of men and the second contains seas of water and the abysses and forests and rivers and darkness and clouds and the third part contains the garden of righteousness I saw seven high mountains higher than all the mountains which are on the earth and thence comes forth hoarfrost and days seasons and years pass away I saw seven rivers on the earth larger than all the rivers one of them coming from the west pours its waters into the great sea and these two come from the north to the sea and pour their waters into the Erythrean sea in the east and the remaining four come forth on the side of the north to their own sea two of them to the Erythrean sea and two into the great sea and discharge themselves there and some say into the desert seven great islands I saw in the sea and in the mainland two in the mainland and five in the great sea and the names of the sun are the following the first or hairs and the second Tamash and the moon has four names the first name is Asangia the second Ebla the third Benes and the fourth Eri these are the two great luminaries. Their circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and the size of the circumference of both is alike in the circumference of the sun there are seven portions of light which are added to it more than to the moon and in definite measures it is s transferred till the seventh portion of the sun is exhausted and they set and enter the portals of the west and make their revolution by the north and come forth through the eastern portals on the face of the heaven and when the moon rises. One fourteenth part appears in the heaven the light becomes full in her on the fourteenth day she accomplishes her light and fifteen parts of light are transferred to her till the fifteenth day her light is accomplished according to the sign of the year and she becomes fifteen parts and the moon grows by fourteenth parts and in her waning decreases on the first day to fourteen parts of her light on the second to thirteen parts of light on the third to twelve on the fourth to eleven on the fifth to ten on the sixth to nine on the seventh to eight on the eighth to seven on the ninth to six on the tenth to five on the eleventh to four on the twelfth to three on the thirteenth to two on the fourteenth to the half of a seventh and all her remaining light disappears wholly on the fifteenth and in certain months the month has twenty nine days and once twenty eight and Uriel showed me another law when light is transferred to the moon and on which side it is transferred to her by the 
Sun during all the period during which the moon is growing in her light she is transferring it to herself when opposite to the sun during 14 days her light is accomplished in the heaven and when she is illumined throughout her light is accomplished full in the heaven and on the first day she is called the new moon for on that day the light rises upon her she becomes full moon exactly on the day when the sun sets in the west and from the east she rises at night and the moon shines the whole night through till the sun rises over against her and the moon is seen over against the sun on the side whence the light of the moon comes forth there again she wanes till all the light vanishes and all the days of the month are at an end and her circumference is empty void of light and three months she makes of thirty days and at her time she makes three months of twenty-nine days each in which she accomplishes her waning in the first period of time and in the first portal for one hundred and seventy-seven days and in the time of her going out she appears for three months thirty days each and for three months she appears twenty-nine each at night she appears like a man for twenty days each time and by day she appears like the heaven and there is nothing else in her save her light and now my son I have shown thee everything and the law of all the stars of the heaven is completed and he showed me all the laws of these for every day and for every season of bearing rule and for every year and for its going forth and for the order prescribed to it every month and every week and the waning of the moon which takes place in the sixth portal for in the sixth portal her light is accomplished and after that there is the beginning of the waning which takes place in the first portal in its season till 177 days are accomplished reckoned according to weeks 25 and 2 days she falls behind the sun and the order of the stars exactly. Five days in the course of one period and when this place which thou seest has been traversed such is the picture and sketch of every luminary which Uriel the archangel who is their leader showed unto me chapter heavenly tablets and in those days the angel Uriel answered and said to me behold I have shown thee everything Enoch and I have revealed everything to thee that thou shouldst see the sun and this moon and the leaders of the stars of the heaven and all those who turn them there. Tasks and times and departures and in the days of the sinners the years shall be shortened and their seed shall be tardy on their lands and fields and all things on the earth shall alter and shall not appear in their time the rain shall be kept back and the heaven shall withhold it and in those times the fruits of the earth shall be backward and shall not grow in their time and the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time and the moon shall alter her order and not appear at her time and in those days the sun shall be seen and he shall journey in the evening on the extremity of the great chariot in the west and shall shine more brightly than accords with the order of light and many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order and these shall alter their orbits and tasks and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them and the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners and the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them and they shall be altered from all their ways yet they shall err and take them to be gods and evil shall be multiplied upon them and punishment shall come upon them so as to destroy all and he said unto me observe Enoch these heavenly tablets and read what is written thereon and mark every individual fact and I observed the heavenly tablets and read everything which was written and understood everything and read the book of all the deeds of mankind and of all the children of flesh that shall be upon the earth to the remotest generations and forthwith I bless the great Lord the King of glory forever in that he has made all the works of the world and I extolled the Lord because of his patience and blessed him because of the children of men and after that I said blessed is the man who dies in righteousness and goodness concerning whom there is no book of unrighteousness written and against whom no day of judgment shall be found and those seven holy ones brought me and placed me on the earth before the door of my house and said to me declare everything to thy son Methuselah and show to all thy children that no flesh is righteous in the sight of the Lord for he is their creator one year we will leave thee with thy son till thou givest thy commands that thou mayest teach thy children and record for them and testify to all thy children and in the second year they shall take thee from their midst let thy heart be strong for the good shall announce righteousness to the good the righteous with the righteous shall rejoice and shall offer congratulation to one another but the sinners shall die with the sinners and the apostate go down with the apostate and those who practice righteousness shall die on account of the deeds of men and be taken away on account of the doings of the godless and in those days they cease to speak to me and I came to my people blessing the Lord of the world chapter one year to record and now my son Methuselah all these things I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee and I have revealed to thee everything and given thee books concerning all these so preserve my son Methuselah the books from thy father's hand and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world I have given wisdom to thee and to thy children and thy children that shall be to thee that they may give it to their children for generations this wisdom that passeth their thought and those who understand it shall not sleep but shall listen with the ear that they may learn this wisdom and it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food blessed are all the righteous blessed are all those who walk in the way of righteousness and sin not as the sinners in the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heaven entering into and departing from the portals for thirty days with the heads of thousands of the order of the stars together with the four which are intercalated which divide the four portions of the year which lead them and enter with them four days owing to them men shall be at fault and not reckon them in the whole reckoning of the year ye men shall be at fault and not recognize them accurately for they belong to the reckoning of the year and are truly recorded forever one in the first portal and one in the third and one in the fourth and one in the sixth and the year is completed in 364 days and the account thereof is accurate and the recorded reckoning.
thereof exact for the luminaries and months and festivals and years and days has Uriel shown and revealed to me to whom the Lord of the whole creation of the world hath subjected the host of heaven and he has power over night and day in the heaven to cause the light to give light to men sun moon and stars and all the powers of the heaven which revolve in their circular chariots and these are the orders of the stars which set in their places and in their seasons and festivals and months and these are the names of those who lead them who watch that they enter at their times in their orders in their seasons in their months in their periods of dominion and in their positions their four leaders who divide the four parts of the year enter first and after them the twelve leaders of the orders who divide the months and for the three hundred and sixty there are heads over thousands who divide the days and for the four intercalary days there are the leaders which sunder the four parts of the year and these heads over thousands are intercalated between leader and leader each behind a station but their leaders make the division and these are the names of the leaders who divide the four parts of the year which are ordained Milkiel Helamelech and Melagil and Neril and the names of those who lead them Adnaral and Ajajosael and Elomiel, these three follow the leaders of the orders and there is one that follows the three leaders of the orders which follow those leaders of stations. That divide the four parts of the year in the beginning of the year Melkjal rises first and rules who is named Tamani and son and all the days of his dominion whilst he bears rule are ninety one days and these are the signs of the days which are to be seen on earth in the days of his dominion sweat and heat and calms and all the trees bear fruit and leaves are produced on all the trees and the harvest of wheat and the rose flowers and all the flowers which come forth in the field but the trees of the winter season become withered and these are the names of the leaders which are under them Berkale Zalepsal and another who is added ahead of a thousand called Hilajasf and the days of the dominion of this are at an end the next leader after him is Helamelech whom one names the shining sun and all the days of his light are ninety one days and these are the signs of days on the earth glowing heat and dryness and the trees ripen their fruits and produce all their fruits ripe and ready and the sheep pair and become pregnant and all the fruits of the earth are gathered in and everything that is in the fields and the wine press these things take place in the days of his dominion these are the names and the orders and the leaders of those heads of thousands Gittel Jalkiel and Heel and the name of the head of a thousand which is added to them is Fael and the days of his dominion are at an end chapter visions and now my son Methuselah I will show thee all my visions which I have seen recounting them before the two visions I saw before I took a wife and the one was quite unlike the other the first when I was learning to write the second before I took thy mother I saw a terrible vision and regarding them I prayed to the Lord I had laid me down in the house of my grandfather Mahalalil I saw in a vision how the heaven collapsed and was borne off and fell to the earth and when it fell to the earth I saw how the earth was swallowed up in a great abyss and mountains were suspended on mountains and hills sank down on hills and high trees were rent from their stems and hurled down and sunk in the abyss and thereupon a word fell into my mouth and I lifted up to cry aloud and said the earth is destroyed and my grandfather Mahalalil wake me as I lay near him and said unto me why dost thou cry so my son and why dost thou make such lamentation and I recounted to him the whole vision which I had seen and he said unto me a terrible thing hast thou seen my Son and of grave moment is thy dream vision as to the secrets if all the sin of the earth it must sink into the abyss and be destroyed with a great destruction and now my son arise and make petition to the Lord of glory since thou art a believer that a remnant may remain on the earth and that he may not destroy the whole earth my son from heaven all this will come upon the earth and upon the earth there will be great destruction after that I arose and prayed and implored and besought and wrote down my prayer for the generations of the world and I will show everything to thee my son Methuselah and when I had gone forth below and seen the heaven and the sun rising in the east and the moon setting in the west and a few stars and the whole earth and everything as he had known it in the beginning then I blessed the Lord of judgment and extolled him because he had made the sun to go forth from the windows of the east and he ascended and rose on the face of the heaven and set out and kept traversing the path shown unto him and I lifted up my hands in righteousness and blessed the Holy and Great One and spake with the breath of my mouth and with the tongue of flesh which God has made for the children of the flesh of men that they should speak therewith and he gave them breath and a tongue and a mouth that they should speak therewith blessed be thou O Lord King great and mighty in thy greatness Lord of the whole creation of the heaven King of kings and God of the whole world and thy power and kingship and greatness abide forever and ever and throughout all generations thy dominion and all the heavens are thy throne forever and the whole earth thy footstool forever and ever for thou hast made and thou rulest all things and nothing is too hard for thee wisdom departs not from the place of thy throne nor turns away from thy presence and thou knowest and seest and hearest everything and there is nothing hidden from thee for thou seest everything and now the angels of thy heavens are guilty of trespass and upon the flesh of men abide thy wrath until the great day of judgment and now O God and Lord and great King I implore and beseech thee to fulfill my prayer to leave me a posterity on earth and not destroy all the flesh of man and make the earth without inhabitant so that there should be an eternal destruction and now my Lord destroy from the earth the flesh which has aroused thy wrath but the flesh of righteousness and uprightness. Establish as a plant of the eternal seed and hide not thy face from the prayer of thy servant O Lord and after this I saw another dream and I will show the whole dream to thee my son and Enoch lifted up and spake to his son Methuselah to thee my son will I speak here my words incline thine ear to the dream vision of thy father before I took thy mother Edna I saw in a vision on my bed and behold a bull came forth from the earth and that bull was white and after it came forth a heifer and 
Along with this came forth two bulls one of them black and the other red and that black bull gored the red one and pursued him over the earth and thereupon I could no longer see that red bull but that black bull grew and that heifer went with him and I saw that many oxen proceeded from him which resembled and followed him and that cow that first one went from the presence of that first bull in order to seek that red one but found him not and lamented with a great lamentation over him and sought him and I looked till that first bull came to her and quieted her and from that time onward she cried no more and after that she bore another white bull and after him she bore many bulls and black cows and I saw in my sleep that white bull likewise grow and become a great white bull and from him proceeded many white bulls and they resembled him and they began to beget many white bulls which resembled them one following the other many and again I saw with mine eyes as I slept and I saw the heaven above and behold a star fell from heaven and it arose and eat and pastured amongst those oxen and after that I saw the large and the black oxen and behold they all changed their stalls and pastures and their cattle and began to live with each other and again I saw in the vision and looked towards the heaven and behold I saw many stars descend and cast themselves down from heaven to that first star and they became bulls amongst those cattle and pastured with them amongst them. And I looked at them and saw and behold they all let out their privy members like horses and began to cover the cows of the oxen and they all became pregnant and bare elephants camels and asses and all the oxen feared them and were affrighted at them and began to bite with their teeth and to devour and to gore with their horns and they began moreover to devour those oxen and behold all the children of the earth began to tremble and quake before them and to flee from them and again I saw how. They began to gore each other and to devour each other and the earth began to cry aloud and I raised mine eyes again to heaven and I saw in the vision and behold there came forth from heaven beings who were like white men and four went forth from that place and three with them and those three that had last come forth grasped me by my hand and took me up away from the generations of the earth and raised me up to a lofty place and showed me a tower raised high above the earth and all the hills were lower and one said unto me remain here till thou seest everything that befalls those elephants camels and asses and the stars and the oxen and all of them and I saw one of those four who had come forth first and he seized that first star which had fallen from the heaven and bounded hand and foot and cast it into an abyss now that abyss was narrow and deep and horrible and dark and one of them drew a sword and gave it to those elephants and camels and asses then they began to smite each other and the whole earth quaked because of them and as I was beholding in the vision lo one of those four who had come forth stoned them from heaven and gathered and took all the great stars whose privy members were like those of horses and bound them all hand and foot and cast them in an abyss of the earth and one of those four went to that white bull and instructed him in a secret without his being terrified he was born a bull and became a man and built for himself a great vessel and dwelt thereon and three bulls dwelt with him in that vessel and they were covered in and again I raised mine eyes towards heaven and saw a lofty roof with seven water torrents thereon and those torrents flowed with much water into an enclosure and I saw again and behold fountains were opened on the surface of that great enclosure and that water began to swell and rise upon the surface and I saw that enclosure till all its surface was covered with water and the water the darkness and mist increased upon it and as I looked at the height of that water that water had risen above the height of that enclosure and was streaming over that enclosure and it stood upon the earth and all the cattle of that enclosure were gathered together until I saw how they sank and were swallowed up and perished in that water but that vessel floated on the water while all the oxen and elephants and camels and asses sank to the bottom with all the animals so that I could no longer see them and they were not able to escape perished and sank into the depths and again I saw in the vision till those water torrents were removed from that high roof and the chasms of the earth were leveled up and other abysses were opened then the water began to run down into these till the earth became visible but that vessel settled on the earth and the darkness retired and light appeared but that white bull which had become a man came out of that vessel and the three bulls with him and one of those three was white like that bull and one of them was red as blood and one black and that white bull departed from them and they began to bring forth beasts of the field and birds so that there arose different general lions tigers wolves dogs hyenas wild boars foxes squirrels swine falcons vultures kites eagles and ravens and among them was born a white bull and they began to bite one another but that white bull which was born amongst them begot a wild ass and a white bull with it and the wild asses multiplied but that bull which was born from him begot a black wild boar and a white sheep and the former begot many boars but that sheep begot twelve sheep and when those twelve sheep had grown they gave up one of them to the asses and those asses again gave up that sheep to the wolves and that sheep grew up among the wolves and the Lord brought the eleven sheep to live with it and to pasture with it among the wolves and they multiplied and became many flocks of sheep and the wolves began to fear them and they oppressed them until they destroyed cry aloud on account of their little ones and to complain unto their lord and a sheep which had been saved from the wolves fled and escaped to the wild asses and I saw the sheep how they lamented and cried and besought their lord with all their might till that lord of the sheep descended at the voice of the sheep from a lofty abode and came to them and pastured them and he called that sheep which had escaped the wolves and spake with it concerning the wolves that it should admonish them not to touch the sheep and the sheep went to the wolves according to the word of the Lord and another sheep met it and went with it and the two went and entered together into the assembly of those wolves and spake with them and admonished them not to touch the sheep from henceforth and thereupon I saw the wolves and how they oppressed the sheep exceedingly with all their power and the sheep cried aloud and the Lord came to the sheep and 
They began to smite those wolves and the wolves began to make lamentation but the sheep became quiet and forthwith ceased to cry out and I saw the sheep till they departed from amongst the wolves but the eyes of the wolves were blinded and those wolves departed in pursuit of the sheep with all their power and the lord of the sheep went with them as their leader and all his sheep followed him and his face was dazzling and glorious and terrible to behold but the wolves began to pursue those sheep till they reached a sea of water and that sea was divided and the water stood on this side and on that before their face and their lord led them and placed himself between them and the wolves and as those wolves did not yet see the sheep they proceeded into the midst of that sea and the wolves followed the sheep and those wolves ran after them into that sea and when they saw the lord of the sheep they turned to flee before his face but that sea gathered itself together and became as it had been created and the water swelled and rose till it covered those wolves and I saw till all the wolves who pursued those sheep perished and were drowned but the sheep escaped from that water and went forth into a wilderness where there was no water and no grass and they began to open their eyes and to see and I saw the Lord of the sheep pasturing them and giving them water and grass and that sheep going and leading them and that sheep ascended to the summit of that lofty rock and the Lord of the sheep sent it to them and after that I saw the Lord of the sheep who stood before them and his appearance was great and terrible and majestic and all those sheep saw him and were afraid before his face and they all feared and trembled because of him and they cried to that sheep with them which was amongst them we are not able to stand before our Lord or to behold him and that sheep which led them again ascended to the summit of that rock but the sheep began to be blinded and to wonder from the way which he had showed them but that sheep what not thereof and the lord of the sheep was wrathful exceedingly against them and that sheep discovered it and went down from the summit of the rock and came to the sheep and found the greatest part of them blinded and fallen away and when they saw it they feared and trembled at its presence and desired to return to their folds and that sheep took other sheep with it and came to those sheep which had fallen away and began to slay them and the sheep feared its presence and thus that sheep brought back those sheep that had fallen away and they returned to their folds and I saw in this vision till that sheep became a man and built a house for the lord of the sheep and placed all the sheep in that house and I saw till the sheep which had met that sheep which led them fell asleep and I saw till all the great sheep perished and little ones arose in their place and they came to a pasture and approached a stream of water. Then that sheep their leader which had become a man withdrew from them and fell asleep and all the sheep sought it and cried over it with a great crying and I saw till they left off crying for that sheep and crossed that stream of water and there arose the two sheep as leaders in the place of those which had led them and fallen asleep and I saw till the sheep came to a goodly place and a pleasant and glorious land and I saw till those sheep were satisfied and that house stood amongst them in the pleasant land and sometimes their eyes were opened and sometimes blinded till another sheep arose and led them and brought them all back and their eyes were opened and the dogs and the foxes and the wild boars began to devour those sheep till the lord of the sheep raised up another sheep a ram from their midst which led them and that ram began to butt on either side those dogs foxes and wild boars till he had destroyed them all and that sheep whose eyes were opened saw that ram which was amongst the sheep till it forsook its glory and began to butt those sheep and trampled upon them and behaved itself unseemly and the lord of the sheep sent the lamb to another lamb and raised it to being a ram and leader of the sheep instead of that ram which had forsaken its glory and it went to it and spake to it alone and raised it to being a ram and made it the prince and leader of the sheep but during all these things those dogs oppressed the sheep and the first ram pursued that second ram and that second ram arose and fled before it and I saw till those dogs pulled down the first ram and that second ram arose and led the little sheep and those sheep grew and multiplied but all the dogs and foxes and wild boars feared and fled before it and that ram butted and killed the wild beasts and those wild beasts had no longer any power among the sheep and robbed them no more of it and that ram begot many sheep and fell asleep and a little sheep became ram in its stead and became prince and leader of those sheep and that house became great and broad and it was built for those sheep a tower lofty and great was built on the house for the lord of the sheep and that house was low but the tower was elevated and lofty and the lord of the sheep stood on that tower and they offered a full table before him and again I saw those sheep that they again erred and went many ways and forsook that their house and the lord of the sheep called some from amongst the sheep and sent them to the sheep but the sheep began to slay them and one of them was saved and was not slain and it sped away and cried aloud over the sheep and they sought to slay it but the lord of the sheep saved it from the sheep and brought it up to me and caused it to dwell there and many other sheep he sent to those sheep to testify unto them and lament over them and after that I saw that when they forsook the house of the lord and his tower they fell away entirely and their eyes were blinded and I saw the lord of the sheep how he wrought much slaughter amongst them in their herds until those sheep invited that slaughter and betrayed his place and he gave them over into the hands of the lions and tigers and wolves and hyenas and into the hand of the foxes and to all the wild beasts and those wild beasts began to tear in pieces those sheep and I saw that he forsook that their house and their tower and gave them all into the hand of the lions to tear and devour them into the hand of all the wild beasts and I began to cry aloud with all my power and to appeal to the lord of the sheep and to represent to him in regard to the sheep that they were devoured by all the wild beasts but he remained unmoved though he saw it and rejoiced that they were devoured and swallowed and robbed and left them to be devoured in the hand of all the beasts and he called seventy shepherds and cast those sheep to them that they might pasture them and he spake to the shepherds and their companions let 
Each individual of you pasture the sheep henceforward and everything that I shall command you that do ye and I will deliver them over unto you duly numbered and tell you which of them are to be destroyed and them destroy ye and he gave over unto them those sheep and he called another and spake unto him observe and mark everything that the shepherds will do to those sheep for they will destroy more of them than I have commanded them and every excess and the destruction which will be wrought. Through the shepherds record how many they destroy according to my command and how many according to their own caprice record against every individual shepherd all the destruction he effects and read out before me by number how many they destroy and how many they deliver over for destruction that I may have this as a testimony against them and know every deed of the shepherds that I may comprehend and see what they do whether or not they abide by my command which I have commanded them but they shall not know it and thou shalt not declare it to them nor admonish them but only record against each individual all the destruction which the shepherds effect each in his time and lay it all before me and I saw till those shepherds pastured in their season and they began to slay and to destroy more than they were bidden and they delivered those sheep into the hand of the lions and the lions and tigers eat and devoured the greater part of those sheep and the wild boars eat along with them. And they burnt that tower and demolished that house and I became exceedingly sorrowful over that tower because that house of the sheep was demolished and afterwards I was unable to see if those sheep entered that house and the shepherds and their associates delivered over those sheep to all the wild beasts to devour them and each one of them received in his time a definite number it was written by the other in a book how many each one of them destroyed of them and each one slew and destroyed. Many more than was prescribed and I began to weep and lament on account of those sheep and thus in the vision I saw that one who wrote how he wrote down every one that was destroyed by those shepherds day by day and carried up and laid down and showed actually the whole book to the Lord of the sheep everything that they had done and all that each one of them had made away with and all that they had given over to destruction and the book was read before the Lord of the sheep and he took the book from his hand and read it and sealed it and laid it down and forthwith I saw how the shepherds pastured for twelve hours and behold three of those sheep turned back and came and entered and began to build up all that had fallen down of that house but the wild boars tried to hinder them but they were not able and they began again to build as before and they reared up that tower and it was named the high tower and they began again to place a table before the tower but all the bread on it was polluted and not pure and as touching all this the eyes of those sheep were blinded so that they saw not and their shepherds likewise and they delivered them in large numbers to their shepherds for destruction and they trampled the sheep with their feet and devoured them and the lord of the sheep remained unmoved till all the sheep were dispersed over the field and mingled with them and they did not save them out of the hand of the beasts and this one who wrote the book carried it up and showed it and read it before the lord of the sheep and implored him on their account and besought him on their account as he showed him all the doings of the shepherds and gave testimony before him against all the shepherds and he took the actual book and laid it down beside him and departed and i saw till that in this manner thirty-five shepherds undertook the pasturing and they severally completed their periods as did the first and others received them into their hands to pasture them for their period each shepherd in his own period and after that I saw in my vision all the birds of heaven coming the eagles the vultures the kites the ravens but the eagles led all the birds and they began to devour those sheep and to pick out their eyes and to devour their flesh and the sheep cried out because their flesh was being devoured by the birds and as for me I looked and lamented in my sleep over that shepherd who pastured the sheep and I saw until those sheep were devoured by the dogs and eagles and kites and they left neither flesh nor skin nor sinew remaining on them till only their bones stood there and their bones too fell to the earth and the sheep became few and I saw until that twenty-three had undertaken the pasturing and completed in their several periods fifty-eight times but behold lambs were born by those white sheep and they began to open their eyes and to see and to cry to the sheep yea they cried to them but they did not hearken to what they said to them but were exceedingly deaf and their eyes were very exceedingly blinded and I saw in the vision how the ravens flew upon those lambs and took one of those lambs and dashed the sheep in pieces and devoured them and I saw till horns grew upon those lambs and the ravens cast down their horns and I saw till there sprouted a great horn of one of those sheep and their eyes were opened and it looked at them and their eyes opened and it cried to the sheep and the ram saw it and all ran to it. And notwithstanding all this those eagles and vultures and ravens and kites still kept tearing the sheep and swooping down upon them and devouring them still the sheep remained silent but the rams lamented and cried out and those ravens fought and battled with it and sought to lay low its horn but they had no power over it all the eagles and vultures and ravens and kites were gathered together and there came with them all the sheep of the field yea they all came together and helped each other. To break that horn of the ram and I saw till a great sword was given to the sheep and the sheep proceeded against all the beasts of the field to slay them and all the beasts and the birds of the heaven fled before their face and I saw that man who wrote the book according to the command of the Lord till he opened that book concerning the destruction which those twelve last shepherds had wrought and showed that they had destroyed much more than their predecessors before the Lord of the sheep. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep came unto them and took in his hand the staff of his wrath and smote the earth and the earth clave asunder and all the beasts and all the birds of the heaven fell from among those sheep and were swallowed up in the earth and it covered them and I saw till a throne was erected in the pleasant land and the Lord of the sheep sat himself thereon and the other took the sealed books and opened those books before the Lord of the sheep and the Lord called those 
men the seven first white ones and commanded that they should bring before him beginning with the first star which led the way all the stars whose privy members were like those of horses and they brought them all before him and he said to that man who wrote before him being one of those seven white ones and said unto him take those seventy shepherds to whom I delivered the sheep and who taking them on their own authority slow more than I commanded them and behold they were all bound I saw. And they all stood before him and the judgment was held first over the stars and they were judged and found guilty and went to the place of condemnation and they were cast into an abyss full of fire and flaming and full of pillars of fire and those seventy shepherds were judged and found guilty and they were cast into that fiery abyss and I saw at that time how a like abyss was opened in the midst of the earth full of fire and they brought those blinded sheep and they were all judged and found guilty and cast into this fiery abyss and they burned now this abyss was to the right of that house and I saw those sheep burning and their bones burning and I stood up to see till they folded up that old house and carried off all the pillars and all the beams and ornaments of the house were at the same time folded up with it and they carried it off and laid it in a place in the south of the land and I saw till the lord of the sheep brought a new house greater and loftier than that first and set it up in the place of the first which had beer folded up all its pillars were new and its ornaments were new and larger than those of the first the old one which he had taken away and all the sheep were within it and I saw all the sheep which had been left and all the beasts on the earth and all the birds of the heaven falling down and doing homage to those sheep and making petition to and obeying them in everything and thereafter those three who were clothed in white and had seized me by my hand who had taken me up before and the hand of that ram also seizing hold of me they took me up and set me down in the midst of those sheep before the judgment took place and those sheep were all white and their wool was abundant and clean and all that had been destroyed and dispersed and all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the heaven assembled in that house and the lord of the sheep rejoiced with great joy because they were all good and had returned to his house and I saw till they laid down that sword which had been given to the sheep and they brought it back into the house and it was sealed before the presence of the Lord and all the sheep were invited into that house but it held them not and the eyes of them all were opened and they saw the good and there was not one among them that did not see and I saw that that house was large and broad and very full and I saw that a white bull was born with large horns and all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air feared him and made petition to him all the time and I saw till all their generations were transformed and they all became white bulls and the first among them became a lamb and that lamb became a great animal and had great black horns on its head and the lord of the sheep rejoiced over it and over all the oxen and I slept in their midst and I awoke and saw everything this is the vision which I saw while I slept and I awoke and blessed the lord of righteousness and gave him glory then I wept with a great weeping and my tears stayed not till I could no longer endure it when I saw they flowed on account of what I had seen for everything shall come and be fulfilled and all the deeds of men in their order were shown to me on that night I remembered the first dream and because of it I wept and was troubled because I had seen that vision book epistle of Enoch chapter the guidance of Enoch and now my son Methuselah call to me all thy brothers and gather together to me all the sons of thy mother for the word calls me and the spirit is poured out upon me that I may show you everything that shall befall you forever and thereupon Methuselah went and summoned to him all his brothers and assembled his relatives and he spake unto all the children of righteousness and said here yes sons of Enoch all the words of your father and hearken aright to the voice of my mouth for I exhort you and say unto you beloved love uprightness and walk therein and Draw not nigh to uprightness with a double heart and associate not with those of a double heart but walk in righteousness my sons and it shall guide you on good paths and righteousness shall be your companion for I know that violence must increase on the earth and a great chastisement be executed on the earth and all unrighteousness come to an end yet it shall be cut off from its roots and its whole structure be destroyed and unrighteousness shall again be consummated on the earth and all. The deeds of unrighteousness and of violence and transgression shall prevail in a twofold degree and when sin and unrighteousness and blasphemy and violence in all kinds of deeds increase and apostasy and transgression and uncleanness increase a great chastisement shall come from heaven upon all these and the Holy Lord will come forth with wrath and chastisement to execute judgment on earth in those days violence shall be cut off from its roots and the roots of unrighteousness together with deceit and they shall be destroyed from under heaven and all the idols of the heathen shall be abandoned and the temples burned with fire and they shall remove them from the whole earth and they shall be cast into the judgment of fire and shall perish in wrath and in grievous judgment forever and the righteous shall arise from their sleep and wisdom shall arise and be given unto them and after that the roots of unrighteousness shall be cut off and the sinners shall be destroyed by the sword and the blasphemers destroyed in every place and those who plan violence and those who commit blasphemy shall perish by the sword and now I tell you my sons and show you the paths of righteousness and the paths of violence yea I will show them to you again that ye may know what will come to pass and now listen to me my sons and walk in the paths of righteousness and walk not in the paths of violence for all who walk in the paths of unrighteousness shall perish forever chapter wisdom of Enoch the book written by Enoch Enoch indeed wrote this complete doctrine of wisdom praised of all men and a judge of all the earth for all my children who shall dwell on the earth and for the future generations who shall observe uprightness and peace let not your spirit be troubled on account of the times for the holy and great one has appointed days for all things and the righteous one shall arise from sleep shall arise and walk in the paths of righteousness and all his path and 
conversation shall be in eternal goodness and grace he will be gracious to the righteous and give him eternal uprightness and he will give him power so that he shall be with goodness and righteousness and he shall walk in eternal light and sin shall perish in darkness forever and shall no more be seen from that day forevermore and after that Enoch both gave and began to recount from the books and Enoch said concerning the children of righteousness and concerning the elect of the world. And concerning the plant of uprightness I will speak these things yea I Enoch will declare unto you my sons according to that which appeared to me in the heavenly vision and which I have known through the word of the holy angels and have learned from the heavenly tablets and Enoch began to recount from the books and said I was born the seventh in the first week while judgment and righteousness still endured and after me there shall arise in the second week great wickedness and deceit shall have sprung up and in it there shall be the first end and in it a man shall be saved and after it is ended unrighteousness shall grow up and a law shall be made for the sinners and after that in the third week at its close a man shall be elected as the plant of righteous judgment and his posterity shall become the plant of righteousness forevermore and after that in the fourth week at its close visions of the holy and righteous shall be seen and a law for all generations and an enclosure shall be made for them and after that in the fifth week at its close the house of glory and dominion shall be built forever and after that in the sixth week all who live in it shall be blinded and the hearts of all of them shall godlessly forsake wisdom and in it a man shall ascend and at its close the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire and the whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed and after that in the seventh week shall an apostate generation arise and many shall be its deeds and all its deeds shall be apostate and at its close shall be elected the elect righteous of the eternal plant of righteousness to receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation for who is there of all the children of men that is able to hear the voice of the holy one without being troubled and who can think his thoughts and who is there that can behold all the works of heaven and how should there be one who could behold the heaven and who is there that could understand the things of heaven and see a soul or a spirit and could tell thereof or ascend and see all their ends and think them or do like them and who is there of all men that could know what is the breadth and the length of the earth and to whom has been shown the measure of all of them or is there anyone who could discern the length of the heaven and how great is its height and upon what it is founded and how great is the number of the stars and where all the luminaries rest and now I say unto you my sons love righteousness and walk therein for the paths of righteousness are worthy of acceptation but the paths of unrighteousness shall suddenly be destroyed and vanish and to certain men of a generation shall the paths of violence and of death be revealed and they shall hold themselves afar from them and shall not follow them and now i say unto you the righteous walk not in the paths of wickedness nor in the paths of death and draw not nigh to them lest ye be destroyed but Seek and choose for yourselves righteousness and an elect life and walk in the paths of peace and ye shall live and prosper and hold fast my words in the thoughts of your hearts and suffer them not to be effaced from your hearts for I know that sinners will tempt men to evilly entreat wisdom so that no place may be found for her and no manner of temptation may minish woe to those who build unrighteousness and oppression and lay deceit as a foundation for they shall be suddenly overthrown and they shall have no peace woe to those who build their houses with sin for from all their foundations shall they be overthrown and by the sword shall they fall and those who acquire gold and silver in judgment suddenly shall perish woe to you ye rich for ye have trusted in your riches and from your riches shall ye depart because ye have not remembered the most high in the days of your riches ye have committed blasphemy and unrighteousness and have become ready for the day of slaughter and the day of darkness and the day of the great judgment thus I speak and declare unto you he who hath created you will overthrow you and for your fall there shall be no compassion and your creator will rejoice at your destruction and your righteous ones in those days shall be a reproach to the sinners and the godless so that mine eyes were a cloud of waters that I might weep over you and pour down my tears as a cloud of waters that so I might rest from my trouble of heart who has permitted you to practice reproaches and wickedness and so judgment shall overtake you sinners fear not the sinners ye righteous for again will the Lord deliver them into your hands that ye may execute judgment upon them according to your desires woe to you who fulminate anathemas which cannot be reversed healing shall therefore be far from you because of your sins woe to you who requite your neighbor with evil for ye shall be requited according to your works woe to you lying witnesses and to those who weigh out injustice for suddenly shall ye perish woe to you sinners for ye persecute the righteous for ye shall be delivered up and persecuted because of injustice and heavy shall its yoke be upon you be hopeful ye righteous for suddenly shall the sinners perish before you and ye shall have lordship over them according to your desires and in the day of the tribulation of the sinners your children shall mount and rise as eagles and higher than the vultures will be your nest and yet shall ascend and enter the crevices of the earth and the clefts of the rock forever as connies before the unrighteous and the sirens shall sigh because of you and weep wherefore fear not ye that have suffered for healing shall be your portion and a bright light shall enlighten you and the voice of rest ye shall hear from heaven woe unto you ye sinners for your riches make you appear like the righteous but your hearts convict you of being sinners and this fact shall be a testimony against you for a memorial of evil deeds woe to you who devour the finest of the wheat and drink wine in large bowls and tread underfoot the lowly with your might woe to you who drink water from every fountain for suddenly shall ye be consumed and wither away because ye have forsaken the fountain of life woe to you who work unrighteousness and deceit and blasphemy it shall be a memorial against you for evil woe to you ye mighty who with might oppress the righteous for the day of your destruction is.
Coming in those days many and good days shall come to the righteous in the day of your judgment chapter wisdom of Enoch believe ye righteous that the sinners will become a shame and ye perish in the day of unrighteousness be it known unto you that the most high is mindful of your destruction and the angels of heaven rejoice over your destruction what will ye do ye sinners and whither will ye flee on that day of judgment when ye hear the voice of the prayer of the righteous ye ye shall fare like unto them against whom this word shall be a testimony ye have been companions of sinners and in those days the prayer of the righteous shall reach unto the Lord and for you the days of your judgment shall come and all the words of your unrighteousness shall be read out before the great holy one and your faces shall be covered with shame and he will reject every work which is grounded on unrighteousness woe to you ye sinners who live on the mid-ocean and on the dry land whose remembrance is evil against you woe to you who acquire silver and gold in unrighteousness and say we have become rich with riches and have possessions and have acquired everything we have desired and now let us do what we purposed for we have gathered silver and many are the husbandmen in our houses and our granaries are full as with water yet and like water your lies shall flow away for your riches shall not abide but speedily ascend from you for ye have acquired it all in unrighteousness and ye shall be given over to a great curse and now I swear unto you to the wise and to the foolish for ye shall have manifold experiences on the earth for ye men shall put on more adornments than a woman and colored garments more than a virgin in royalty and in grandeur and in power and in silver and in gold and in purple and in splendor and in food they shall be poured out as water therefore they shall be wanting in doctrine and wisdom and they shall perish thereby together with their possessions and with all their glory and their splendor and in shame and in slaughter and in great destitution their spirits shall be cast into the furnace of fire I have sworn unto you yes sinners as a mountain has not become a slave and a hill does not become the handmaid of a woman even so sin has not been sent upon the earth but man of himself has created it and under a great curse shall they fall who commit it and barrenness has not been given to the woman but on account of the deeds of her own hands she dies without children I have sworn unto you yes sinners by the holy great one that all your evil deeds are revealed in the heavens and that none of your deeds of oppression are covered and hidden and do not think in your spirit nor say in your heart that ye do not know and that ye do not see that every sin is every day recorded in heaven in the presence of the most high from henceforth ye know that all your oppression wherewith ye oppress is written down every day till the day of your judgment woe to you ye fools for through your folly shall ye perish and ye transgress against the wise and so good hap shall not be your portion and now know ye that ye are prepared for the day of destruction wherefore do not hope to live ye sinners but ye shall depart and die for ye know no ransom for ye are prepared for the day of the great judgment for the day of tribulation and great shame for your spirits woe to you ye obstinate of heart who work wickedness and eat blood whence have ye good things to eat and to drink and to be filled from all the good things which the Lord the Most High has placed in abundance on the earth therefore ye shall have no peace woe to you who love the deeds of unrighteousness wherefore do ye hope for good hap unto yourselves know that ye shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous and they shall cut off your necks and slay you and have no mercy upon you woe to you who rejoice in the tribulation of the righteous for no Grave shall be dug for you woe to you who set at not the words of the righteous for ye shall have no hope of life woe to you who write down lying and godless words for they write down their lies that men may hear them and act godlessly towards neighbors therefore they shall have no peace but die a sudden death woe to you who work godlessness and glory in lying and extol them ye shall perish and no happy life shall be yours woe to them who pervert the words of uprightness and transgress the eternal law and transform themselves into what they were not into sinners they shall be trodden underfoot upon the earth in those days make ready ye righteous to raise your prayers as a memorial and place them as a testimony before the angels that they may place the sin of the sinners for a memorial before the most high in those days the nations shall be stirred up and the families of the nations shall arise on the day of destruction and in those days the destitute shall go forth and carry off their children and they shall abandon them so that their children shall perish through them yet they shall abandon their children sucklings and not return to them and shall have no pity on their beloved ones and again I swear to you yes sinners that sin is prepared for a day of unceasing bloodshed and they who worship stones and grave images of gold and silver and wood and clay and those who worship impure spirits and demons and all kinds of idols not according to knowledge shall get no manner of help from them and they shall become godless by reason of the folly of their hearts and their eyes shall be blinded through the fear of their hearts and through visions in their dreams through these they shall become godless and fearful for they shall have wrought all their work in a lie and shall have worshipped a stone therefore in an instant shall they perish but in those days blessed are all they who accept the words of wisdom and understand them and observe the paths of the most high and walk in the path of his righteousness and become not godless with the godless for they shall be saved woe to you who spread evil to your neighbors for you shall be slain in Sheol woe to you who make deceitful and false measures and who cause bitterness on the earth for they shall thereby be utterly consumed woe to you who build your houses through the grievous toil of others and all their building materials are the bricks and stones of sin I tell you ye shall have no peace woe to them who reject the measure and eternal heritage of their fathers and whose souls follow after idols for they shall have no rest woe to them who work unrighteousness and help oppression and slay their neighbors until the day of the great judgment for he shall cast down your glory and bring affliction on your hearts and shall arouse his fierce indignation and destroy you all with the sword and all the holy and righteous shall remember your sins and in those days in one place the fathers 
together with their sons shall be smitten and brothers one with another shall fall in death till the streams flow with their blood for a man shall not withhold his hand from slaying his sons and his sons sons and the sinner shall not withhold his hand from his honored brother from dawn till sunset they shall slay one another and the horse shall walk up to the breast in the blood of sinners and the chariot shall be submerged to its height in those days the angels shall descend into the secret places and gather together into one place all those who brought down sin and the Most High will arise on that day of judgment to execute great judgment amongst sinners and over all the righteous and holy he will appoint guardians from amongst the holy angels to guard them as the apple of an eye until he makes an end of all wickedness and all sin and though the righteous sleep a long sleep they have not to fear and the children of the earth shall see the wise in security and shall understand all the words of this book and recognize that their riches shall not be able to save them in the overthrow of their sins woe to you sinners on the day of strong anguish ye who afflict the righteous and burn them with fire ye shall be requited according to your works woe to you ye obstinate of heart who watch in order to devise wickedness therefore shall fear come upon you and there shall be none to help you woe to you ye sinners on account of the words of your mouth and on account of the deeds of your hands which your godlessness as wrought in blazing flames burning worse than fire shall ye burn and now know ye that from the angels he will inquire as to your deeds in heaven from the sun and from the moon and from the stars in reference to your sins because upon the earth ye execute judgment on the righteous and he will summon to testify against you every cloud and mist and dew and rain for they shall all be withheld because of you from descending upon you and they shall be mindful of your sins and now give presents to the rain that it be not withheld from descending upon you nor yet the dew when it has received gold and silver from you that it may descend when the hoarfrost and snow with their chilliness and all the snowstorms with all their plagues fall upon you in those days ye shall not be able to stand before them chapter wisdom of Enoch observe the heaven ye children of heaven and every work of the most high and fear ye him and work no evil in his presence if he closes the windows of heaven and withholds the rain and the dew from descending on the earth on your account what will ye do then and if he sends his anger upon you because of your deeds ye cannot petition him for ye spake proud and insolent words against his righteousness therefore ye shall have no peace and see ye not the sailors of the ships how their ships are tossed to and fro by the waves and are shaken by the winds and are in sore trouble and therefore do they fear because all their goodly possessions go into the sea with them and they have evil forebodings of heart that the sea will swallow them and they will perish therein are not the entire sea and all its waters and all its movements the work of the Most High and has he not set limits to its doings and confined it throughout by the sand and at his reproof it is afraid and dries up and all its fish die and all that is in it but yes sinners that are on the earth fear him not has he not made the heaven and the earth and all that is therein who has given understanding and wisdom to everything that moves on the earth and in the sea do not the sailors of the ships fear the sea yet sinners fear not the most high in those days when he hath brought a grievous fire upon you whither will ye flee and where will ye find deliverance and when he launches forth his word against you will you not be affrighted and fear and all the luminaries shall be affrighted with great fear and all the earth shall be affrighted and tremble and be alarmed and all the angels shall execute their commands and shall seek to hide themselves from the presence of the great glory and the children of earth shall tremble and quake and ye sinners shall be cursed forever and ye shall have no peace fear ye not ye souls of the righteous and be hopeful ye that have died in righteousness and grieve not if your soul into Sheol has descended in grief and that in your life your body fared not according to your goodness. But wait for the day of the judgment of sinners and for the day of cursing and chastisement and yet when ye die the sinners speak over you as we die so die the righteous and what benefit do they reap for their deeds behold even as we so do they die in grief and darkness and what have they more than we from henceforth we are equal and what will they receive and what will they see forever behold they too have died and henceforth forever shall they see no light I tell you yes sinners ye are content to eat and drink and rob and sin and strip men naked and acquire wealth and see good days have ye seen the righteous how their end falls out that no manner of violence is found in them till their death nevertheless they perished and became as though they had not been and their spirits descended into Sheol in tribulation chapter wisdom of Enoch another book which Enoch wrote for his son Methuselah and for those who will come after him and keep the law in the last days ye who have done good shall wait for those days till an end is made of those who work evil and an end of the might of the transgressors and wait ye indeed till sin has passed away for their names shall be blotted out of the book of life and out of the holy books and their seed shall be destroyed forever and their spirits shall be slain and they shall cry and make lamentation in a place that is a chaotic wilderness and in the fire shall they burn for there is no earth there and I saw there something like an invisible cloud for by reason of its depth I could not look over and I saw a flame of fire blazing brightly and things like shining mountains circling and sweeping to and fro and I asked one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto him what is this shining thing for it is not a heaven but only the flame of a blazing fire and the voice of weeping and crying and lamentation and strong pain and he said unto me this place which thou seest here are cast the spirits of sinners and blasphemers and of those who work wickedness and of those who pervert everything that the Lord hath spoken through the mouth of the prophets the things that shall be for some of them are written and inscribed above in the heaven in order that the angels may read them and know that which shall befall the sinners and the spirits of the humble and of those who have afflicted their bodies and been recompensed by God and of those who have been put to shame by wicked men who love God and loved 
neither gold nor silver nor any of the good things which are in the world but gave over their bodies to torture who since they came into being longed not after earthly food but regarded everything as a passing breath and lived accordingly and the Lord tried them much and their spirits were found pure so that they should bless his name and all the blessings destined for them I have recounted in the books and he hath assigned them their recompense because they have been found to be such as loved heaven more than their life in the world and though they were trodden underfoot of wicked men and experienced abuse and reviling from them and were put to shame yet they blessed me and now I will summon the spirits of the good who belong to the generation of light and I will transform those who were born in darkness who in the flesh were not recompensed with such honor as their faithfulness deserved and I will bring forth in shining light those who have loved my holy name and I will seat each on the throne of his honor and they shall be resplendent for times without number for righteousness is the judgment of God for to the faithful he will give faithfulness in the habitation of upright paths and they shall see those who were born in darkness led into darkness while the righteous shall be resplendent and the sinners shall cry aloud and see them resplendent and they indeed will go where days and seasons are prescribed for them chapter revelation of Enoch I swear unto you that in heaven the angels remember you for good before the glory of the great one and your names are written before the glory of the great one be hopeful for aforetime ye were put to shame through ill and affliction but now ye shall shine as the lights of heaven ye shall shine and ye shall be seen and the portals of heaven shall be opened to you and in your cry cry for judgment and it shall appear to you for all your tribulation shall be visited on the rulers and on all who help those who plundered you be hopeful and cast not away your hopes for ye shall have great joy as the angels of heaven what shall ye be obliged to do ye shall not have to hide on the day of the great judgment and ye shall not be found as sinners and the eternal judgment shall be far from you for all the generations of the world and now fear not ye righteous when ye see the sinners growing strong and prospering in their ways be not companions with them but keep afar from their violence for ye shall become companions of the hosts of heaven and although the sinners say all our sins shall not be searched out and be written down nevertheless they shall write down all your sins every day and now I show unto you that light and darkness day and night see all your sins be not godless in your hearts and lie not and alter not the words of uprightness nor charge with lying the words of the holy great one nor take account of your idols for all your lying and all your godlessness issue not in righteousness but in great sin and now I know this mystery that sinners will alter and pervert the words of righteousness in many ways and will speak wicked words and lie and practice great deceits and write books concerning their words but when they write down truthfully all my words in their languages and do not change or minish aught from my words but write them all down truthfully all that I first testified concerning them then I know another mystery that books will be given to the righteous and the wise to become a cause of joy and uprightness and much wisdom and to them shall the books be given and they shall believe in them and rejoice over them and then shall all the righteous who have learnt therefrom all the paths of uprightness be recompensed in those days the Lord bade to summon and testify to the children of earth concerning their wisdom show unto them for ye are their guides and a recompense over the whole earth for I and my son will be united with them for ever in the paths of uprightness in their lives and ye shall have peace rejoice ye children of uprightness amen the dead sea scrolls this chart showing a listing of what scrolls were found in the Qumran caves is important to note in regards to the texts found therein as they include an associated body of work that is one in the same parts of the book of giants were found regarding Enoch in the caves as well it would appear that whoever the scribe or group of people who stored away these Scrolls intended them for safekeeping as they represent a body of knowledge that has curiously enough been largely fought since their inception when a researcher gets to a certain point they tend to realize that some information and studies surpass the understanding of the intellect alone but rather sequesters the heart to comprehend such mysteries of which the mind is unwilling the book of the giants the book of the giants was published in not less than six or seven languages from the original Syriac the Greek and Middle Persian versions were made the Sogdian edition was probably derived from the Middle Persian the Uyghur from the Sogdian there is no trace of a Parthian text the book may have existed in Coptic the presence of names such as Sam and Nariman in the Arabic version proves that it had been translated from the Middle Persian to the few surviving fragments texts AG I have added two excerpts the more important of which H probably derives from a Syriac epitome of the book naturally Manichaean authors quoted the book frequently but there is only one direct citation by a non-Manichaean writer text O with the exception of text O all the passages referring to the book of the giants texts JT go back to Syriac writings apparently they are therefore to be treated as quotations from the Syriac edition e.g. the Parthian text N is not the product of a Parthian writer who might have employed a Parthian version of the book but was translated from a Syriac treatise whose Author cited the Syriac text in their journey across Central Asia the stories of the Book of the Giants were influenced by local traditions thus the translation of Ohio as Sam had in its train the introduction of myths appertaining to that Iranian hero this explains the immortality of Sam according to text I the country of Aryan Vezin equals Aryanavaya in text G is a similar innovation the Kogman Mountains in text B may reflect the Mount Hermon the progeny of the fallen angels was 
can find in 36 towns text s owing to the introduction of the Mount Sumeru this number was changed in Sogdiana to 32 text g the heaven of Indra is situated between the four peaks cfg of the Meru and consists of 32 cities of devas itel hand Chinese Buddhism on triastriate manuscript mapping key bed equals damaged letters or uncertain readings bed equals suggested restorations of missing letters equals visible but illegible letters equals estimated number of missing letters equals a lacuna of undetermined extent equals same at the beginning of a line equals same at the end of a line in the translation parentheses are employed for explanatory remarks bolded text of the translation fragments are of great importance and correlation with the books of Enoch note the text from multiple of these manuscripts is badly damaged but between the various versions of the book in different languages we have a general picture of what the book of giants is discussing if the books vary title isn't enough for the reader alone logical estimates according to the historical texts which tell of these giants living seem to be around bc and the manuscripts presumably being copied several times throughout the ages considering any scribe would find copying an epic like this more than just a great job they probably did it for free which explains why so many manuscripts exist of the book are more than likely around and years old translation to english introduction frgc hard Arrow bow he that Sam said blessed be had he seen this he would not have died then Shamazad said to Sam his son all that Mahawai is spoiled thereupon he said to we are until and that are in the fiery hell as my father Varagdad was Shamazad said it is true what he says he says one of thousands of giants for one of thousands Sam thereupon began Mahawai too in many places until to that place he might escape and frgj Varagdad. Hobabi a giant robbed ahr a mortal man of Naxtag his wife thereupon the giants began to kill each other and to abduct their wives the creatures too began to kill each other Sam before the sun one hand in the air the other whatever he obtained to his brother imprisoned over take stag to the angels from heaven take stag to take stag through or was thrown into the water finally in his sleep take stag saw three signs one portending one woe and flight and one annihilation. Nariman saw a garden full of trees in rows 200 came out the trees frgl Enoch the apostle gave a message to the demons and their children to you not peace the judgment on you is that you shall be bound for the sins you have committed you shall see the destruction of your children ruling for a hundred and twenty years wild ass ibex ram goat gazelle oryx of each 200 appear the other wild beasts birds and animals and their wine shall be 6,000 jugs irritation of water and their oil shall be frgk father nuptials until the completion of his infighting and in the nest ohio and ohio he said to his brother get up and we will take what our father has ordered us to the pledge we have given battle and the giants fought them together not the of the lion but the on his not the of the rainbow but the bow firm not the sharpness of the blade but the strength of the ox not the eagle but his wings not the gold but the brass that hammers it not the proud ruler but the diadem on his head not the splendid cypress but the giants of the mountain frgg not he that engages in quarrels but he that is true in his speech not the evil fruit but the poison in it not they that are placed in the skies but the god of all worlds not the servant is proud but the lord that is above him not one that is sent but the man that sent him thereupon Nariman said and in another place I saw those that were weeping for the ruin that had befallen them and whose cries and laments rose up to heaven and also I saw another place where there were tyrants and rulers in great number who had lived in sin and evil deeds when note here that this passage is in the style of Enoch and is likely one of the many books Enoch gave to Methuselah to preserve even unto future generations frgi many men and women were killed 400. Thousand righteous with fire naphtha and brimstone and the angels veiled or covered or protected or moved out of sight Enoch electi et audi trices and ravished them they chose beautiful women and demanded them in marriage sorted all carried off severally they were subjected to tasks and services and they from each city and were ordered to serve the the Mesneans were directed to prepare the Husians to sweep and water the Persians to on the five. Elements FRGE slaying righteous good deeds elements the crown the diadem the garland and the garment of light the seven demons like a blacksmith who binds or shuts fastens and looses or opens detaches who from the seeds of and serves the king offense when weeping with mercy hand the pious gave presents some buried the idols the Jews did good and evil some make their god half demon half god killing the seven demons I FRGB. Various colors that by and by live from the five elements as if it were a means not to die they fill themselves with food and drink their garment is this corpse and not firm its ground is not firm like imprisoned in this corpse in bones nerves flesh veins and skin and entered herself equals az into it then he equals man cries out over sun and moon the just gods two flames over the elements the trees and the animals but gods ruin in each epoch sends apostles. Sit il Zarathustra Buddha Christ frgh evil intention from where he came the misguided recognize the five elements the five kinds of trees the five kinds of animals on the heroes we receive from Mani the Lord the five commandments to the three seals living profession and wisdom moon rest from the power or deceit own and keep measured the mixture trees and wells into water and fruit milk he should not offend his brother the wise. Hearer who like unto juniper leaves frgf much profit like a farmer who sows seed in many the hearer who knowledge is like unto a man that threw the dish called frosig into milk it became hard not the part that ruin at first heavy like first is honored might shine six days the hearer who gives alms to the elect is like unto a poor man that presents his daughter to the king he reaches a position of great honor in the body of the elect the food given. 
to to him as alms is purified in the same manner as a that by fire and wind beautiful clothes on a clean body turn frg a witness fruit tree like firewood like a grain radiance the hearer in the world and the alms within the church are like unto a ship on the sea the towing line is in the hand of the tower on shore the sailor is on board the ship the sea is the world the ship is the the is the lms the tower is the the towing line is the wisdom the hearer is like unto the branch of a fruitless tree fruitless and the hearer's fruit that pious deeds the elect the hearer and vomin are like unto three brothers to whom some possessions were left by their father a piece of land seed they became partners they reap and the hearer like frgd an image of the king cast of gold the king gave presents the hearer that copies a book is like unto a sick man that gave his to a Man the hearer that gives his daughter to the church is like pledge who equals father gave his son to learn to father pledge hearer again the hearer is like stumble is purified to the soul from the church is like unto the wife of the soldier or roman who infant wrist one shoe who however with a deanery ooze was the wind tore out one he was abashed from the ground ground frgm sent the hearer that makes one is like unto a compassionate mother who had seven sons the enemy killed all the hearer that piety a well one on the shore of the sea one in the boat he that is on shore tows him that is in the boat he that is in the boat sea upwards to like like a pearl diadem frgm church like unto a man that fruit and flowers then they praise fruitful tree like unto a man that bought a piece of land on that piece of land there was a well and in that well a bag full of Drachmas the king was filled with wonder share pledge frg and numerous hearer at like unto a garment like to the master like and a blacksmith the goldsmith to honor the blacksmith to one to be wigur lekhok turkman three bang museum sliv order of pages according to lekhok the fought publ by bang seems to support lekhok's opinion first page fire was going to come out and i saw that the sun was at the point of rising and that his center or without Increasing asshole maiden above was going to start rolling then came a voice from the air above calling me it spoke thus O son of Baragdad your affairs are lamentable more than this you shall not see do not die now prematurely but turn quickly back from here and again besides this voice I heard the voice of Enoch the apostle from the south without however seeing him at all speaking my name very lovingly he called and downwards from then second page for the closed door of the sun will open the sun's light and heat will descend and set your wings alight you will burn and die said he having heard these words I beat my wings and quickly flew down from the air I looked back Don had with the light of the sun it had come to rise over the Kogman mountains and again a voice came from above bringing the command of Enoch the apostle it said I call you Varagdad I know his direction you you now quickly people also see Sogdi and M small scrap from the Center of a page order of pages uncertain first page I shall see thereupon now SAHM the giant was very angry and laid hands on M Ahawai the giant with the intention I shall and kill you then the other giant second page do not be afraid for SAHM the giant will want to kill you but I shall not let him I myself shall damage thereupon Mahawai the giant was satisfied D middle Persian published Spapi outside and left read the dream we have. Seen thereupon Enoch thus and the trees that came out those are the Egregora we year and the giants that came out of the women and over pulled out over Esogdi and T3 order of pages uncertain first page when they saw the apostle before the apostle those demons that were timid were very very glad at seeing the apostle all of them assembled before him also of those that were tyrants and criminals they were worried and much afraid then second page not to. Thereupon those powerful demons spoke thus to the pious apostle if by us any further sin will not be committed my lord why you have and weighty injunction f middle persian t2d2 six fragmentary columns from the middle of a page order of columns uncertain instead of a slash 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 b slash 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 def it might have been def or even def slash 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 a slash 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 b c o l a poverty those who harass the happiness of the righteous on that account they shall fall into eternal ruin and distress into that. Fire the mother of all conflagrations and the foundation of all ruined tyrants and when these sinful misbegotten sons of ruin in those crevices and colb you have not been better in error you thought you would this false power eternally you all this iniquity colc you that call to us with the voice of falsehood neither did we reveal ourselves on your account so that you could see us nor thus ourselves through the praise and greatness that to us given to you but col. D sinners is visible where out of this fire your soul will be prepared for the transfer to eternal ruin and as for you sinful misbegotten sons of the wrathful self-confounders of the true words of that holy one disturbers of the actions of good deed aggressors upon piety ers of the living who their cole and on brilliant wings they shall fly and soar further outside and above that fire and shall gaze into its depth and height and those righteous that will stand around it. Outside and above they themselves shall have power over that great fire and over everything in it blaze souls that colf they are purer and stronger than the great fire of ruin that sets the worlds ablaze they shall stand around it outside and above and splendour shall shine over them further outside and above it they shall fly after those souls that may try to escape from the fire and that gsogd and t22 folios one only publ here the other contains a wy delta beta gamma cnpsq.
Delta YWTYY discourse on the Nephilim demons headlines are PSNPR beta R pronouncement V4 FRYSTYT Delta NCC the four angels with the 200 demons presumably this is where Enoch is addressing the fallen angel leaders who petitioned him to take their case to God it also coincides with the text later on revealing that four angels imprisoned multiple demons but precisely how many is not specified they took and imprisoned all the helpers that were in the heavens and the angels themselves descended from the heaven to the earth and when the two hundred demons saw those angels they were much afraid and worried they assumed the shape of men and hid themselves there upon the angels forcibly removed the men from the demons laid them aside and put watchers over them the giants were sons with each other in bodily union with each other self and the that had been born to them they forcibly removed them from the demons and they led one half of them eastwards and the other half westwards on the skirts of four huge mountains towards the foot of the Sumeru mountain into thirty-two towns which the living spirit had prepared for them in the beginning and one calls that place Arian Wazen and those men are or were in the first arts and crafts they made the angels and to the demons they went to fight and those two hundred demons fought a hard battle with the four angels until the angels used fire naphtha and brimstone. Excerpts H. Sogdian T. 2 S. Sogdian Script 2 Folios Contents Similar to the Kephali Only About a Quarter I. R. I. P. U. B. L. Here the following chapter has as headline Gamma T. S. N. S. Y. C. N. N. Beta C. N. P. Delta Ya. W. P. R. S. Equals Here Begin Sans Eyes Question The World In It. Rudy Time Z. K. S. N. S. Y. C. N. N. M. R. M. New York R. W. Gamma N. Y. P. R. Y. S. T. K. W. W. N. K. W. P. R. S. Y. N. K. Beta C. N. P. Delta Z. Y. K. W. Z. K. H. M. R. T. Gamma M. Y. T. S. K. W. N. T. O. O. C. K. N. C. P. Y. Delta R. Z. Y M R C H Z Gamma Y R N T equals and again Sansai asked the light apostle this world where mankind lives why does one call it birth death? Sasra Chin Sheng Su and what they had seen in the heavens among the gods and also what they had seen in hell their native land and furthermore what they had seen on earth all that they began to teach Hendiatus to the men to Samazad two sons were born by one of them he named Ohaya in Sogdian he is called Sam the giant and again a second son was born to him he named him Ohaya it's Sogdian equivalent is Pat Sam as for the remaining giants they were born to the other demons. And Yakaz Kalafon completed the chapter on the coming of the 200 demons Isogdian M and small fragment manliness in powerful tyranny he or you shall not die the giant Sam and his brother will live eternally for in the whole world in power and strength and in quotations and illusions J Middle Persian T2 D2 V2, and in the coming of the 200 demons there are two paths the hurting speech and the hard labor these belong or lead to hell K Sogdian M first page. Before they were and all the fulfilled their tasks lawfully now they became excited and irritated for the following reason namely the two hundred demons came down to the sphere from the high heaven and the second page in the world they became excited and irritated for their lifelines and the connections of their pneumatic veins are joined to the sphere Kalafon completed the exposition of the three worlds headline here begins the coming of Jesus and his bringing the religion to Adam and Sidile you should care and El Coptic Kephaliah earthquake and malice happened in the watchpost of the great king of honor namely the Agregorawi who arose at the time when they were and there descended those who were sent to confound them Genesis M Coptic Kephaliah, now attend and behold how the great king of honor who is Nunu Omicron Iota Alpha is in the third heaven he is with the wrath and a rebellion when malice and wrath arose in his camp namely the Agregorawi of heaven who in his watch district rebelled and descended to the earth they did all deeds of malice they revealed the arts in the world and the mysteries of heaven to the men rebellion and ruin came about on the earth and Parthian M lines Fragment of a treatise entitled RDHNGWYFRs equals commentary on Mani's Opuser to hang and the story about the great fire like unto the way in which the fire with powerful wrath swallows this world and enjoys it like unto the way in which this fire that is in the body swallows the exterior fire that is lit comes in fruit and food and enjoys it again like unto the story in which two brothers who found a treasure and a pursuer lacerated each other and they died like unto the fight in which Ohio Iodin equals Leviathan and Raphael lacerated each other and they vanished like unto the story in which a lion cub a calf in a wood or on a meadow and a fox lacerated each other and they vanished or died thus the great fire swallows etc both of the fires am another Copy of this text O Arabic from Middle Persian Al Ghanfar Abu Iskai Brabimu Al Tibri is a middle of 13th century in Sachaw's edition of Biruni's Athar Al Baki Yat Intrp 14. The Book of the Giants by Mani of Babylon is filled with stories about these antediluvian giants amongst whom Sam and Nariman P. Coptic Kef, on account of the malice and rebellion that had arisen in the watchpost of the great king of honor, namely the Agregorawi, who from the heavens had descended to the earth on. Their account the four angels received their orders they bound the Agregorawi with eternal fetters in the prison of the dark their sons were destroyed upon the earth Q Coptic Manic Psalm Book Ed Alberry, the righteous who were burnt in the fire they endured this multitude that were wiped out 4000 Enoch also the sage the transgressors being our Coptic man Homel Ed Polotsky, evil righteous were slain by the giants and many more the years of Enoch S Coptic Kef. 
Before the Egregora we rebelled and descended from heaven a prison had been built for them in the depth of the earth beneath the mountains before the sons of the giants were born who knew not righteousness and piety among themselves thirty-six towns had been prepared and erected so that the sons of the giants should live in them they that come to beget who live a thousand years t Parthian a order of pages unknown first page mirror image distributed the men and Enoch was veiled equals. Moved out of sight they took afterwards with donkey goad slaves and waterless trees then the archangels Michael Raphael Gabriel and Israel and imprisoned the demons and of them seven and twelve possibly a numerical indication as to how many demons the archangels imprisoned second page 3280 the beginning of King Vistasp in the palace he flamed forth or in the brilliant palace and at night then to the broken gate man physicians. Merchants farmers at sea armored he came out Uparthian T2D from the end RST of a hymn gifts a peaceful sovereign was King Vistasp in Arya Enways and Waman and Zarel the sovereign's queen kudos received the faith the prince they have secured a place in the heavenly hall and quietude forever and ever V Sogdian M small fragment order of pages uncertain first page because the house of the gods eternal joy and good for so it is said at that time. Yuma was in the world and at the time of the new moon the blessed denizens of the world all assembled all second page they offered five garlands in homage and Yuma accepted those garlands and those that and great kingship was his and on them and acclamations and from that pious he placed the garlands on his head the denizens of the world reconstructed summary of the book of giants chapter 1 the watchers are grieved over the sins of mankind and petition God to let them descend to the earth to teach the sons of men righteousness and to rebuke them God grants their petition Azazel is sent to prepare the way for the watchers Azazel prepares the way and the watchers descend and they begin to teach them righteousness and justice Enoch is chosen by the watchers to serve as a mediator between men and the watchers chapter 2 the daughters of men lust after the attractive watchers and seduce them Azazel with Shem Hazza's help instigates the fall of the watchers and their followers the watchers fall from their glorious nature and become bound to fleshly bodies as a consequence of their joining sexually to flesh they begin to reveal to their wives heavenly and earthly secrets chapter 3 the watchers have their own families with humans and also with animals and those that were defiled by them give birth to giants these giants begin to grow to massive sizes and become full of greed and corruption they kill many dragons and they Sons of Cain worship them for protecting them the children of Cain are no longer able to sustain the giants with their offerings of vegetables and grain so the giants turn on them and kill them and begin to eat them the giants develop a taste for blood and begin eating any moving thing including each other the watchers teach some of the secrets they were appointed over to keep from the sons of men the giants imitate the sins of their fathers and take for themselves wives and animal mates and they beget Naphile and Elio God seeing all this wickedness sends Enoch to declare to Shem Hazza and the fallen watchers that they will be soon punished for causing the earth to be corrupted chapter 4 Enoch is sent by the righteous watchers to rebuke the fallen watchers and to declare to them their doom he comes to Azazel first and condemns him as the principal sinner amongst the fallen watchers he then summons Mahaway to him and has him gather all the watchers for his message Enoch enters the assembly of the fallen watchers and gives them the message of doom they weep and lament and beg Enoch to present to God their petition for mercy and a second chance to restore them to their former glory and that their sons might have eternal life they required a messenger to talk to God because God had since stopped talking to them after their transgression Enoch hears their case and tells them he will talk to God on their behalf chapter 5 Enoch having written the petition of the fallen watchers and discussing it with God receives a vision from God as a response and Enoch writes the vision for the fallen watchers in a book and gives the book to them Enoch declares to them they will not be forgiven and describes for them his ascent into the presence of God where he was given a message for them chapter 6 Enoch received from God an answer for the fallen watchers he is told to tell them why they were not given permission to have sex and what their punishment is because of it and he foretells unto them the miserable doom and fate of the offspring of the fallen watchers and foretells to them that they will become evil spirits and will not have eternal life but that their years will be no more than after hearing this the fallen watchers and their giant sons take up stones to throw at Enoch but the holy watchers shield Enoch from their deadly blows and lift Enoch up into the heavens to escape their earthly wrath against Enoch the messenger this is perhaps the first time. That anyone ever attempted to kill the messenger chapter 7 Hobabesh kidnaps another giant's wife and starts a war amongst the giants when the war was ending one of Ohio's companions was killed by Mahawe Ohio mourns with his father Shem has about his friend and they curse Mahawe Mahawe defends himself appealing to the words of his father Barakal as justification Ohio gets angry and attempts to kill Mahawe but Gilgamesh and the other giants prevent Ohio from doing so and they ward. Off Ohio's murderous intentions this is where we learn about Gilgamesh slaying dragons or dinosaurs and being a hero for the normal sized men of that time chapter 8 Gilgamesh has a dream but interprets it as indicating the giants will not be punished the giants celebrate but aren't entirely convinced and subsequent to this Ohio and Heya have dreams of their own they seek the interpretation of the dreams but none of the giants can declare to them what the meaning of their dreams are so. 
The giants have Mahaway go to Enoch in order to learn from him the meaning of the dreams and to learn what the fate of the giants will be. Mahaway flies to Enoch and Enoch greets Mahaway and Mahaway explains why he came and Enoch proceeds to give Mahaway the answer and he writes it down in a tablet and gives a second tablet as well to Mahaway intended for Shemhaza and the watchers and he sends Mahaway back to the giants with the two tablets. Chapter 9 Mahaway flies back to the giants with the two tablets and Mahaway tells them of his journey to Enoch and of Enoch saving his life and tells them that Enoch had given him two tablets and revealed everything they had wanted to know from him the first tablet is read the giants discuss the contents of the first tablet after it is finished being read and realize they are doomed and they lament over their miserable fate they then have the second tablet read Enoch tells Shemhaza that he and the other fallen watchers will soon be bound but that the giants should repent and pray for they still have a chance to benefit from reformation of their lives. Chapter 10 Shemhaza urges his two sons Ohaya and Heya to reform their lives in the hopes that they will be yet given mercy. Ohaya and Heya listen to the advice of Shemhaza and attempt to convince the giants to reform themselves teaching them through Proverbs where true success is found. The giants seek to reform their lives. Enoch is sent to declare to the watchers that within years they would all be bound in a dark prison of punishment for their sins and that their sons would all be destroyed from off the face of the earth Noah begins to build the ark around this time only Azazel is bound chapter 11 the giants lament over Azazel being bound and then they and the watchers seeing that they were not bound or destroyed vaunted themselves when this happened Gabriel the archangel was sent to incite the giants to commit civil war against themselves and their offspring and they all began to kill each other and the watchers beheld the destruction of their families when the war of the giants ends with few survivors all of the fallen watchers are subsequently bound by the angels into the dark prison of punishment chapter 12 Noah goes into the ark and the flood comes and begins to kill all life but not all the giants are killed by the flood in order to fix this Yehuwe sends the leviathan and the leviathan begins to kill all the giants and their sons who Survived Ohio alone survives the attacks of the Leviathan and kills the Leviathan. The archangel Raphael is sent by Yehuwe in order to punish Ohio for killing the Leviathan and to finally restore the earth to purity. Ohio is killed and bound in the dark prison of punishment with the fallen watchers the flood being over and the giants and their sons still remaining on the earth without bodies become evil spirits and are given a law by an angel of Yehuwe how they are to live if they want to. Avoid being sent to the dark prison of punishment that the watchers were sent to and this explains how the Nephilim came to be on the earth after the flood evidence of giants fossilized remains of giant human skeletons have been found all around the world ranging in size many of them have been recovered with giant weapons armor and strange artifacts dubbed Oa parts out of place artifacts the current worldview model for humanity doesn't support the existence of a giant human race according to Evolution These enormous ancient human beings were worshipped throughout various world religions of which tell of many of them slaying dragons It is important to note that the term dragon was replaced by the word dinosaur in by Sir Edward Owen Hence any reference in ancient literature to dragons is a reference to dinosaurs According to the ontology of the word change associations involved The following is a brief report of recovered giant fossilized human remains of which most end up in Private collections of the elite of society save a few who have found their way to museums around the world although in recent years many of these museums have been selling these remains to private collectors for large sums of money their discoveries remain documented and undisputed by reasonable scholars without hidden agendas take a look at the evidence and decide for yourself if there were giants on the earth in those days, Genesis perhaps the best place to start off with providing. Evidence of the existence of giant human beings is Crete. Crete was once known in old times as Arcadia. The Greek historian Herodotus had written about another historian Eustathius who had said that Arcadia was once called Gigantes or the land of giants because of the giants who had formerly lived there. It was also known as the Greek Garden of Eden. This connection between Arcadia giants and to the Garden of Eden makes sense because the th century Roman author Servius in his commentary on the Ennead says that the Arcadians often reached the age of years Grotius several of the world's most influential authors all throughout history verify these accounts of giants gods and the island of Crete people such as Diodorus Siculus Pliny Strabo Plutarch and Plato just to name a few in addition to these historical accounts by some of the world's most trusted authorities there is also the science with real life giant bones that have been found on Crete in fact the largest bones that have ever been found were discovered on this very same island which may prove this was truly the home or the land of giants during the Cretan war from BC a massive giant skeleton was discovered on the island this giant was measured at the length of 33 cubits which equates to nearly feet the Roman Lucius Flaccus was a notable eyewitness to the gigantic bones and the Greek writer under Roman Emperor Hadrian Flagon of Trolleys also mentions the discovery of several giant skeletons in the Included chart of giant fossilized remains findings around the world features the foot skeleton found by the Carthaginians in the, the Geography of Strabo volume by Strabo he writes about these giants that were discovered in city founded by the biblical Corinthians who used to reside in the modern day island of Crete somewhere in this neighborhood is the mountain Bermius which was formerly in the possession of the Bryges a Thracian nation some of whom passed over to Asia and were called by 
Another name Phrygians Phrygis after Thessalonica follows the remaining part of the Thermon Gulf extending to Canastinium. This is a promontory of a peninsula form and is opposite to Magnesia Palene is the name of the peninsula. It has an isthmus stadia in width with a ditch cut across it. There is a city on the peninsula formerly called Potidzna founded by the Corinthians but afterwards it was called Cassandria from King Cassander who restored it after it was demolished. It is a circuit of stadia around the peninsula by sea here giants were said to have lived and the region to have been called Phlegra. some consider this to be a mere fable but others with greater probability on their side see implied in it the existence of a barbarous and lawless race of people who once occupied the country but who were destroyed by hercules on his return home after the capture of troy here also the trojan women are said to have committed the destructive act of burning the ships to avoid becoming the slaves of their captors' wives there are more stories and eyewitness accounts of giant people and bones being found on the island of Crete than anywhere in the world as this information is current in addition to the eyewitness accounts and bones that have been found here that help verify this history with some science there is more scientific evidence in the form of the tools that these giant people had used tools such as the massive double-headed axes that have been found in Crete these Axes are said to be from up to years before Christ and were also the main religious symbol of the ancient Cretans they date to the second palace and post-palace periods BC the Minoan name for the double axe is Labrius thus the word labyrinth may originally have meant the house of the double axe an ancient reference to the invention of the double axe which is attributed to giants this biblical story may give us a clue as to what eventually had happened to these giants from Crete the sons of Joseph were authorized to invade the land of the giants and Og the king of Bashan and the last sovereign of the Ashtoreth dynasty encountered Moses at Adriae where he fell with his sons and all his people until there was none left alive and they the Israelites possessed the land numbers XXI Deuteronomy which also were accounted giants as the Anakims but the Moabites call them Emims Deuteronomy and the rest of Gilead and all Bashan being the kingdom of Og gave I unto the half tribe of Manasseh all the region of Argob with all Bashan which was called the land of giants Joshua and the coast of Og king of Bashan which was of the remnant of the giants that dwelt at Ashtarot and at Adriae Joshua all the kingdom of Og in Bashan which reigned in Ashtarot and in Adriae who remained of the remnant of the giants for these did Moses smite and cast them out fossilized human footprints have also been discovered in Sweden and in Mexico giant skeletons have been discovered throughout the United States and giant fossilized remains are not solely exclusive to the lands of Crete but rather worldwide photos of giants from recent times are all a part of important natural history an article from Strand magazine December reprinted in Traces of the Elder Faiths of Ireland by W.G. Wood Martin mentions this fossilized giant discovered during mining operations in County Antrim Ireland preeminent among the most extraordinary articles ever held by a railway company is the Fossilized Irish Giant which is at this moment lying at the London and Northwestern Railway Company's Broad Street Goods Depot and a photograph of which is reproduced here this monstrous figure is reputed to have been dug up by M. R. Dyer whilst prospecting for iron ore in County Antrim the principal measurements are entire length foot in girth of chest foot in and length of arms foot in there are six toes on the right foot the gross weight is ton CWT so that it took half a dozen men and a Powerful crane to place this article of lost property in position for the Strand Magazine photographer to do her work the below is the picture of the giant published in Strand Magazine near Crittenden Arizona in workmen excavating for a commercial building came upon a huge stone sarcophagus 8 feet below the surface the contractor called in expert help and the sarcophagus was opened to reveal a granite mummy case which had once held the body of a human being more than 12 feet tall human with six toes according to the carving of the case but the body had been buried so many thousands of years that it had long since turned to dust just another silent witness to the truth of Genesis which tells us that there were giants on the earth in those days the excavation of over a dozen skeletons two feet tall around the world shocked archaeologists if you have already read through the book of giants then you may understand why on so many Sumerian artifacts that we find depictions of giant humans being served by lesser humans in stature as the book of Enoch testifies and as other texts of the same body of knowledge tell us some men worship these giants only to have them eventually turn on them the associated text in the book of giants that pertains to this particular Sumerian tablet is the following they took and imprisoned all the helpers that were in the heavens and the angels themselves descended from the heaven to the earth and when the two hundred demons saw those angels they were much afraid and worried they assumed the shape of men and hid themselves there upon the angels forcibly removed the men from the demons laid them aside and put watchers over them the giants were sons with each other in bodily union with each other self and the that had been born to them they forcibly removed them from the demons and they led one half of them eastwards and the other half westwards on the skirts of four huge mountains towards the foot of the Sumeru mountain into 32 towns which the living spirit had prepared for them in the beginning and one calls that place Arian Wazen and those men are or were in the first arts and crafts they made the angels and to the demons they went to fight and those 200 demons fought a hard battle with the four angels until the angels used fire naphtha and brimstone, book of giants, Sogdian manuscript of such cities mentioned in the book of giants other authorities on the antiquities of history make note Cristoforo Boan del Monte, 
was an Italian monk traveler and a pioneer in promoting first-hand knowledge of Greece and its antiquities who had written about a Cretan city named Sarandopolis that was formerly inhabited by giants and where modern eparchia of Sentia derived its name the San Diego giant the mummy remains of a giant were unearthed in a cave near San Diego, California it was discovered by a party of prospectors and was displayed at the Atlantic Exposition while a number of Smithsonian scientists were there they asked permission to examine it and when consent was given applied their tapes and found that it measured 8 feet 4 inches from crown to heel the body lied rest in a 10 foot coffin the exhibitor agreed to sell it for dollar to the Smithsonian of which sold it in more recent days to an unknown private collector the following photo is the San Diego giant in terms of the lifespans of the giants we find that it was appointed to them years to live Enoch and to Gabriel said the Lord proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication and destroy the children of the watchers from amongst men send them one against the other that they may destroy each other in battle for length of days shall they not have and no request that they make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf for they hope to live an eternal life and that each one of them will live five hundred years Enoch book watcher ch notice how that is specific to a definite degree well it would seem that their days were numbered as a curse and that perhaps they couldn't die until years had been allotted to them keep in mind that God was not pleased at all with that the fallen angels had done and was using this as a testament against them for breaking his laws they wanted their giant sons to have the eternal life like they had but God denied their plea for this although the exact Contents of the petition the fallen angels had Enoch delivered to God is not known this verse appears to be a logical response to one of the things the fallen must have included in it regarding their son's length of life furthermore in regards to their hybrid status half man half angel of existence we are encountered with the terms and conditions of their afterlife as the book of the words of righteousness tells us Enoch and now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling Enoch evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men and from the watchers is their beginning and primal origin they shall be evil spirits on earth and evil spirits shall they be called Enoch and the spirits of the giants afflict oppress destroy attack do battle and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble they take no food but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses not Having souls once the giants had died they became roaming spirits of the earth being able to inhabit the bodies of men and women animals and other forms only when reading through the testament of Solomon do we find evidence of these evil spirits residing on earth until the final judgment Solomon and there came before my face another enslaved spirit having obscurely the form of a man with gleaming eyes and bearing in his hand a blade and I asked who art thou but he answered I am a lascivious spirit engendered of a giant man who died in the massacre in the time of the giants I said to him tell me what thou art employed upon earth and where thou hast thy dwelling closing notes and my own personal observations being a former evolutionist macro finding about oa parts and fossilized giant human beings around the world compelled me to look for answers outside the modern scientific religion and into the accounts of historians scribes and the body of knowledge of the divine the earth and its artifacts seem to testify to its own past so long as we pay attention to the ancient reporters who so diligently made the happenings of ancient times known to us through the preservation of their observations the more one goes looking for evidence pertaining to giants the more one finds the bulk of information pertaining to these giants seems to be clustered on the body of biblical knowledge of which no other codex contains more references or information about this mystery itself seems best solved by poring over the evidence with diligent study performed by reading with not the eyes but rather the heart testament of Solomon testament of Solomon son of David who was king in Jerusalem and mastered and controlled all spirits of the air on the earth and under the earth by means of them also he wrought all the transcendent works of the temple telling also of the authorities they wield against men and by what angels these demons are brought to naught of the sage Solomon blessed art thou O Lord God who didst give Solomon such authority glory to thee and might unto the ages Amen and behold when the temple of the city of Jerusalem was being built and the artificers were working thereat Ornias the demon came among them toward sunset and he took away half of the pay of the master workman's little boy as well as half his food he also continued to suck the thumb of his right hand every day and the child grew thin although he was very much loved by the king. So King Solomon called the boy one day and questioned him saying do I not love thee more than all the artisans who are working in the temple of God do I not give thee double wages and a double supply of food how is it that day by day and hour by hour thou growest thinner but the child said to the king I pray thee O king listen to what has befallen all that thy child hath after we are all released from our work on the temple of God after sunset when I lie down to rest one of the evil demons comes and takes away from me one half of my pay and one half of my food then he also takes hold of my right hand and sucks my thumb and lo my soul is oppressed and so my body waxes thinner every day now when I Solomon heard this I entered the temple of God and prayed with all my soul night and day that the demon might be delivered into my hands and that I might gain authority over him and it came about through my prayer that grace was given to me from the Lord Sabaoth by Michael his archangel.
he brought me a little ring having a seal consisting of an engraved stone and said to me Take O Solomon king son of David the gift which the Lord God has sent thee the highest Sabaoth with it thou shalt lock up all demons of the earth male and female and with their help thou shalt build up Jerusalem but thou must wear the seal of God and this engraving of the seal of the ring sent thee is a pent alpha a pent alpha otherwise known as the seal of Solomon and I Solomon was overjoyed and praised and glorified the God of heaven and earth and on the morrow I called the boy and gave him the ring and said to him take this and at the hour in which the demon shall come unto thee throw this ring at the chest of the demon and say to him in the name of God King Solomon calls thee hither and then do thou come running to me without having any misgivings or fear in respect of aught thou mayest hear on the part of the demon so the child took the ring and went off and behold at the customary our Ornias the fierce demon came like a burning fire to take the pay from the child but the child according to the instructions received from the king threw the ring at the chest of the demon and said King Solomon calls thee hither and then he went off at a run to the king but the demon cried out aloud saying child why hast thou done this to me take the ring off me and I will render to thee the gold of the earth only take this off me and forbear to lead me away to Solomon but the child said to the demon as the Lord God of Israel liveth I will not brook thee so come hither and the child came at a run rejoicing to the king and said I have brought the demon O king as thou didst command me O my master and behold he stands before the gates of the court of thy palace crying out and supplicating with a loud voice offering me the silver and gold of the earth if I will only bring him unto thee and when Solomon heard this he rose up from his throne and went outside into the vestibule of the court of his palace and there he saw the demon shuddering and trembling and he said to him who art thou and the demon answered I am called Ornias and Solomon said to him tell me O demon to what zodiacal sign thou art subject and he answered to the water pourer and those who are consumed with desire for the noble virgins upon earth these I strangle but in case there is no disposition to sleep I am changed into three forms whenever men come to be enamored of women I metamorphose myself into a comely female and I take hold of the men in their sleep and play with them and after a while I again take to my wings and hie me to the heavenly regions I also appear as a lion and I am commanded by all the demons I am frustrated by the archangel Uriel the power of God I Solomon having heard the name of the archangel prayed and glorified God the Lord of heaven and earth and I sealed the demon and set him to work at stone cutting so that he might cut the stones in the temple which lying along the shore had been brought by the sea of Arabia but he fearful of the iron continued and said to me I pray thee King Solomon let me go free and I will bring you all the demons and as he was not willing to be subject to me I prayed the archangel Uriel to come and succour me and I forthwith beheld the archangel Uriel coming down to me from the heavens and the angel bade the whales of the sea come out of the abyss and he cast his destiny upon the ground and that destiny made subject to him the great demon and he commanded the great demon and bold Ornias to cut stones at the temple and accordingly I Solomon glorified the God of heaven and maker of the earth and he bade Ornias come with his destiny and gave him the seal saying away with thee and bring me hither the prince of all the demons so Ornias took the finger ring and went off to Beelzebul who has kingship over the demons he said to him hither Solomon calls thee but Beelzebul having heard said to him tell me who is the Solomon of whom thou speakest to me then Ornias threw the ring at the chest of Beelzebul saying Solomon the king calls thee but Beelzebul cried aloud with a mighty voice and shot out a great burning flame of fire and he arose and followed Ornias and came to Solomon and when I saw the prince of demons I glorified the Lord God maker of heaven and earth and I said blessed art thou Lord God almighty who hast given to Solomon thy servant wisdom the assessor of the wise and hast subjected unto me all the power of the devils and I questioned him and said who art thou the demon replied I am Beelzebub the exarch of the demons and all the demons have their chief seats close to me and I it is who make manifest the apparition of each demon and he promised to bring to me in bonds all the unclean spirits and I again glorified the God of heaven and earth as I do always give thanks to him I then asked of the demon if there were females among them and when he told me that there were I said that I desired to see them so Beelzebul went off at high speed and brought unto me Onos Kelis that had a very pretty shape and the skin of a fair-hued woman and she tossed her head and when she was come I said to her tell me who art thou but she said to me I am called Onos Kelis a spirit which has been made into a body lurking upon the earth there is a golden cave where I lie but I have a place that ever shifts at one time I strangle men with a noose at Another I creep up and prevent them from their true natures but my most frequent dwelling places are the precipices caves and ravines oftentimes however do I consort with men in the semblance of a woman and above all with those of a dark skin for they share my star with me since they it is who privily or openly worship my star without knowing that they harm themselves and but whet my appetite for further mischief for they wish to provide money by means of remembering me but I supply a little too. Those who worship me fairly and I Solomon questioned her about her birth and she replied I was born of a voice untimely the so-called echo of a man's orger dropped in a wood and I said to her under what star dost thou pass and she answered me under the star of the full moon for the reason that the moon travels over most things then I said to her and what angel is it that frustrates thee and she said to me he that in thee is reigning and I thought that she mocked me and bade a 
soldier strike her but she cried aloud and said I am subjected to the O King by the wisdom of God given to thee and by the angel Joel so I commanded her to spin the hemp for the ropes used in the building of the house of God and accordingly when I had sealed and bound her she was so overcome and brought to naught as to stand night and day spinning the hemp and I at once bade another demon to be led unto me and instantly there approached me the demon Asmatus bound and I asked him who art. Thou but he shot on me a glance of anger and rage and said and who art thou and I said to him thus punished as thou art answerest thou me not but he with rage said to me but how shall I answer thee for thou art a son of man whereas I was born of an angel seed by a daughter of man so that no word of our heavenly kind addressed to the earth born can be overweening wherefore also my star is bright in heaven and men call it some the wane and some the dragon's child I keep near unto this. Star so ask me not many things for thy kingdom also after a little time is to be disrupted and thy glory is but for a season and short will be thy tyranny over us and then we shall again have free range over mankind so as that they shall revere us as if we were gods not knowing men that they are the names of the angels set over us and I Solomon on hearing this bound him more carefully and ordered him to be flogged with thongs of ox hide and to tell me humbly what was his name and of his business and he answered me thus I am called Asmodeus among mortals and my business is to plot against the newly wedded so that they may not know one another and I sever them utterly by many calamities and I waste away the beauty of virgin women and estrange their hearts and I said to him is this thy only business and he answered me I transport men into fits of madness and desire when they have wives of their own so that they leave them and go off by night and day to others that belong to other men with the result that they commit sin and fall into murderous deeds and I adjured him by the name of the Lord Sabaoth saying fear God Asmodeus and tell me by what angel thou art frustrated but he said by Raphael the archangel that stands before the throne of God but the liver and gall of a fish put me to flight when smoked over ashes of the tamarisk I again asked him and said hide not aught from me for I am Solomon son of David king of Israel tell me the name of the fish which thou reverest and he answered it is the glanos by name and is found in the rivers of Assyria wherefore it is that I roam about in those parts and I said to him hast thou nothing else about the Asmodeus and he answered the power of God know it which hath bound me with the indissoluble bonds of yonder one seal that whatever I have told thee is true I pray thee King Solomon condemn me not to go into water but I smiled and said to him as the Lord God of my father's liveth I will lay iron on thee to wear but thou shalt also make the clay for the entire construction of the temple treading it down with thy feet and I ordered them to give him ten water jars to carry water in and the demon groaned terribly and did the work I ordered him to do and this I did because that fierce demon Asmodeus knew even the future and I Solomon glorified God who gave wisdom to me Solomon his servant and the liver of the fish and its gall I hung on the spike of a reed and burned it over Asmodeus. Because of his being so strong and his unbearable malice was thus frustrated and I summoned again to stand before me Beelzebul the prince of demons and I sat him down on a raised seat of honor and said to him why art thou alone prince of the demons and he said to me because I alone am left of the angels of heaven that came down for I was first angel in the first heaven being entitled Beelzebul and now I control all those who are bound in Tartarus but I too have a child and he haunts the Red Sea and on any suitable occasion he comes up to me again being subject to me and reveals to me what he has done and when he is ready he will come in triumph I Solomon said unto him Beelzebul what is thy employment and he answered me I destroy kings I bring destruction by means of tyrants and my own demons I send unto men to be worshipped in order that the latter may believe in them and be lost and the chosen servants of God priests and faithful men I excite unto desires for wicked sins and evil heresies and lawless deeds and they obey me and I bear them on to destruction and I inspire men with envy and desire for murder and for wars and sodomy and other evil things I bring about jealousies and murders in a country and I instigate wars I will destroy the world so I said to him bring to me thy child who is as thou sayest in the Red Sea but he said to me I will not bring him to thee but there shall come to me another demon called Ephippus him will I bind and he will bring him up from the deep unto me and I said to him how comes thy son to be in the depth of the sea and what is his name and he answered me ask me not for thou canst not learn from me however he will come to thee by any command and will tell thee openly so I said to him tell me in which star you reside to which he answered the one called by men the evening star I said to him tell me by what angel thou art frustrated and he answered by the holy and precious name of the almighty God called by the Hebrews by a row of numbers of which the sum is and among the Greeks it is Emmanuel and if one of the Romans adjure me by the great name of the power elite I disappear at once I Solomon was astounded when I heard this and I ordered him to saw up Theban marbles and when he began to saw the marbles the other demons cried out with a loud voice howling because of their king Beelzebul was also subject to the power the most high had given me over him but I Solomon questioned him saying if thou wouldst gain a respite discourse to me about the things in heaven and Beelzebul said here O king if thou burn gum and incense and bulb of the sea with nard and saffron and light seven lamps in an earthquake thou wilt firmly fix thy house and if being pure thou light them at dawn in the sun alight then wilt thou see the heavenly dragons how they wind themselves along and drag the chariot of the sun and I Solomon having heard this rebuked him and said silence for this. 
present time and continue to saw the marbles as I commanded thee and I Solomon praised God and commanded another demon to present himself to me and one came before me who carried his face high up in the air but the rest of the spirit curled away like a snail and it broke through the few soldiers and raised also a terrible dust on the ground and carried it upwards and then again hurled it back to frighten us and asked what questions I could ask as a rule and I stood up and spat on the ground in that spot and sealed the demon with the ring of God and forthwith the dust wind stopped then I asked him saying who art thou O wind then he once more shook up a dust and answered me what wouldst thou have King Solomon I answered him tell me what thou art called and I would fain ask thee a question but so far I give thanks to God who has made me wise to answer your evil plots but the demon answered me I am the spirit of the ashes Tephras and I said to him what is thy pursuit and he said I bring darkness on men and set fire to fields and I bring homesteads to naught but most busy am I in summer however when I get an opportunity I creep into corners of the wall by night and day for I am offspring of the great one and nothing less accordingly I said to him under what star dost thou lie and he answered in the very tip of the moon's horn when it is found in the south there is my star for I have been bidden to restrain the convulsions of the hemi tertian fever and this is why many men pray to the Hemi Tertian fever using these three names Boltalith Alal Melchal and I heal them and I said to him I am Solomon when therefore thou wouldst do harm by whose aid dost thou do it but he said to me by the angels by whom also the third day's fever is lulled to rest so I questioned him and said and by what name and he answered that of the archangel Azale and I summoned the archangel Azale and set a seal on the demon and commanded him to seize great stones and toss them up to the workmen on the higher parts of the temple and being compelled the demon began to do what he was bidden to do and I glorified God afresh who gave me this authority and ordered another demon to come before me and there came seven spirits females bound and woven together fair in appearance and comely and I Solomon seeing them questioned them and said who are ye but they with one accord said with one voice we are of the thirty-three elements of the cosmic ruler of the darkness. And the first said I am deception, the second said I am strife, the third I am clithid which is battle, the fourth I am jealousy, the fifth I am power, the sixth I am error, the seventh I am the worst of all and our stars are in heaven, seven stars humble in sheen and all together and we are called as it were goddesses we change our place all and together and together we live sometimes in Lydia sometimes in Olympus sometimes in a great mountain so I Solomon questioned them one by one. Beginning with the first and going down to the seventh the first said I am deception I deceive and weave snares here and there I wet and excite heresies but I have an angel who frustrates me Lamechalal likewise also the second said I am strife strife of strifes I bring timbers stones hangers my weapons on the spot but I have an angel who frustrates me Baruchi Ashal likewise also the third said I am called Clithid which is battle and I cause the well behaved to scatter and fall foul one. Of the other and why do I say so much I have an angel that frustrates me Marmaroth likewise also the fourth said I cause men to forget their sobriety and moderation I part them and split them into parties for strife follows me hand in hand I rend a husband from the sharer of his bed and children from parents and brothers from sisters but why tell so much to my despite I have an angel that frustrates me the great Balthiel likewise also the fifth said I am power by power I raise up. Tyrants and tear down kings to all rebels I furnish power I have an angel that frustrates me Asterioth likewise also the sixth said I am error O King Solomon and I will make thee to err as I have before made thee to err when I caused thee to slay thy own brother I will lead you into error so as to pry into graves and I teach them that dig and I lead errant souls away from all piety and many other evil traits are mine but I have an angel that frustrates me Uriel likewise also the seventh said I am the worst and I make thee worse off than thou wast because I will impose the bonds of Artemis but the locust will set me free for by means thereof is it fated that thou shalt achieve my desire for if one were wise he would not turn his steps toward me so I Solomon having heard and wondered sealed them with my ring and since they were so considerable I bade them dig the foundations of the temple of God for the length of it was cubits and I bade them be industrious and with one murmur of joint protest they began to perform the tasks enjoined but I Solomon glorified the Lord and bade another demon come before me and there was brought to me a demon having all the limbs of a man but without a head and I seeing him said to him tell me who art thou and he answered I am a demon so I said to him which and he answered me I am called envy for I delight to devour heads being desirous to secure for myself a head but I do not eat enough but am anxious to have such a head. As thou hast I Solomon on hearing this sealed him stretching out my hand against his chest whereon the demon leapt up and threw himself down and gave a groan saying woe is me where am I come to O traitor or as I cannot see so I said to him I am Solomon tell me then how thou dost manage to see and he answered me by means of my feelings I then Solomon having heard his voice come up to me asked him how he managed to speak and he answered me I O king Solomon am holy voice for I have inherited the voices of many men for in the case of all men who are called dumb I it is who smashed their heads when they were children and had reached their eighth day then when a child is crying in the night I become a spirit and glide by means of his voice in the crossways also I have many services to render and my encounter is fraught with harm for I grasp in all instance a man's head and with my hands as with a sword I cut it off and put it onto myself and in this way by means of the fire 
which is in me through my neck it is swallowed up I it is that sends grave mutilations and incurables on men's feet and inflicts sores and I Solomon on hearing this said to him tell me how thou dost discharge forth the fire out of what sources dost thou emit it and the spirit said to me from the day star for here hath not yet been found that Elberian to whom men offer prayers and kindle lights and his name is invoked by the seven demons before me and he cherishes them but I said to him tell me his name but he answered I cannot tell thee for if I tell his name I render myself incurable but he will come in response to his name and on hearing this I Solomon said to him tell me then by what angel thou art frustrated and he answered by the fiery flash of lightning and I bowed myself before the Lord God of Israel and bade him remain in the keeping of Beelzebul until the angel Ix should come then I ordered another demon to come before me and there came into my presence a hound having a very large shape and it spoke with a loud voice and said hail lord king solomon and i solomon was astounded i said to it who art thou o hound and it answered i do indeed seem to thee to be a hound but before thou wast o king solomon i was a man that wrought many unholy deeds on earth i was surpassingly learned in letters and was so mighty that i could hold the stars of heaven back and many divine works did i prepare for i do harm to men who follow after our star and change them too and I seize the frenzied men by the larynx and so destroy them and I Solomon said to him what is thy name and he answered staff rabdos and I said to him what is thine employment and what results canst thou achieve and he replied give me thy servant and I will lead him away into a mountainous spot and will show him a green stone tossed to and fro with which thou mayest adorn the temple of the Lord God and I Solomon on hearing this ordered my servant to set off with him and to Take the finger ring bearing the seal of God with him and I said to him whoever shall show thee the green stone seal him with this finger ring and mark the spot with care and bring me the demon hither and the demon showed him the green stone and he sealed it and brought the demon to me and I Solomon decided to confine with my seal on my right hand the two the headless demon likewise the hound that was so huge he should be bound as well and I bade the hound keep safe the fiery spirit so that Lamps as it were might by day and night cast their light through its maw on the artisans at work and I Solomon took from the mine of that stone shekels for the supports of the table of incense which was similar in appearance and I Solomon glorified the Lord God and then closed round the treasure of that stone and I ordered afresh the demons to cut marble for the construction of the house of God and I Solomon prayed to the Lord and asked the hound saying by what angel art thou frustrated and the demon replied by the great bruise and I praised the Lord God of heaven and earth and bade another demon come forward to me and there came before me one in the form of a roaring lion and he stood and answered me saying O king in the form which I have I am a spirit quite incapable of being perceived upon all men who lie prostrate with sickness I leap coming stealthily along and I render the man weak so that his habit of body is enfeebled but I have also another glory O king I cast out demons and I have legions under my control and I am capable of being received in my dwelling places along with all the demons belonging to the legions under me but I Solomon on hearing this asked him what is thy name but he answered lion bearer wrath in kind and I said to him how art thou to be frustrated along with thy legions what angel is it that frustrates thee and he answered if I tell thee the name I bind not myself alone but also the legions of demons under me so I said to him I adjure thee in the name of the god Sabaoth to tell me by what name thou art frustrated along with thy host and the spirit answered me the son of man who is to suffer many things at the hands of men whose name is the figure which is Emmanuel he it is who has bound us and who will then come and plunge us from the steep underwater he is noised abroad in the three letters which bring him down and I Solomon on hearing this glorified God and condemned his legion to carry wood from the thicket and I condemned the lion shaped one himself to saw up the wood small with his teeth for burning in the unquenchable furnace for the temple of God and I worshipped the Lord God of Israel and bade another demon come forward and there came before me a dragon three headed of fearful hue and I questioned him who art thou and he answered me I am a caltrop like spirit whose activity in three lies but I blind children in women's wombs and twirl their ears round and I make them deaf and mute and I have again in my third head means of slipping into the body and I smite men in the limbless part of the body and cause them to fall down and foam and grind their teeth but I have my own way of being frustrated Jerusalem being signified in writing unto the place called of the head for there is fore appointed the angel of the great council and now he will openly dwell on the cross he doth frustrate me and to him am I subject but in the place where thou sittest O King Solomon standeth a column in the air of purple the demon called Ephippus hath brought it up from the Red Sea from inner Arabia he it is that shall be shut up in a skin bottle and brought before thee but at the entrance of the temple which thou hast begun to build O King Solomon lies stored much gold which dig thou up and carry off and I Solomon sent my servant and found it to be as the demon told me and I sealed him with my ring and praised the Lord God so I said to him what art thou called and the demon said I am the crest of dragons and I bade him make bricks in the temple he had human hands and I adored the Lord God of Israel and bade another demon present himself and there came before me a spirit in woman's form that had a head without any limbs and her hair was disheveled and I said to her who art thou but she answered nay who art thou and why dost thou want to hear concerning me but as thou wouldst learn here I stand bound before thy face go then into thy royal storehouses and wash 
Thy hands then sit down afresh before thy tribunal and ask me questions and thou shalt learn O king who I am and I Solomon did as she enjoined me and restrained myself because of the wisdom dwelling in me in order that I might hear of her deeds and reprehend them and manifest them to men and I sat down and said to the demon what art thou and she said I am called among men O Bizeth this is Lilith self-identifying by one of her many names and by night I sleep not but go my rounds over all the world and visit women in childbirth and divining the hour I take my stand and if I am lucky I strangle the child but if not I retire to another place for I cannot for a single night retire unsuccessful for I am a fierce spirit of myriad names and many shapes and now hither now thither I roam and to westering parts I go my rounds but as it now is though thou hast sealed me round with the ring of God thou hast done nothing I am not standing before thee and thou wilt not be able to command me for I have no work other than the destruction of children and the making their ears to be deaf and the working of evil to their eyes and the binding their mouths with a bond and the ruin of their minds and paining of their bodies when I Solomon heard this I marveled at her appearance for I beheld all her body to be in darkness but her glance was altogether bright and greeny and her hair was tossed wildly like a dragon's and the whole of her limbs were invisible and her voice was very clear as it came to me and I cunningly said tell me by what angel thou art frustrated O evil spirit by she answered me by the angel of God called Aphero which is interpreted Raphael by whom I am frustrated now and for all time his name if any man know it and write the same on a woman in childbirth then I shall not be able to enter her of this name the number is and I Solomon having heard this and having glorified the Lord ordered her hair to be bound and that she should be hung up in front of the temple of God that all the children of Israel as they passed might see it and glorify the Lord God of Israel who had given me this authority with wisdom and power from God by means of the signet and I again ordered another demon to come before me and it came rolling itself along one in appearance like to a dragon but having the face and hands of a man and all its limbs except the feet were those of a dragon and it had wings on its back and when I beheld it I was astonished and said who art thou demon and what art thou called and whence hast thou come tell me and the spirit answered and said this is the first time I have stood before thee O King Solomon I am a spirit made into a god among men but now brought to naught by the ring and wisdom given to thee by God now I am the so called winged dragon and I chamber not with many women but only with a few that are of fair shape which possess the name of Tuxalu of the star and I pair with them in the guise of a spirit winged in form copulating with them and she on whom I have left goes heavy with child and that which is born of her becomes filled with lust but since such offspring cannot be carried by men the woman in question breaks wind such is my role suppose then only that I am satisfied and all the other demons molested and disturbed by thee will speak the whole truth but those composed of fire will cause to be burned up by fire the material of the logs which is to be collected by them for the building in the temple and as the demon said this I saw the spirit going forth from his mouth and it consumed the wood of the frankincense tree and burned up all the logs which we had placed in the temple of God and I Solomon saw what the spirit had done and I marveled and having glorified God I asked the dragon shaped demon and said tell me by what angel art thou frustrated and he answered by the great angel which has its seat in the second heaven which is called in Hebrew Bezazeth and I Solomon having heard this and having invoked his angel condemned him to saw up marbles for the building of the temple of God and I praised God and commanded another demon to come before me and there came before my face another spirit as it were a woman in the form she had but on her shoulders she had two other heads with hands and I asked her and said tell me who art thou and she said to me I am Enipsigus who also have a myriad names and I said her by what angel art thou frustrated but she said to me what seekest what askest thou I undergo changes like the goddess I am called and I change again and pass into possession of another shape and be not desirous therefore to know all that concerns me but since thou art before me for this much hearken I have my abode in the moon and for that reason I possess three forms at times I am magically invoked by the wise as Cronus at other times in connection with those who bring me down I come down and appear in another shape the measure of the element is inexplicable and indefinable and not to be frustrated I then changing into these three forms come down and become such as thou seest me but I am frustrated by the angel Rathanael who sits in the third heaven this then is why I speak to the yonder temple cannot contain me I therefore Solomon prayed to my God and I invoked the angel of whom Enipsigus spoke to me and used my seal and I sealed her with a triple chain and placed beneath her the fastening of the chain I used the seal of God and the spirit prophesied to me saying this is what thou king Solomon doest to us but after a time thy kingdom shall be broken and again in season this temple shall be driven asunder and all Jerusalem shall be undone by the king of the Persians and Medes and Chaldeans and the vessels of this temple which thou makest shall be put to servile uses of the gods and along with them all the jars in which thou dost shut us up shall be broken by the hands of men and then we shall go forth in great power hither and thither and be disseminated all over the world and we shall lead astray the inhabited world for a long season until the Son of God is stretched upon the cross for never before doth arise a king like unto him one frustrating us all whose mother shall not have contact with man who else can receive such authority over spirits except he whom the first devil will seek to tempt but will not prevail over the number of his name is which is Emmanuel wherefore O King Solomon thy time is evil.
and thy years short and evil and to thy servant shall thy kingdom be given and I Solomon having heard this glorified God and though I marveled at the prophecy of the demon I did not credit it until it came true and I did not believe their words but when they were realized then I understood and at my death I wrote this testament to the children of Israel and gave it to them so that they might know the powers of the demons and their shapes and the names of their angels by which these angels are frustrated and I glorified the Lord God of Israel and commanded the spirits to be bound with bonds indissoluble and having praised God I commanded another spirit to come before me and there came before my face another demon having in front the shape of a horse but the behind of a fish and he had a mighty voice and said to me O King Solomon I am a fierce spirit of the sea and I am greedy of gold and silver I am such a spirit as rounds itself and comes over the expanses of the water of the See and I trip up the men who sail thereon for I round myself into a wave and transform myself and then throw myself on ships and come right in on them and that is my business and my way of getting hold of money and men for I take the men and whirl them round with myself and hurl the men out of the sea for I am not covetous of men's bodies but cast them up out of the sea so far but since Beelzebul ruler of the spirits of air and of those under the earth and lord of earthly ones hath a joint kingship with us in respect of the deeds of each one of us therefore I went up from the sea to get a certain outlook in his company but I also have another character and role I metamorphose myself into waves and come up from the sea and I show myself to men so that those on earth call me Sinus Pastin because I assume the human form and my name is a true one for by my passage up into men I send forth a certain nausea I came then to take counsel with the prince Beelzebul and he bound me and delivered me into thy hands and I am here before thee because of the seal and thou dost now torment me behold now in two or three days the spirit that converseth with thee will fail because I shall have no water and I said to him tell me by what angel thou art frustrated and he answered by I ameth and I glorified God I commanded the spirit to be thrown into a phial along with ten jugs of sea water of two measures each and I sealed them round above the marbles and asphalt and pitch in the mouth of the vessel and having sealed it with my ring I ordered it to be deposited in the temple of God and I ordered another spirit to come before me and there came before my face another enslaved spirit having obscurely the form of a man with gleaming eyes and bearing in his hand a blade and I asked who art thou but he answered I am a lascivious spirit engendered of a giant man who died in the massacre in the time of the giants I said to him tell me what thou art employed upon earth and where thou hast thy dwelling and he said my dwelling is in fruitful places but my procedure is this I seat myself beside the men who pass along among the tombs and in untimely season I assume the form of the dead and if I catch anyone I at once destroy him with my sword but if I cannot destroy him I cause him to be possessed with a demon and to devour his own flesh and the hair to fall off his chin but I said to him do thou then be in fear of the God of heaven and of earth and tell me by what angel thou art frustrated and he answered he destroys me who is to become savior a man whose number if any one shall write it on his forehead he will defeat me and in fear I shall quickly retreat and indeed if any one write the sign on him I shall be in fear and I Solomon on hearing this and having glorified the Lord God shut up this demon like the rest and I commanded another demon to come before me and there came before my face thirty six spirits their heads shapeless like dogs but in themselves they were human in form with faces of asses faces of oxen and faces of birds and I Solomon on hearing and seeing them wondered and I asked them and said who are you but they of one accord with one voice said we are the 36 elements the world rulers of this darkness f but O King Solomon thou wilt not wrong us nor imprison us nor lay command on us but since the Lord God has given the authority over every spirit in the air and on the earth and under the earth therefore do we also present ourselves before thee like the other spirits from ram and bull from both twin and crab lion and virgin scales and scorpion archer goat horned water pourer and fish then I Solomon invoked the name of the Lord Sabaoth and questioned each in turn as to what was its character and I bade each one come forward and tell of its actions then the first one came forward and said I am the first decan of the zodiacal circle and I am called the ram and with me are these two so I put to them the question who are ye called the first said I O Lord am called Ruix and I cause the heads of men to be idle and I pillage their brows but let me only hear the words Michael imprison Ruix and at once I retreat and the second said I am called Barsaphael and I cause those who are subject to my hour to feel the pain of migraine if only I hear the words Gabriel imprison Barsaphael at once I retreat the third said I am called Eratosael I do harm to eyes and grievously injure them only let me hear the words Uriel imprison Aratasael and at once I retreat the fifth said I am called Iudal and I bring about a block in the ears and deafness of hearing if I hear Uruel Iudal I at once retreat the sixth said I am called Svendanael I cause tumors of the parotid gland and inflammations of the tonsils and tetanic recurvation if I hear Sabriel imprison Svendanael at once I retreat and the seventh said I am called Svander and I weaken the strength of the shoulders and cause them to tremble and I paralyze the nerves of the hands and I break and bruise the bones of the neck and I, I suck out the marrow but if I hear the words a real imprison Sphander I at once retreat and the eighth said I am called Belbel -Bel, I distort the hearts and minds of men if I hear the words a real imprison Belbel -Bel, I at once retreat and the ninth said I am called curtail I send colics in the bowels I induce pains if I hear the words Ieth imprison curtail I at once retreat.
The tenth said I am called Metathiax I cause the rains to ache if I hear the words and a nail imprison Metathiax I at once retreat the eleventh said I am called Katana Kotail I create strife and wrongs in men's homes and send on them hard tempers if anyone would be at peace in his home let him write on seven leaves of laurel the name of the angel that frustrates me along with these names Ieieo sons of Sabaoth in the name of the great god let him shut up Katana Kotail then let him wash the Laurel leaves in water and sprinkle his house with the water from within to the outside and at once I retreat the twelfth said I am called Sephotheril and I inspire partisanship in men and delight in causing them to stumble if anyone will write on paper these names of angels Iako Ielo Io let Sabaoth Ithoth Bay and having folded it up wear it round his neck or against his ear I at once retreat and dissipate the drunken fit the thirteenth said I am called Bobble and I cause nervous Illness by my assaults if I hear the name of the great Adonail imprison both of L I at once retreat the fourteenth said I am called Cumetal and I inflict shivering fits and torpor if only I hear the words Zoro L imprison Cumentail I at once retreat the fifteenth said I am called Rolled I cause cold and frost and pain in the stomach let me only hear the words I expide not be not warmed for Solomon is fairer than eleven fathers I at once retreat the sixteenth said I am called. Attracts I inflict upon men fevers irremediable and harmful if you would imprison me chop up coriander and smear it on the lips reciting the following charm the fever which is from dirt I exorcise thee by the throne of the most high god retreat from dirt and retreat from the creature fashioned by god and at once I retreat the seventeenth said I am called Europile on the stomach of men I sit and cause convulsions in the bath and in the road and wherever I be found or find a man I throw him. Down but if anyone will say to the afflicted into their ear these names three times over into the right ear I utterize Sabun to know I at once retreat the eighteenth said I am called Baldumic I separate wife from husband and bring about a grudge between them if anyone write down the names of thy sire Solomon on paper and place it in the antechamber of his house I retreat thence and the legend written shall be as follows the God of Abram and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob commands. The retire from this house in peace and I at once retire the nineteenth said I am called Naoth and I take my seat on the knees of men if any one write on paper Fnano be all depart Naoth and touch thou not the neck I at once retreat the twentieth said I am called Marduro I send on men incurable fever if any one write on the leaf of a book Sphener Raphael retire drag me not about flame me not and tie it round his neck I at once retreat the twenty-first said I am called Aleth and I cause coughing and hard breathing in children if any one write on paper Rorex do thou pursue Aleth and fasten it round his neck I at once retire the twenty-third said I am called Nephthada I cause the rains to ache and I bring about the Shuri if any one write on a plate of tin the words I athoth Uruel Nephthada and fasten it round the loins I at once retreat the twenty-fourth said I am called Acton I cause ribs and lumbar muscles to ache if one engrave on copper material taken from a ship which has missed its anchorage this Marmareth Sabaoth pursue Acton and fasten it round the loin I at once retreat the twenty-fifth said I am called in a treth and I rend burnings and fevers into the entrails but if I hear Arara Carrera instantly do I retreat the twenty-sixth said I am called Enanath I steal away men's minds and change their hearts and make a man toothless if one write Alazul pursue Enanath and tie the paper round him I at once retreat the twenty-seventh said I am called Feth I make men consumptive and cause hemorrhagia if one exorcise me in wine sweet smelling and unmixed by the eleventh eon and say I exorcise thee by the eleventh eon to stop I demand Feth axi off it then give it to the patient to drink I at once retreat the twenty-eighth said I am called Harpax and I send sleeplessness on men if one write Cochfnidismos and bind it round the temples I at once retire the twenty-ninth said I am called Anoster I engender uterine mania and pains in the bladder if one powder into pure oil three seeds of laurel and smear it on saying I exorcise the anoster stop by marmarau at once I retreat the thirtieth said I am called alaborath if in eating fish one has swallowed a bone then he must take a bone from the fish and cough and at once I retreat the thirty-first said I am called hephasimirth and cause lingering disease if you throw salt rubbed in the hand into oil and smear it on the patient saying seraphim cherubim help me I at once retire the thirty-second said I am called Ichthion I paralyze muscles and contuse them if I hear it and at help I at once retire the thirty-third said I am called Actionian I lie among swaddling clothes and in the precipice and if anyone write on fig leaves Lycurgos taking away one letter at a time and write it reversing the letters I retire at once Lycurgos Ikurgos Kurgos Yergios goes OS the thirty-fourth said I am called Auto Thith I cause grudges and fighting. Therefore I am frustrated by Alpha and Omega if written down the 35th said I am called Thinneth I cast evil eyes on every man therefore the drawing of the eye causes me much suffering it frustrates me the 36th said I am called by an Akith I have a grudge against the body I lay waste to houses I cause flesh to decay and all else that is similar if a man write on the front door of his house Melto Ardu Anoth I flee from that place and I Solomon when I heard this glorified.
the God of heaven and earth and I commanded them to fetch water in the temple of God and I furthermore prayed to the Lord God to cause the demons without that hamper humanity to be bound and made to approach the temple of God some of these demons I condemned to do the heavy work of the construction of the temple of God others I shut up in prisons others I ordered to wrestle with fire in the making of gold and silver sitting down by lead and spoon and to make ready places for the other demons in which they should be confined and I Solomon had much quiet in all the earth and spent my life in profound peace honored by all men and by all under heaven and I built the entire temple of the Lord God and my kingdom was prosperous and my army was with me and for the rest the city of Jerusalem had repose rejoicing and delighted and all the kings of the earth came to me from the ends of the earth to behold the temple which I built unto the Lord God and having heard of the wisdom given to me they paid homage to me in the temple bringing gold and silver and precious stones many and diverse and bronze and iron and lead and cedar logs and woods that decay not they brought me for the equipment of the temple of God and among them also the queen of the south being a witch came in great concern and bowed low before me to the earth and having heard my wisdom she glorified the God of Israel and she made formal trial of all my wisdom of all disciplines in which I instructed her according to the Wisdom imparted to me and all the sons of Israel glorified God and behold in those days one of the workmen of ripe old age threw himself down before me and said King Solomon pity me because I am old so I bade him stand up and said tell me old man all you will and he answered I beseech you king I have an only born son and he insults and beats me openly and plucks out the hair of my head and threatens me with a painful death therefore I beseech you avenge me and I Solomon on hearing this felt compunction as I looked at his old age and I bade the child be brought to me and when he was brought I questioned him whether it were true and the youth said I was not so filled with madness as to strike my father with my hand be kind to me O king for I have not dared to commit such impiety poor wretch that I am but I Solomon on hearing this from the youth exhorted the old man to reflect on the matter and accept his son's apology however he would not but said he would rather let him die. And as the old man would not yield I was about to pronounce sentence on the youth when I saw Ornias the demon laughing I was very angry at the demons laughing in my presence and I ordered my men to remove the other parties and bring forward Ornias before my tribunal and when he was brought before me I said to him accursed one why didst thou look at me and laugh and the demon answered prithee king it was not because of thee I laughed but because of this ill-starred old man and the wretched youth his son for after three days his son will die untimely and lo the old man desires to foully make away with him but I Solomon having heard this said to the demon is that true that thou speakest and he answered it is true O king and I on hearing that bade them remove the demon and that they should again bring before me the old man with his son I bade them make friends with one another again and I supplied them with food and then I told the old man after three days to bring his son again to me here and said I I will attend to him and they saluted me and went their way and when they were gone I ordered Ornias to be brought forward and said to him tell me how you know this and he answered we demons ascend into the firmament of heaven and fly about among the stars and we hear the sentences which go forth upon the souls of men and forthwith we come and whether by force of influence or by fire or by sword or by some accident we veil our act of destruction and if a man does not die by some untimely disaster or by violence then we demons transform ourselves in such a way as to appear to men and be worshipped in our human nature I therefore having heard this glorified the Lord God and again I questioned the demon saying tell me how ye can ascend into heaven being demons and amidst the stars and holy angels intermingle and he answered just as things are fulfilled in heaven so also on earth they are fulfilled the types of all of them for there are principalities authorities world rulers and we demons fly about in the air and we hear the voices of the heavenly beings and survey all the powers and as having no ground basis on which to alight and rest we lose strength and fall off like leaves from trees and men seeing us imagine that the stars are falling from heaven but it is not really so O king but we fall because of our weakness and because we have nowhere anything to lay hold of and so we fall down like lightnings in the depth of night and suddenly and we set cities in flames and fire the fields for the stars have firm foundations in the heavens like the sun and the moon and I Solomon having heard this ordered the demon to be guarded for five days and after the five days I recalled the old man and was about to question him but he came to me in grief and with black face and I said to him tell me old man where is thy son and what means this garb and he answered lo I am become childless and sit by my son's grave in despair. For it is already two days that he is dead but I Solomon on hearing that and knowing that the demon Ornias had told me the truth glorified the God of Israel and the Queen of the South saw all this and marveled by glorifying the God of Israel and she beheld the temple of the Lord being built and she gave a shekel of gold and one hundred myriads of silver and choice bronze and she went into the temple and she beheld the altar of incense and the brazen supports of this altar and the gems of the lamps flashing forth of different colors and of the lampstand of stone and of emerald and hyacinth and sapphire and she beheld the vessels of gold and silver and bronze and wood and the folds of skins dyed red with matter and she saw the bases of the pillars of the temple of the Lord all were of one gold manuscript too badly damaged to read apart from the demons whom I condemned to labor thereon and there was peace in the circle of my kingdom and over all the earth and it came to pass which I 
was in my kingdom the king of the Arabians Adares sent me a letter and the writing of the letter was written as follows to King Solomon All hail lo we have heard and it hath been heard unto all the ends of the earth concerning the wisdom entrusted in thee and that thou art a man merciful from the Lord and understanding hath been granted thee over all the spirits of the air and on earth and under the earth now for as much as there is present in the land of Arabia a spirit of the following kind at Early dawn there begins to blow a certain wind until the third hour and its blast is harsh and terrible and it slays man and beast and no spirit can live upon earth against this demon I pray thee then for as much as the spirit is a wind contrive something according to the wisdom given in thee by the Lord thy God and deign to send a man able to capture it and behold King Solomon I and my people and all my land will serve thee unto death and all Arabia shall be at peace with thee if thou wilt. Perform this act of righteousness for us wherefore we pray thee condemn not our humble prayer and suffer not to be utterly brought to naught the eparchy subordinated to thy authority because we are suppliants both I and my people and all my land farewell to my lord all health and I Solomon read this epistle and I folded it up and gave it to my people and said to them after seven days shalt thou remind me of this epistle and Jerusalem was built and the temple was being completed and there was. A stone the end stone of the corner lying there great chosen out one which I desired lay in the head of the corner of the completion of the temple and all the workmen and all the demons helping them came to the same place to bring up the stone and lay it on the pinnacle of the holy temple and were not strong enough to stir it and lay it upon the corner allotted to it for that stone was exceedingly great and useful for the corner of the temple and after seven days being reminded of the epistle. Of Adares king of Arabia I called my servant and said to him order thy camel and take for thyself a leather flask and take also the seal and go away into Arabia to the place in which the evil spirit blows and there take the flask and the signet ring in front of the mouth of the flask and hold them together towards the blast of the spirit and when the flask is blown out thou wilt understand that the demon is in it then hastily tie up the mouth of the flask and seal it securely with thee. Seal ring and lay it carefully on the camel and bring it me hither and if on the way it offer thee gold or silver or treasure in return for letting it go see that thou be not persuaded but arrange without using oath to release it and then if it point out to the places where are gold or silver mark the places and seal them with the seal and bring the demon to me and now depart and fare thee well then the youth did as was bidden him and he ordered his camel and laid on it a flask and set off into Arabia and the men of that region would not believe that he would be able to catch the evil spirit and when it was done the servant stood before the spirit's blast and laid the flask on the ground and the finger ring on the mouth of the flask and the demon blew through the middle of the finger ring into the mouth of the flask and going in blew out the flask but the man promptly stood up to it and drew tight with his hand the mouth of the flask in the name of the Lord God of Sabaoth and the demon remained within the flask and after that the youth remained in that land three days to make trial and the spirit no longer blew against that city and all the Arabs knew that he had safely shut in the spirit then the youth fastened the flask on the camel and the Arabs sent him forth on his way with much honor and precious gifts praising and magnifying the God of Israel but the youth brought in the bag and laid it in the middle of the temple and on the next day I King Solomon went into the temple of God and sat in deep distress about the stone of the end of the corner and when I entered the temple the flask stood up and walked around some seven steps and then fell on its mouth and paid homage to me and I marveled that even along with the bottle the demon still had power and could walk about and I commanded it to stand up and the flask stood up and stood on its feet all blown out and I questioned him saying tell me who art thou and the spirit within said I am the demon called Ephippus that is in Arabia and I said to him is this thy name and he answered yes wheresoever I will I alight and set fire and do to death and I said to him by what angel art thou frustrated and he answered by the only ruling God that hath authority over me even to be heard he that is to be born of a virgin and crucified by the Jews on a cross whom the angels and archangels worship he doth frustrate me and enfeeble me of my great strength which has been given me by my father Satan and I said to him what canst thou do and he answered I am able to remove mountains to overthrow the oaths of kings I wither trees and make their leaves fall off and I said to him canst thou raise this stone and lay it for the beginning of this corner which exists in the fair plan of the temple and he said not only raise this O king but also with the help of the demon who presides over the Red Sea I will bring up the pillar of air and will stand it where thou wilt in Jerusalem saying this. I laid stress on him and the flask became as if depleted of air and I placed it under the stone and the spirit girded himself up and lifted it up top of the flask and the flask went up the steps carrying the stone and laid it down at the end of the entrance of the temple and I Solomon beholding the stone raised aloft and placed on a foundation said truly the scripture is fulfilled which says the stone which the builders rejected on trial that same is become the head of the corner for this it is not mine to grant but God's that the demon should be strong enough to lift up so great a stone and deposit it in the place I wished and Ephippus led the demon of the Red Sea with the column and they both took the column and raised it aloft from the earth and I outwitted these two spirits so that they could not shake the entire earth in a moment of time and then I sealed round with my signet ring on this side and that and said watch and the spirits have remained upholding it until this.
Day for proof of the wisdom entrusted unto me and there the pillar was hanging of enormous size in mid-air supported by the winds and thus the spirits appeared underneath like air supporting it and if one looks fixedly the pillar is a little oblique being supported by the spirits and it is so today and I Solomon questioned the other spirit which came up with the pillar from the depth of the Red Sea and I said to him who art thou and what calls thee and what is thy business for I hear many things about thee and the demon answered I O King Solomon am called Abazithabad I am a descendant of the archangel once as I sat in the first heaven of which the name is Ameliouth I then am a fierce spirit and winged and with a single wing plotting against every spirit under heaven I was present when Moses went in before Pharaoh king of Egypt and I hardened his heart I am he whom Ions and I am Braze invoked homing with Moses in Egypt I am he who fought against Moses with wonders with signs. I said therefore to him how wast thou found in the Red Sea and he answered in the exodus of the sons of Israel I hardened the heart of Pharaoh and I excited his heart and that of his ministers and I caused them to pursue after the children of Israel and Pharaoh followed with me and all the Egyptians then I was present there and we followed together and we all came up upon the Red Sea and it came to pass when the children of Israel had crossed over the water returned and crushed all the host of the Egyptians and all their might and I remained in the sea being kept under this pillar but when Ephippus came being sent by thee shut up in the vessel of a flask he fetched me up to thee I therefore Solomon having heard this glorified God and adjured the demons not to disobey me but to remain supporting the pillar and they both swore an oath saying as the Lord thy God liveth we will not let go this pillar until the world's end but on whatever day the stone fall then shall be the beginning of the end of the world and I Solomon glorified God and adorned the temple of the Lord with all fair seeming and I was glad in spirit in my kingdom and there was peace in my days and I took wives of my own from every land who were numberless and I marched against the Jebuseans and there I saw a Jebusean daughter of a man and fell violently in love with her and desired to take her to wife along with my other wives and I said to their priests give me the Sonmanites i.e. Shunammite too. Wife Song of Solomon But the priests of Moloch said to me If thou lovest this maiden go in and worship our gods the great god Raphan and the god called Moloch I therefore was in fear of the glory of God and did not follow to worship and I said to them I will not worship a demon what is this proposal that ye compel me to do so much but they said it is to be done according to our fathers and when I answered that I would on no account worship demons they told the maiden not to sleep with me until I complied and sacrificed to their gods I then was moved but crafty arrows brought and laid by her for me five grash hoppers saying take these grash hoppers and crush them together in the name of the god Moloch and then will I sleep with you and this I did and at once the spirit of God departed from me and I became weak as well as foolish in my words and after that I was obliged by her to build a temple of idols to Baal and to Rapha and to Moloch and to the other demons I then wretch that I am followed her advice and the glory of God departed from me and my spirit was darkened and I became the sport of idols and demons wherefore I wrote out this testament that ye who get possession of it may pity and attend to the last things and not to the first so that ye may find grace forever and ever amen closing statements slash analysis the testament of Solomon is important for several reasons primarily because it deals with the spirits of the fallen giants you see since the giants were Born of the fallen angels through women their spirits were different to that of men they unlike mankind doesn't go to the grave in rest awaiting a resurrection and judgment they can roam the earth as they wish or until they are imprisoned by God in this testament did Solomon encounter the spirits of the giants which further amplifies the existence of their fallen nature that even after the death of the giants they still live through other bodies and forms with a clear hatred of mankind as was demonstrated during their fleshly lives so too do they continue carrying out their vengeance upon mankind after their fleshly bodies expired not being confined to flesh but able to inhabit flesh and any form of matter, became their existence after their deaths disembodied spirits they would become as you've read Solomon summoned them to come before him after Solomon's death despite his very noble attempt to seal up the vessels containing the demon spirits of the giants did a group of nine. Knights find them the Knights of the Templar or Knights of the Temple Mount they named themselves this because they excavated Solomon's temple for nearly a decade before they finally found what they were looking for Solomon's ring and the vessels he had sealed up the demons in after the Knights had returned to Europe with their finds did the Catholic Church honor them and give them riches beyond belief they invented the modern day checking system and began bankrolling anyone they could they blackmailed several lords with threats of demonic activity and even sometimes delivered on their promises this of course didn't go unnoticed and eventually the Catholic Church had them burned at the stake for consorting with the devil many of them died on Friday the th but not all of them were slaughtered the ones who escaped would later form Freemasonry and the Illuminati and so the book goes you may be through with the past but the past isn't through with you external references to Enoch Genesis and Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch Genesis and unto Enoch was born Erad and Erad begot Mehujael and Mehujael begot Methusael and Methusael begot Lamech Genesis and Jared lived an hundred sixty and two years and he begot Enoch Genesis and Jared lived after he begot Enoch eight hundred years and begot sons and daughters Genesis and Enoch lived sixty and five years and begot.
Methuselah Genesis and Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters Genesis and all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years Genesis and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him Luke which was the son of Methuselah which was the son of Enoch which was the son of Jared which was the son of Malil which was the son of Kinan Hebrews by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. Because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God Jude and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints compare these verses Hebrews by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God Hebrews but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him Enoch and it came to pass after this that my spirit was translated and it ascended into the heavens I saw the holy sons of God Enoch and he translated my spirit into the heaven of heavens and I saw there as it were a structure built of crystals and between those crystals tongues of living fire book of jubilees jubilees and in the second week of the tenth jubilee of male Lil took unto him a Wife Dinah the daughter of Barakal the daughter of his brother's brother and she bore him a son in the sixth year and he called his name Jared for in his days the angels of the Lord descended on the earth those so named the watchers, this verse seems to foreshadow the life and times of Enoch considering Jared was his earthly father Jubilees and he testified to the watchers who had sinned with the daughters of men for these had begun to unite themselves so as to be defiled with the daughters of men and Enoch testified against them all jubilees and in his life on earth he excelled the children of men save Enoch because of the righteousness wherein he was perfect for Enoch's office was ordained for a testimony to the generations of the world so that he should recount all the deeds of generation unto generation till the day of judgment jubilees and in his seed shall my name be blessed and the name of my fathers Shem and Nob and Enoch and Mahalalel and Enos and Seth and Adam. Jubilees and these shall serve to lay the foundations of the heaven and to strengthen the earth and to renew all the luminaries which are in the firmament Jubilees Jacob my beloved son whom my soul loves may Yahweh bless you from above the firmament and may he give you all the blessings wherewith he blessed Adam and Enoch and Noah and Shem and all the things of which he told me and all the things which he promised to give me may he cause to cleave to you and to your seed forever according to the days of heaven above the earth jubilees and eat its meat on that day and on the second day and let not the sun on the second day go down upon it till it is eaten and let nothing be left over for the third day for it is not acceptable and let it no longer be eaten and all who eat thereof will bring sin upon themselves for thus I have found it written in the books of my forefathers and in the words of Enoch and in the words of Noah jubilees and Simeon and Benjamin and Enoch Reuben's son went forth on the west side of the tower and fifty men with them and they slew of Edom and of the Horites four hundred men stout warriors and six hundred fled and four of the sons of Esau fled with them and left their father lying slain as he had fallen on the hill which is in Adoram this scripture is a spiritual symbolism of Elijah another righteous man whom God took up who will be witnesses to the whole world revelations adding to this and what makes one draw this spiritual insight is that this verse is not talking about the same Enoch who wrote the book of Enoch but rather Reuben's son if you make note of the same name use you may find that important when considering the Elijah and Elisha paradox Enoch and Elijah in Revelations although Enoch is not mentioned directly by name nor is Elijah these are the only two biblical characters who never died the Bible is very specific in regarding its records of people dying it makes mention of when these biblical patriarchs die over and over again going out of its way to record them and yet there is no record of Enoch or Elijah dying anywhere in the whole of the body of biblical knowledge so then we have in the last book of the Bible Revelation at chapter the appearance of two prophets wearing sackcloth biblical scholars and myself included believe these two men to be none other than Enoch and Elijah what they do in Revelations fits with the lives they lived completely see for yourself and test the scriptures to find out if it's Enoch and Elijah the following is the chapter in question keep in mind this happens in the future Revelation King James Version KJV and there was given me a reed like unto a rod and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months and I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth and if any man will hurt them fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies and if any man will hurt them he must in this manner be killed these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and an half and shall not suffer their dead.
bodies to be put in graves and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth and after three days and an half the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them and the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever and the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God saying we give thee thanks O Lord God Almighty which art and wast and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail